final Sunday of January 2024, the 28th, a powerful spiritual gathering unfolded at the City of Jesus International Ministry. The atmosphere buzzed with the spirit of the living God Almighty, setting the stage for the entrance of Christopher Orgy, a man filled with the spirits of truth and grace. With great anticipation, he stepped into the auditorium of the City of Jesus International Ministry. Christopher Orgy, aflame with spiritual fervor, embarked on delivering a profound message titled, Let Your Character Preach the Gospel of Repentance and Remission of Sins. Encouraging the congregation and viewers worldwide, the man of God emphasized that in a world yearning for hope and redemption, the scriptures call us to radiate the light of Christ through our character. He underscored the vital significance of repentance and the remission of sins. As we unravel the divine message from God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit through the man of God, Christopher Orgy, let it stir within us the inspiration to embody the gospel, not merely in our words, but significantly in the very essence of who we are. Shalom. Shalom. Tell your neighbor, peace. Unto your soul. Tell your neighbor, peace. Unto your spirit. Peace. Unto your body. Forever. Greet your neighbor, shalom. Give a handshake and greet someone. Shalom. a message that God has given us to deliver. I believe there will be time for us to deliver the message the way God wants the message to be delivered. Turn with me to the book of Luke. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24. Take your time to read the whole thing from the beginning to the end. But because of time, let's quickly start reading from verses 36. Luke chapter 24. From verses 36. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit and he said to them why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Verses 40 of Luke chapter 24. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. 
Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witness of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass why he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God Amen If you look carefully and observe what Jesus said from verses 46 of Luke chapter 24. I will read again. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verses 47. And that repentance, take note, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. This was the commission God gave to Jesus to pass on to his faithful disciples. This kind of assignment was given to genuine believers of Jesus Christ, not the fake. Jesus Christ does not commission anyone without giving such a person specific instructions what to preach about what to teach and how to go about his ministry when I say his ministry I'm referring to the ministry of Jesus Christ Jesus Christ commissioned the church, which is his own body, to preach the message of repentance and remission of sins. Not to some people, but to all nations. How many ministers of God are preaching the message of repentance? and remission of sins to all nations. How many? Many people have been possessed by evil spirits to preach the message of 
prosperity. How you can make money. How you can become rich overnight. Without talking about the true gospel. Which is the gospel that preaches the message of repentance and remission of sins to the world. If sin, the cause of your problems, are not forgiven, removed, and taken away from your life, you will never have a permanent solution to your problem. There is no current sinner that can currently enter into the kingdom of God without forgiveness. Tell your neighbor, there is no current sinner who can currently enter into the kingdom of God without receiving the forgiveness of his or her sins. From where we've just read now, you agree with me that the primary reason why Jesus Christ commissioned ministries, I mean churches, is just to preach the message of salvation. Freedom from sins, sinful desires, and also freedom from the consequences of sins and sinful desires. Many have written so many books that only talk about how you can become prosperous. How many of these authors are ready to practically live a life without sins and sinful desires and write a book that will tell you how you can stay away from sins and sinful desires. The Bible says that we are approaching the end time where even the elect will be deceived. You see people looking for money, looking for mammon and not God. That is why you see smokers hiding in churches and a pastor will even tell them, you can go outside there and smoke and come back inside the church. That is why you see a lot of laws that are being pushed into various nations, adopted and are approved by them just to populate the kingdom of darkness. We are not only to preach to African nations if we are to go by this standard Jesus has set here, we are not only sent to preach to some continents, but to every nation in the world. There is no law that is being passed by human being that cannot be withdrawn relating to favor God's commandments. Get that right. There is no law that is being passed that cannot be withdrawn or written to promote holiness, purity, righteousness in the world. The purpose of the gospel is to break the yoke of sin and Satan and set people free from the powers of darkness. That is the essence of the gospel. Jesus Christ gave out this divine commission to true believers. 
anybody can believe. Don't leave this assignment for ministers of God alone. Don't leave this assignment for someone else. It is for you. It is for me. It is for all of us. Let your life preach the message of holiness to other people. Let your life preach the gospel of salvation to your friends, your colleagues in the office, your parents, your siblings, and every member of your family. If Jesus Christ must win souls to the kingdom of God, he has to use someone else. And that was why he commissioned his disciples and gave them specific message. Go and preach. Message of what? Repentance and remission of sins to the world. How many people has your life or your character brought to a place of repentance and salvation? Satan quoted the scripture, but he was not ready to repent of his sins. Satan preached the gospel, but he possessed the spirit of pride, disobedience, arrogance that opposed the gospel he preached. Satan does not exist without his own agents. As Jesus commissions people to preach the message of repentance and remission of sins, Satan also has empowered fake ministers to go into the world to commonize lives of what? Sins. Uh, it's normal. It's normal. We should not be too strict. After all, you can always confess. Shall we continue in sin? and expect the grace of God to abound. Can I hear your answer? Can I hear your answer? No! What are you doing either publicly or privately that is leading someone into sin? What are you saying either publicly or privately, that is making someone to sin against God, the maker. Jesus said, I will be back. Surely I will be back. And many would come and say, Lord, Lord, I have preached the gospel in your name, prophesied to people in your name. Even cast out demons in your own name. What did he say his answer would be like? He said, I would say to them, Away from me, you workers of iniquity. He was simply telling them, It is not just your words that can win souls to the kingdom of God but your character. Let your character preach the gospel. Tell your neighbor, let your character preach the gospel. And that forms the title of today's message. Let your character preach the gospel of repentance and remission or sins to all. Don't say the title is too long. It's not too long. It's to bring you closer to the true knowledge of the gospel. 
let your character preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to all. Anytime you find yourself lying, ask yourself, what is speaking through me? Who am I preaching to with my lies? Anytime you find yourself getting angry, ask yourself, I am preaching now through this character, through my anger. Who am I preaching to? Am I winning souls for God or winning souls for Satan? By the life you live, you shall be known. The same agents of Satan that dwell on the message of prosperity will say, no, here, we don't preach about miracle. You see, we don't even cast out demons. We only dwell only on the word of God talking about pure message. Jesus did not say that when you preach the message of repentance and remission of sins, that signs and wonders that are genuinely coming from his powerful name will not follow you. He never said that. Get that right so that you will stop deceiving people. He told the disciples, live by example. Through the good examples of Christ in you, preach the message of repentance and remission of sins to all nations. Starting from Jerusalem, meaning where you are now. They were in Jerusalem. He was telling them, where you are, start from there. Charity begins at home. Can I hear you, sir? Charity begins at where? Home. How can an angry woman, full of anger, bitterness, carry Bible only to preach to people, even when she has not repented at home? What a hypocritical act. What a display of psychophants. Charity begins at where? Home. Start within. Even before you speak, screen yourself. What do I want for? God or Satan? I am commissioned to be a soul winner, winning souls for God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. If this comes out of my mouth now, who will I win souls or so for? If it is for Satan, no, I will not say that. Charity begins at where? Before you can preach a message of repentance and remission of sins to other people, you must be a repentant soul. Someone who is cleansed by God through his word and by his spirit. That is the remission of sin we are talking about. Spiritual sanctification. Jesus told the disciples, I have already preach the gospel to you. And I'm here to declare to you that you are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Meaning, act constantly on the word of God. Abide in my word and let my word abide in you. Whatever you ask, the Father in my name, I will do. Do you not know that sins within your hearts are the causes of your unanswered prayers? God said, my hands can reach anywhere and everywhere. Can touch everyone. But 
my hand cannot get to you because of your iniquities. Isaiah chapter 59 from verses 1 to 3. God said, no one responds to petitions or prayers of people faster than I do. Even while they are still speaking, I always answer. As in Isaiah chapter 65 verses 24. But I cannot answer your requests because your sins have separated you from me. Isaiah chapter 59 from verses 1 to 3. How can you open your mouth to pray even without receiving forgiveness of your sins? That is the first thing. Ministers of God are sanctified vessels of God. They are what? Sanctified vessels of God. People that separated themselves and dedicated their lives only to God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Not to sin. Not to Satan. Not to Lucifer. Not to snake not to idols. You were given spiritual enlightenment that when it comes to looking for or seeking for prayers that can be answered, please, start looking for the prayers of the righteous one. Confess your sins to one another for the effectual prayer of the righteous one avails much. Why don't you talk about the righteous? Who are the righteous? The righteous people are forgiving sinners. Tell your neighbor, the righteous people are the forgiving sinners. Can I hear you? Tell your neighbor, the righteous people are they forgiving sinners? How can a sinner be forgiven without confession? How can I run out and say, God, bless me, bless me, without asking for forgiveness first? We are in a generation where no one is righteous, not even one person. No matter how you have conditioned yourself from childhood, you are still not holy. Until God declares you holy. No matter how you condition yourself from childhood, you are still not what? Righteous. Until God himself declares you righteous. If all of us are here to seek for forgiveness, then the way we treat other people should let others know that we too are looking for forgiveness of sins. Before you hold on to the sins that are committed by your wife, ask yourself, are you free from sins? Are you without sins? Since the correct answer, which you may not know, is no, you are not free from sins then that should cause you to humble yourself and learn how to forgive. If all of us are sinners who are looking for forgiveness, the measure of forgiveness we receive, maintain and enjoy depends on the number of people we have forgiven of their sins. Forgive and you will be what? Forgiven. Tell your neighbor, forgive. And you will be forgiven.
If you have been asking yourself, how can I be a man that will always receive forgiveness from God? The answer is very simple. Be a man that always forgive people of their sins. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you are asking yourself, how can I be someone whom God will always forgive his sins or forgive her sins? then I should learn to know that I need to be someone who is always willing to forgive everyone of their sins. Forgive and he will be what? Forgiving. Show mercy. And he will receive what? Mercy. It is a give and take issue. Look at the case of Apostle Paul, who was once saw, but later became an Apostle Paul. When he weighed and measured the kind of sins he committed against the body of Christ, how he killed a lot of people that God sent to preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to the world. He decided to see himself as the number one sinner. He decided to see himself as who? Number one sinner. And he was full of compassion. That alone convicted his conscience and positioned his mind to always forgive people for their sins. Where there is no forgiveness, there is no grace of apostleship. Where there is no forgiveness, there is nothing like healing. You say, ah, this ministry is a healing ministry. That ministry is not a healing ministry. Listen, where there is true forgiveness of sins, there is always healing. The reason is because before the minister of God will pray for such a sick person, whether he voices it out or not, the first thing he does is to intercede and ask for the forgiveness of the sins of the person. Imagine if that minister is someone who hates the person or who does not want to forgive the person that he wants to pray for. How would that person receive healing? Jesus went straight to the root and said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And the man was not only spiritually healed, but physically healed. This shows that the forgiveness of sin strikes the root of all pain. When your sins are forgiven, you will be truly healed. If you see any ministry or any minister that God is using to do works of deliverance, you should also know that such a minister is always willing to be delivered. It is when you are delivered that you can be used by God to deliver other people. The works of God are practical. You have to go through the theoretical part, knowing the words, and also the practical part. Experience that. How can you talk about deliverance when you yourself have not been delivered? How will you know how to do the job? If you are delivered, you must ask yourself, what are those things that I have been delivered from? 
What are those lies of sin? That I must never again live. Only a holy life attracts the Holy Spirit. Only what? A holy life that attracts the Holy Spirit. If your life is not holy, your life will continue to attract evil spirits. What did you say? So you are right, sir. If your life is unclean, your life will always attract unclean spirits. It is as good as that. Don't say, why is this man being used? Why am I not being used? God wants to use you. But there are things you need to do. Go through a channel of repentance. Confess your sins. Allow your soul, spirit, and body to be spiritually cleansed by the living and eternal word of God. Live a life of holiness and obedient to the word and spirit of God. And allow the spirit of God to make you his dwelling place. Remember that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, what is your business with sexual immorality? What is your business with lust, anger? What is your business with fear, doubt, unbelief? If you say that this temple belongs to someone, it means that the person is the owner. He is in charge. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not your own. And should be used by him. The Holy Spirit is not the spirit of sin. What is sin doing in you? What is sin doing in your mind? In your thoughts? In your heart? These are spiritual wars you should be fighting constantly. Once you see a negative thought that says, go and smoke, what are you supposed to have said to that thought? Get out. No matter how strong you are, you can never drive me to act. Never. Many have passed so many laws that commonize lives of what? Sin. It has become legal to commit this sin and Lega to commit that sin just to populate the kingdom of darkness. If nations were truly free from sins and sinful desires, do you think that Jesus Christ would have sent his disciples to preach the message of repentance and remission of sins to all nations? No. It has come to the level that anyone that talks against what you have put in your law, even when it is against God's commandment, will be haunted by you. You know how to trace such person and get the person eliminated in this physical world. If you eliminate the body, can you also eliminate the spirit? How many people that eliminated Christians, believers, those who we are commissioned to preach the gospel of salvation without fear that lived to tell the story. People are now being paid to lie against the ministers of God that are living holy lives just to make sure that the message of repentance and remission of sin is no longer preached to nations in the world. Who are paying them? And what is the mission? What is the reason of paying people to blaspheme? 
Why are you paying them? If you cannot be saved, allow other people to be saved. There is no law that is being passed that cannot be withdrawn and rewritten to support God's commandments. Look at the case of King Darius. Look at the case of King Nebuchadnezzar. He himself withdrew his statements, withdrew his decrees. No one can be boasting that he is as powerful as these kings in this modern generation. These great men withdrew everything they signed into law, got them rewritten just to favor the commandments of God. They made decree that cannot be altered by anybody that favor the worship of the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Then who are you? You are created by God to live by example. Let your own life, no matter your position in this world, let your life, let your character, let your behavior, let your words, let your thoughts, and even your inactions preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to the world. Don't say I'm a king. I'm a president. I'm a governor. I'm a rich man. Nebuchadnezzar humbled himself and changed the decree. King Darius humbled himself, changed the decree and gave right to God's children to worship the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Are you a successful businessman? Very good. Let your life, your own business and your character preach the gospel. Gospel of repentance and remission of sins to the world. What kind of business are you doing that is not preaching the gospel of salvation, gospel of repentance, and remission of sins to all nations? Are you a drug dealer, a prostitute, a gambler, someone who can bet anyhow with everything? Are you a smoker? A drunkard? Let your life, let your character preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to all nations. The world nation represents anyone who is created by God. Don't say, no, that person is from another religion. I don't care. And don't say, that person is from another tribe. I do not care. Oh, that person is not my siblings. It's from another family. You are sent to everybody. Jesus said, go and preach the message of repentance and remission of sins all nations. He did not say to some people. He did not say to Africa. Did he say to Africa alone? America alone? Asia alone? Australia alone? Europe alone? Black people alone? White people alone? Rich people alone? Poor people alone? Did he say to business men and women alone? 
Did he say to politician alone? He said, go and preach the gospel, the message of repentance and remission of sins to all nations. Anytime you find yourself in the church, what do you normally say to people that are seated by your side? Anytime you find yourself in any place, what do you normally say to them? Whose message do you normally preach? Each time you speak to people, there are two languages, languages that are coming from Satan and languages that are coming from God. The Bible says to those who believe, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Speaking with new tongues meaning speaking God's language. What is God's language? The word of God. Not bra bra kukuku ha la la la. Yeah. Yes, I feel the presence of God. Not that one. That new tongue is a tongue that speaks the word of God. Tell your neighbor, the new tongue means a tongue that speaks the word of God. Let us be conscious. Do you know if all of us are here and no one qualifies to enter into the kingdom of God. All our waking up early to come here, all the praises, the worship, waving of hands, carrying our Bible every day will just be vanity, proper vanity. No one can enter into the kingdom of God unless he or she genuinely repents receives spiritual sanctification which is referred to as remission of sins. Constantly puts the word of God into practice which is referred to as obedience. It is when you are obedient that you can receive the Holy Spirit. If you are talking about the kingdom of God, you are talking about the spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. All who are baptized with the spirit of God are already in the kingdom of God. Whether they are in this physical world or in the invisible world. Tell your neighbor, all who are baptized with the Holy Spirit are already in the kingdom of God. Whether they are in this physical world or in the invisible world. Jesus declared to the people, if I by the spirit of God cast out this demon that you are attributing every glory to Bezebub, I tell you, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out these demons, let it be known to you that the kingdom of God is here. Meaning, the person speaking to you is already in the kingdom of God. Meaning, he has the Spirit of God. The kingdom of God is not on the outside of you. It is within you. It is within us. In the living word. If you hear the message of repentance like this. And remission of sin. And you are very, very sorrowful. I am referring to godly sorrow. Sorry for all the sins you have committed. And you are repentant within. The Holy Spirit will instantly act. On the word of God. To cleanse your soul, spirit, and body. And make you holy again. When your spirit is holy, your spirit will be free. 
like a spiritual magnet to attract the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he doesn't come alone. He comes with Jesus Christ. The reason is because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He comes with Jesus Christ and Jesus does not come alone. He said, I and my Father are one. He comes with his Father. Meaning, God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will come into your spirit, your life, your body, which is their temple, and make your body their dwelling place. At that moment, you have entered into the kingdom of God. That is why people are wasting their time. When they say they want to kill the flesh, if you kill the flesh, can you also kill the spirit? Do you know where the spirit is? How can someone stand in a place and pray for someone who is at the farthest part of the world and a person receives healing, deliverance, instantly as if they are together in one place? Do you think that such a thing was done by human hands? Or by any human being? Do you think such language that went straight to the person and get the person delivered was a worldly language? No weapon fashioned against the gospel of Jesus Christ, fashioned against the ministers of God that will ever live to tell the story. Can anyone defeat the Holy Spirit? Can I hear you? Can anyone confront him? Fight with him? Conquer him? Cover him? Cover his glory? These things can be done by you, Jesus said. In John chapter 14, verses 12. Let me read for you. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12. Jesus Christ is not spiritually stingy. No one is as generous as Jesus Christ. No one is as what? No one is as generous as him. Jesus Christ is the number one generous being. Look at what he said here. John chapter 14, verses 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Hmm. There was no unrighteousness in Jesus Christ. If you want to do greater works, you must be holy. You must be what? It is not a matter of having the biggest cathedral without living a holy life. Did you hear what I said? You might have the biggest cathedral, you might even have the highest degree any human being can acquire in this physical world without living a holy life. And God cannot be mocked. Whatever you plant, that is what you reap. He has already spelled out the condition. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will do what? cast out demons. Let us read that place again. So that nobody will keep hiding to deceive you. The book of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16 and let us start reading from verses 
from verses 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. He did not say that these signs will follow magicians. Because this is what they used to deceive you. Say, those people, they are what? Magicians. They are what? They say they are magicians. Don't follow them. They are witch doctors. Look at what your Savior says here. Mark chapter 16 from verses 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt to them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let us proceed. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through their company signs. Amen. Why are your own words not being confirmed even though you are an eloquent preacher and teacher and various authors of books? Why? Why are your own words not being confirmed by the Savior of your soul even though you are author of various books, a good preacher, charismatic one, eloquent teacher with various degrees, God cannot lie. His words will not return to him void without accomplishing that which he had sent it. Why is he not confirming your words? Even because the life you live is contrary to what you preach. Did you hear that? Even because the life you live is contrary to the message of salvation you preach. God cannot be marked. You cannot force him to follow you. You cannot force his presence to go with you. Even the Israelites, when they were being told to move from Egypt and to proceed to the promised land, in various occasions, they had to pinch their tent somewhere because they were waiting for the presence of God to go before and ahead of them. Why is it that the presence of God who has sent you is not following you? Why? You run before God. You run after him. You do things on your own. You publish book without instruction. You go for crusades without being led. In the name of oratory, you can speak very well. You have a ministry, draw a crowd. Without signs and wonders, repent. You should do what? Repent immediately. This message is speaking to you. It's calling you. God is calling you to repent. Look at the case of the seven sons of Sceva. Why did they copy Apostle Paul? Was it not because they had a power of oratory. To them, they had this traditional belief. We too, we are religious people. And they went about copying exactly what 
Apostle Paul was doing. But one day the evil spirit said, look, you put on white, but the inside is black, full of sin. And you cannot operate with God with lies of sin. Come, you belong to us. Who would deal with you? Who called you to fight against us? How can you be fighting against your own master? You are living in sin. And we are distributors of sin. And you are fighting against us. Life is sweet. And better lived. When it is lived. In the words and promises of God. Be ye holy. Even as I am what? Holy. You don't want to be holy. And you see holy ministers of God. And you are calling them immoral people. Even where you yourself, you know that you are the one that are not what? Holy. Why are you calling them immoral people? It is because Satan is using you to stop people from receiving message of repentance and remission of sins. You are just trying to weaken their morals, their zeal for God. You want them to say, God, you know I'm not what people are saying. And you allow them to say these kind of things. It is not by force. It is not a must. I must witness for you. This is what you are trying to achieve, which you will never succeed. You will see through ministers of God, you will see evidence of everything that suggests to you that they are true ministers of God, even by their holy character. You go and pay people. Say they are taking my members. So go and lie. How much will it cost? You bargain with them. Take this money. And the so-called agents of Satan will stand on social media handles to say, he did this with me. He did that with me. Go to you that are listening. Go to you that are subscribing their channels. And those people that are perpetrating this act all need repentance and forgiveness from God. The Bible commands you not to listen to false reports. The same Bible commands you not to tell lies. If you don't want to tell lies, let your yes be what? Yes. And let your no be what? No. If you say, what will I do not to lie again? Say things the way they are. Don't lie. Stand by it, no matter the consequences. Let your yes be what? Yes. And your no be no. Yes to righteousness, which is Jesus Christ himself. And then no to sin, which is Satan or unrighteousness. What sin did you commit just because you were very close to somebody? Say, he's my boss. He is my sister. I can't leave my family. Even Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace. I have come to bring what? Sword. A man will find himself fighting against members of his family. And members of the family will find themselves fighting against a man. You see a father standing against the son. Opposing the son. My son, this thing you are doing is wrong. You see a father, you say no. The Bible says this. He wants to change. You say, I will not give you money. You say, no. Do this. This is what the Bible says. That is this war. Or you see a son telling the father, this life you're living is not good. Look at what the Bible says here. He says, no, I will disown you. Who are you to come and change our tradition? If you say I'm an occult man, it's the man I used to train you. If you talk again, I will disown you. You see a son saying, I prefer to be disowned than to accommodate this evil in your life. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace. Why are you compromising spiritually? Why? 
Why? Why? Uh, he's my husband. Even when he's blaspheming, he's your husband. Your husband is smoking. You cannot gently remind him that, look, this is an addiction that will destroy you. You see, if you talk, you'll be sent out of the marriage and you have kept quiet. You have kept quiet. You are hiding the truth, not standing for the truth. Can you see how the world is? With this message, you will discover that everybody needs to repent. That was why Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world and preach the message or the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem. Meaning, beginning from within you. If you see anything in you that represents sin, stand against that. Say, no! My tongue, you must be tempted to speak the word of God. You cannot cause me to be a liar. Before you speak, you examine everything you want to say first. Charity begins at what? Home. When you finish the works within, then you can allow the works to be spread without. When you finish repenting, that is when your own life or character can preach the gospel of repentance and remission of sins to all nations, meaning to everybody. People will see you and say, no, you do not need to tell me that you're a Christian. I can see from your character and your lifestyle that you are Christ-like. People did not say, this man are bishop. They saw Paul and they saw Silas and other fellow Christians. They looked at their characters and they said, truly, these people are Christ-like. And that is where the word Christians came from. Meaning Christ-like. What is it in you that is Satan-like? These are things you must do away with. Not tomorrow. That should be done away with here. And go home with the nature of God. The image of of God. Once again, if Jesus comes here now to take his true believers and no one here is counted worthy to be raptured by him, everything we are saying here, doing here, everything we have been doing from the beginning to the end will become vanity upon vanity. The worst thing that can happen to anyone is not to have the grace to enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. Did you hear that? The worst thing that can happen to anybody is not to have the grace to enter into the kingdom of God. You may have children, have money, have properties, have fame, become presidents, governors, leaders, secretary generals, successful businessmen, or even become a poor man or a sick person. If you don't have that grace to enter into the kingdom of God, that is the worst thing that can ever happen to any human being. Don't come here and say, I need healing. Alone. Healing without salvation first in mind. Healing without Jesus Christ first in mind is vanity upon vanity. Healing should be for the salvation of your soul. 
Don't come here and say, I need deliverance. Demonic attacks everywhere. Generational curses. Nightmares. Weird dream everywhere. I want all these things to stop. Good and fine. All these things should be stopped. You should receive deliverance for the salvation of your soul. The summary of what you are saying. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing that you need to live for God will be added to you in Jesus Christ's name. Right now, rise up for prayers. Father, we thank you. You already forgave our sins. Even before we committed them. Jesus Christ, you said... While we were yet sinners, you died for us. You took our place in punishment. You took our place in death. You want us to come to a place of genuine repentance. You want our sins to be forgiven and spiritually removed. Meaning, you want us to be spiritually sanctified and made holy. Here we are. We are here for the things we cannot do by ourselves. We are here for the things you have done already. We have listened to your word. Let our lives be sanctified by you through your word and by your spirit. Fill us with the spirit of genuine repentance. Fill us with the spirit of sanctification. Fill us with the spirit of forgiveness. Teach us how to forgive ourselves and to forgive everybody both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, fill us with the spirit of salvation, spirit of wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Fill us with the spirit of prosperity so we can help the less privileged. For your name's sake. Both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, get angry. And begin to stand against the failed enemies of your life that thought they could use sins and sinful desires to destroy you. God's calling upon your life and your family. These failed enemies are not physically seen. They are Satan, Lucifer, snake, idols, witches and wizards and the rest of the unclean spirits. The Bible says you should be able to punish all acts of disobedience when your obedience in Christ is fully fulfilled. God has taken you out and forgiven you. He said to you, and still says to you, Behold, I have given you power to trample upon snakes 
and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now declare war against them. With the authority and power of God that you have, declare war against all evil spirits. Declare war against them. Declare war against them. You are not the same. You are not the one praying now. The Holy Spirit is the one praying through you. Anywhere they are hiding to cause you to sin against God, to cause your nation to sin against God. You Satan, you Satan, Lucifer, serpent, queen of the coast, witches and wizards, idols, 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 Holy Ghost fire. Fire! 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 Send fire to them. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. You spirit of death. Spirit of death, sickness, disease, affliction, blindness, blindness, trial, 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 trial. Same for out of them. Thank you, Jesus. All evil spirits, spirit of Illuminati, spirit of Illuminati, sorcery. Sorcery, divination, divination, witches, wizards, spirit of death, spirit of death. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Holy Ghost fire, say fire, say fire, 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 fire. Say fire to all of them. Addiction, addiction, sickness, poverty, hardship, hardship. Where are you? Tire, 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 tire. In your family, in your home, in your marriage, in your life, in your dreams. Holy Ghost fire, say fire, say fire. Tire, 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 tire. Spirit your husband, 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 witches, wizards, 
Wizard, serpents, serpents, snakes, snakes. Where are you? Where are you? In water, in water, in water. Darkness, 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 darkness. Holy Ghost fire, set fire, set fire, set fire. Fire, 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 fire. There is no escape. Their sins are forgiven. And where there is forgiveness, there is healing and deliverance. All monetary spirits, angels of Satan, in the kingdoms of darkness, anywhere they are, Holy Ghost fire, say fire, say fire, 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 fire. 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 Destroy them and their sicknesses. I command the spirit of grace to rest upon you. Yeah. And I speak to everything Satan has stolen from you. And I command all of them to be restored. Yeah. And returned back to you. Yeah. And every member of your family. Yeah. I stand against hardship. And the spirit behind hardship. I stand against sins and sinful desires. And the spirit of iniquity. Right now receive the mercy of God. Receive the forgiveness of your sins. Receive the grace to enjoy the remission of your sins. Both now and forevermore. I command your life to mirror God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command your destiny, your career, your marriage, the fruit of your womb. To mirror all the blessings of God both now and forevermore. Amen. I am seeing you saying a permanent goodbye to hardship. Amen. A permanent goodbye to sorrow. Amen. A permanent goodbye to sudden death. A permanent goodbye to sins and sinful desires. A permanent goodbye to accidents, nightmares, barrenness, evil attacks, disappointments, near success syndrome. I am seeing you embracing and enjoying your breakthroughs. Right now, receive the grace. Receive! 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 I command your spirit to become one with God's spirit. I command your spirit to become one with the spirit of Jesus Christ. And I command your spirit to become one with the spirit of the Most High God. Your life will never be separated from God and His heavenly blessings. I command your health to be sanctified, anointed, anointed, and resurrected. I am seeing your health living in the realm where sicknesses and diseases cannot be found. Both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command God's plans and vision for your life to come to pass. 
you will go out blessed and you will come back home blessed you will go out and enjoy a sweet sound and safe journey and come back and also enjoy a sweet sound and safe journey your dreams will become prophetic you will have a divine encounter with God Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit receive prophetic revelations receive 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 I command your documents to be sanctified and anointed and I command everything that is hidden covered up in them by Satan to be destroyed let the truth be revealed let the truth continue to set your career free from poverty free from hatred free from failure free from rejection free from tribalism free from demonic operations both now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ grace of the living God Almighty and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and personal Savior and of his spirit the Holy Spirit always be with you always lead and guide you always protect you and provide for you both now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ your new name hmm, your new name is you are guessing what is your new name what is your new name? God's abundant blessings. You cannot be cursed by any being. When I say anyone, you might restrict the person to be physical. But listen, you and your generation cannot be cursed by any being either in the visible world or in the invisible world. Your new name is blessings. Shalom. 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 Celebrate! My name is Ezeike uh, Chukwibuka Emmanuel Charles. Who are these people to you? This person is my younger brother. His name is uh, Nnamdi Collins. Eze. Then this person is my mommy. Her name is uh, Mrs. Georgina. Thanks, you are welcome. What do you do for a living? I do that uh, presently. I am a missionary. I'm through with my missionary education 
but presently I'm not yet uh, ordained in the Catholic Church. So that is why I came to see you. I believe that through you, God will make it possible. I belong to the missionary of the sons of cancer. But eventually, that place is not uh, moving on presently. So, but there is another missionary called the uh, missionary of the Stephenite fathers and brothers. So these people, they now, I went for the interview there. They said that they have accepted me to ordain me a deacon in November. That is this year, 2023. So these are the things I came to see you with Father so that it is the will of God for me to be ordained there. I have accepted to be ordained there. That is why I came to see you with Daddy. I need your support, I need your prayers. Thank God for what God is doing with you. And sincerely speaking, my younger brother and my mommy, they have told me what you have done for them. I want to say thank you. And I'm praying that God will continue to increase you and multiply you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you are very welcome. Thank you. How is your spiritual life? In my spiritual life, I'm making an effort. Presently, I remember in 2017-18, I rode into a, a charismatic. So since then, I've been making effort to improve my spiritual life. All right, you need to stay away from being enticed by what they think. You need to stay away from that. The reason is because Satan also knows that if you stay focused and finally receive the grace to work for God, you would end up destroying his evil works and kingdoms and setting the people completely free from demonic possessions. This he would not want you to do. So he always wants to use weaknesses to set trap for you. What are those weaknesses? Spirit of lust. He can decide to send his evil agents or an agent. You'll find yourself having sexual relationship with women. And those women will not allow you to concentrate would want to pull you out of the place at all cost. When it comes to ordination and when it comes to anointing, anointing is the coming of the Spirit of God into the life of a person. And the Spirit of God is the Spirit of holiness. It is only a Holy Spirit that receives the Spirit of God. If your spirit is pure and holy, it will be free and sensitive to the Spirit of God. But if your spirit is not holy, is not pure, is not clean, your spirit will not contact the Holy Spirit. What is it that contaminates one's spirit? Lives of sin. Of which what I've said now is a part. Imagine you want to be ordained and you have a lady outside that you have impregnated. Or a lady outside that has children for you. You know, they consider many things before they ordain person. You know that. If you escape human screening, what about the spiritual one? Maybe they did not know. And they still go ahead to ordain you. What about the spiritual one? Because man has the ability to say, okay, you are ordained. But spiritual ordination is done by God through his word and by his spirit. And that is the one you need to work for God. You need spiritual ordination, the gift of the Spirit of God, the real anointing that destroys Satan and his evil works, so you can be able to work for God. That is what you need now. So you need to be strong spiritually and return back to God. Did you hear what I said? That point is very prophetic. 
return back to God. Find your way. If you say you've committed sin, everybody makes mistakes. You have the right to say, yeah, I've committed sin, but I still need to return back to God. And Satan will not stop you. The prodigal son went into life of pleasure that promoted carnality, lives of sin outside. He came back to his senses and said, no, I have sinned. I need to go back to my father. He had the right to return. He returned and he was received and given the best. So no matter the nature of sins you've committed, whether they're big or small, whether there are things that people say, anybody who commit this sin will not be anointed by God, I tell you. Once you are ready to repent and return back to God, God will give you his spirit, the Holy Spirit, that will enable you to live for him and to work for him. So don't condemn yourself. Don't say, no, I have gone too far. I cannot withdraw. No, it's not like that. You can. You can withdraw and return back to God. So this one, this advice, prophetic advice, is much more important than the ordination. The reason is because you need something that will help you to be ordained. Do you understand? You need to have character that will enable you to be anointed. If you don't have that character, how will the anointing come? The anointing does not come from laying hand or from somebody putting on garment on you and say you are ordained. No. The anointing comes from God and you must meet his spiritual standard. That is the place we are going. That is the standard we are talking about. Do you understand now? Yes, ma'am. So what is your decision? What do you have to say concerning what I said now? Uh, I've taken your advice, your fatherly advice to me. I will make every possible best to stand on it by the grace of God. I also need your, your spiritual backup. It's not something I will do on my own. So I, I need your grace on the work in God. Because I'm interested to do the work. I'm interested because I've suffered in this missionary studies. I've suffered for years. Even the people that I began with them, some of them has already doing their 11th priestly anniversary. So that is why when this one came, I said, Thank you, Jesus. For calling me and trying to take me to do your work. I'm not worthy, but I think that the grace of God will make me worthy. With your cooperation, I'll be able to answer the call. So thank you, big father, for making me to come and see you. For encouragement, for support. Keep on praying for you that God will keep on being with you, being in your ministry. That the Spirit of God will always abide here to bring souls to God and to keep you long life. This is what in Psalm 91, verse 11 said, I will satisfy with long life. That is my prayer to you. And God will give you long life, good of health, and strength to do His work. Because what I'm seeing here is not something that flesh can do because I'm seeing you as a superpower man because I came here on Sunday I saw with my eyes I said thank you Jesus for you know, taking you an instrument even today I also encountered you I said God this is marvelous thank you God for all the good works he's taking you to do all right, the most important decision in this area of lives of sin, you have to truly repent and you have to surrender to God completely. God loves you. Once you do that, issue of ordination, hatred, and the other, other things you, you are talking about will be gone forever. Amen. Meaning, issue of ordination, God himself will be the one to handle it. When God is involved, your own case is settled. Amen. When God is involved, you do not need a majority to win. 
because he is the winner. He wins and gives victory to his children. So now he is involved. You need to also be involved. You need to also abide in him. You need to also have his godly character so you can have what it takes to be ordained, to receive from God and to work for God. That is my prophetic counsel. That lies of sin must stop. Sexual immorality must come to an end. Free your character from that. Free your life from that. Free your soul and body from that. Focus on God. You have already made that decision that, look, among my siblings, I will go this direction. I will follow this way to bring light to the family. Why withdraw it? You must not withdraw. Focus on where you are going. Your destination is very important. You need to get to your destination. Okay? Thank you. Let everybody run his or her own race. They are running their race. Your brother is running his own race. Your mom is running her own race. She is totally reformed. And I believe you too. So that the testimonies will be complete. She will be happy testifying. Not looking for you. Trying to find you. Not you not picking their call. Not coming back home. No. All these things have to stop. You should be accessible. So that they too can be happy. You should be reachable. So that they too can be happy. After staying for some time, you give them a call. Hello, how are you? I hope you are doing well. This is how I'm doing. This is it. This is it. And then you pray together as a family. That will give them joy more than anything. If at all the Lord blesses you, you also reach out and see what you can do to bless them. You don't need to have billions before you allow yourself to be used to bless your mom and your siblings. Don't always be at the receiving hands. Always taking from them. Taking, expecting them to send something to you. That time is gone. You should see what you can do out of nothing to always provide. It is very important. Okay? So we are praying for you so that your mom can live long. Your siblings can be happy. You too can be happy and everybody will be happy. Do you understand now? Thank you. All right. So... Glory be to God, I believe. I will also pray for you. Now you've been prayed for, but I will just complete the prayers now so that everything will be okay. Mm-hmm. Charles, my name is Sam Nandresa. This is my elder brother, Kichu. This is my mom, Dr. Sijuku. I thank God for bringing us to this uh, city of Jesus International Ministry. Say, man of God, is that my other brother has been inconsistent in, in where he's working. He will get work before he knows it, but he won't get for two to three months before he knows it. He will say that he's no longer working there. He will now move to another place, and that has been bothering my mother. So, my mother has not been. Mother would tell me, call me sometimes, like picking to go to kill her. That the way she gets me is behaving is like something that is, uh, somebody is like, she is getting mad. That he doesn't know that the, the, the character of picking to has changed. So that, that distorts me a lot. So I have to now start inviting them to the city of Jesus mm-hmm. International Ministry. Because I believe that with what I'm seeing in this ministry, that the family can get their deliverance on this ministry. So I thank you, man of God, for all your help and assistance me, the encouragement since I came into this ministry. My spiritual life has changed. And I believe the way that you know, it will affect my whole family. So thank you, man of God, and bless you. All right, you've heard what I said. Moving from one job to another wasn't an issue. That was just a like branch of the problems. The main issue is life of sin. Where you have an encounter with ungodly women, they can cause you to lose your job. They can break your focus. If you have an encounter, sexual encounter with an ungodly woman or woman, 
or you have that thought within you. Some of them you don't even need to have sexual intercourse with them. Just by mere looking and desiring your heart, you are into their devilish trap. So these are where the rules are coming from. So they can attack your job, cause you to lose your mind. You will not even concentrate. You will not even see the need to complete what you are doing. You will just be in covenant with them spiritually. This is what is happening to him. His problem is not only the branches of it, but you will have to start dealing with the root. That is the root of the problem. And that's why I said he has to meet the standard. If you don't meet the standard, how can you be ordained? You see, you have a lamp and you are in the midst of darkness, but you don't have the oil. You have the thread, you have the lamp, but you don't have the oil. How will you keep the lamp burning? You need the oil. Put the oil in the lamp, and then you can light it up or on, and then you see light. It will be burning because there is oil. That oil is godly character, which is absent. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? What do you understand? Just say the, the way you understand what I'm saying. The way I understood is that I have to, like the old life that I'm living, that I have to put them and embrace the new life in Jesus by making sure that the life, life in holiness, I have to make every, every possible effort to be living life in holiness in every day. There is a woman that is disturbing you, which you know. There is a woman you know. You know how to Yes. You know, yes. Yeah, yeah, there is a woman. That is an issue. That is that an issue. You know. to get come and see them. Mm. I've been calling my mother that he will get married. He will get my mother. says that he doesn't have anything. We are even the one sending money to you. And you say you want to get married. So where will you even get the money you want to use and get married? So the girl is a, doing a study that when the girl finishes study, he will marry the girl. That that this and that. That uh, these people that want to be him uh, priest, the, the people are ma getting married. Mm -hmm. And I say that which uh, Catholic uh, people are, are getting married, Catholic priests are getting married. We don't know this congregation since uh, it has been two months ago now. Nobody should. He has been calling out that we should support him, that he want to go to them so that they will be him a priest. That the, the people that get married, that this girl, he will marry the girl. That this, so that has been disturbing my mother. So, what do you have to say, brother? What do you have to say, sir? Okay, thank you, Mom. What I have to say here is that uh, this is uh, a Stephenite uh, congregation. They don't, have, they don't observe celibacy. It is optional. Do you understand? And I want to. What is optional? Optional is that you can. When they ordain you, you can get married, or if you don't want to get married, you can stay celibate. But I've seen myself naturally that I want to get ordained and not be celibate. Meaning you want to do what? That I want to I want to get married and also be be a priest under that uh, missionary of the Stephenite fathers and brothers. So that that is what I've because I've seen myself that I cannot live that celibate life. Why? What is the main reason why you cannot? What is the reason? Other people are living that kind of life. They have dedicated their entire life just for God. And they're not like having any option. Why is it that you're finding it difficult to do the same? We have so many priests, powerful priests that are even living that kind of life. And that was your decision from the beginning. Yes. You made that decision from the beginning that, look, I'm going to give my life to God as a priest. Nothing like marriage, nothing like this, nothing like that. It was later, when you now went into sin, you started changing your mind. Exactly. Huh? Initially, what was your decision? Initially, I said, God, that I want to be a celibate priest. That was initially, but along the line, after my studies, I said, okay, what convinced you? Did you go into sin? And from there, you now said, okay, we, I can still be a priest, but not in the other side. What actually made me to to take that decision is based on, after my studies, 
I discovered that there is a new order that came on. See that you can be a priest, you can also not be saved with it. No, that was not the main reason. The main reason was you could not control yourself. Yes, yes. You found yourself committing sin or fornication. Yes, my uncle. That enabled you to lose that consciousness that, oh, I'm here just to give my life. You started looking for alternatives. Easier way. Easier way. That was what happened. That is actually what happened. I'm pleading so that I'll be able to take the this second option. Because presently, because I want peace to be. That is why I say let me come for prayers, for counseling, so that I'll get a proper direction. If you make a decision based on mistakes you have made, that decision is not springing from God. We don't walk by sight. Sight represents how you feel, your emotion, what your circumstances look like. We walk by faith. Faith focuses on the word of God, not on your errors, not on your mistakes, not on your sins, not on your desires, but on the words and promises of God. That is what faith focuses on. So if you're looking for um, decision that comes from God, that decision should spring from faith. Decision that springs from faith is a decision that comes from God. Decision that springs from your emotion. If you say, I cannot control my emotion, I cannot do the Decision that springs from your emotion, that springs from your feelings, that springs from the circumstances around you, are coming from sight and are not from God. The word of God should dominate your life. There is no turning back when you accept Jesus. Once you accept, you follow him. How do you follow him? You must make sure you do away with any lives of sin that will stop you from having your forward movement towards God. If it is immorality, you drop it. If it is lust, you drop it. If it is masturbation, you drop it. If it is lack of seriousness, you drop it. If it is laziness, you drop it. If it is loss of memory, you drop it. The Bible says, if your finger will cause you not to enter into the kingdom of God, it is better you do what? Do away with it. It is better to have one part of your body missing, maimed, and, and yet find yourself in the kingdom of God, than not to enter into the kingdom of God. Imagine you enter into hell with your full body. What will it profit you? If you want to be a child of God, you be. If you don't want, don't sit on the fence. If at all you want to do what you want to do now, it should not be like, this is what I have decided. Let God himself be the one to decide. How will God decide? First and foremost, the first thing you should do is cry to God and be in an attitude of repentance. That God, this was my initial plan. You did not fail me. I failed you. I need your mercy. I do not want to choose. Let your will be done. Then God can compassionately say, okay, I understand your weakness. You can do this and do that. You don't impose things for God. He's God. You don't impose, okay, this is what I want because I cannot. You don't have any right over your own life. You don't have any right to say, oh, this is my life. No, God is the giver of life. He is your director. He should direct and lead you. Not you leading yourself. Do you understand? Yes, Father. So that is the point. If you had known this right from the beginning, you would have said, oh, I'm sorry. I fell short of the glory of God. This is the life of sin I've lived. I am here for forgiveness, mercy, and for God to sanctify me and make me whole again. You stop it. Then from there, God himself will take it up and say, okay, this is what is next. Not you choosing. Do you understand? Yes, please, so what is your decision now? What do you learn from what you have said now? What should you be here for? To ask God to do for you first. What is the first thing? The first thing I have to do now is I'm asking God for mercy that I've, in my own personal weakness, I've chosen what was not initially what God said that I should do based on my personal weakness. 
I'm asking God for mercy to have compassion on me and let God also permit me to take the second option. I'm ready to serve God with my whole heart. I'm ready to, to uphold that commandment in God. I'm ready. Even when God allow me to take the second option, I'm ready to keep to it all the days in my life. So what you need to do, don't begin to choose which gear you want to do this and do that. It's not the time to start saying this gear or that gear. It is time to work out your own salvation with fear and tremble. If there's anyone like that that is trying to distract you or cause you to um, think otherwise, you bring the person to a place you know that the person will be truly delivered. If you are under the influence of lust, sexual immorality, lives of sin, you cannot make the right decision. If the lady is also under such influence, she cannot make the right decision. Weaknesses and weaknesses cannot form a godly marriage or home. Do you now understand? Yes, this is a, a very good and prophetic advice for you. Work on that. Okay? Weaknesses and weaknesses cannot come together and form godly marriage. So, this is what you should know. You. Let there be deliverance first. That on Sunday you came for prayer, you've been prayed for. You were prayed for a while ago, and you are still going to be prayed for you. These are processes of prayers that will bring deliverance into your life. Amen. Knowledge of God is the key. The knowledge is in the Word of God, and the Word of God is the truth. Once you know that truth, that truth you know will set you free. Amen. You were not ready to be set free even while I was praying for you because you lack this knowledge. The words of knowledge opened up everything now that, look, this is what you are doing that are wrong. Don't do it again. Now you know. You say, oh. Even if you say, I'm free, you must know those things you have been set free from. You must know them. Oh, this one, I mean, yes, I must not live this kind of life again. If I want this ordination, I don't want to live this kind of life. If I had sent you, I said, okay, don't worry, let you wish you go. You would not know the lives of sin. You would even think, man of God did not see me. You do not know that um, I live that kind of life. You may even be thinking, that place is not of God. Anybody can just go there and hide. There is no hiding place. What you do in the dark is what God will bring to the light and expose to set you free. He's not doing that to embarrass you. But to let you know these things are not good. Don't do them again. I still love you. You are my son. Do this. Do you understand now? Good. All right. So on this note, I'll pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you. And I ask for your mercy to speak for me. Let his sins be truly forgiven. And let his life be sanctified. Give him eternal life. Give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Fill him with the spirit of discernment. Let him be totally healed. Both spiritually and physically. Let him be completely delivered from Satan and all his evil works forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You spirit of sexual immorality and lust, wrong ambitions, spirit of fear, loss of memory, marine agents that never wanted you to be used by God. I send fire to all of you. You must leave him alone. Through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be free. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So give thanks to God. You are free today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. So you are free, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Have you ever pondered over the power of confession and transformation? It was a bright Sunday morning, the 10th of December, 2023. 
at the City of Jesus International Ministry. The atmosphere was filled with a divine aura, the congregation swaying in rhythm with the spiritual vibes. Christopher Orgy, the man of God, was leading the service, his words echoing through the hall, touching every soul present. The Holy Spirit guided him to one particular member, prompting him to arrange a meeting later in the week. The following Tuesday, a private session was held between the two. The over the power of confession and transformation. It was a bright Sunday morning, the 10th of December, 2023, at the City of Jesus International Ministry. The atmosphere was filled with a divine aura, the congregation swaying in rhythm with the spiritual vibes. Christopher Orgy, the man of God, was leading the service, his words echoing through the hall, touching every soul present. The Holy Spirit guided him to one particular member, prompting him to arrange a meeting later in the week. The following Tuesday, a private session was held between the two. The atmosphere was serene, the air filled with a sense of anticipation. Christopher, guided by divine intuition, advised the individual to confess his sins. The most pressing issue at hand was his ongoing gambling habits, a vice that was slowly eating away at his life. The man hesitated for a moment, then opened his heart. He confessed his sins, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and relief. It was a cathartic moment a release of all the guilt and shame he had been carrying around for so long. It was the first step towards his transformation. Shalom. My name is Ezen Namde. I'm from Enugu State, and I'm a commercial driver. On Sunday, the man of God told me that I have gone back to Betty, and I should come and see him within the week, which I came on Tuesday morning. He asked me why did I go back to bed and I told him that I was influenced by someone I saw playing bet. And secondly, I need money. I said, man, I need money to take care of my bills because I have a lot of financial needs. I've not uh, built my own house. I've not married. I need a lot of financial assistance. So that was why I have to try my luck in that uh, area. So, brother, what is your decision now that you've received this message from the man of God and you're confessing this life of sin? What is your decision? My decision now is that God should help me by giving me what will help me to stop playing bets. As a man of God, Christopher G. would say that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. A life of gambling is a life of sin, and it is not the way God would want you to go through. He who obeys a prophet receives a prophet's reward. So we encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life and to stay away from these lives of sin and sinful desires. And we see God Almighty doing glorious things in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Have you changed from that habit of petty or not? What is your decision? Call the name Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Again? Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 
in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So you're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are welcome to the city of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Kindly introduce yourself and what you do for a living. My name is Chinedu Ijeoma. I'm from Abia State. I am a graphics designer, a video editor, animator. I was privileged to receive training to undergo graphics designing through the man of god christopher og i'm also a worker by the grace of god here at the city of jesus international ministry okay sister on behalf of the lovers of god international foundation logic and on behalf of the city of jesus international ministry and on behalf of the man of god christopher og we present to you the sum of two hundred thousand naira. Thank you, Jesus. It's such a surprise to me. I never expected this. I never saw it coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, man of God, Christopher Oji. Thank you, the Lovers of God International Foundation. And also two bags of rice. So we are here to encourage you more. And this is a way to let me tell you that the ministry appreciates your service to God and God himself appreciates it and God have decided to recognize you today so we encourage you to keep on the good work and we pray that God will strengthen you the more in Jesus Christ's name Amen I'm short of words. I never saw this coming. I'm so grateful. My word of advice to the workers is for them to work for God with all of their hearts and give the best that they can to God because God deserves more than the best. Amen. Thank you. So we encourage you the more so go and uh, make the word of God the foundation of your life and serve God in truth and in spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
you wicked snake. Spirit of lust, masturbation, stealing. You think you can hide here? You Satan. Wicked idol. You Lucifer. I sell fire to all of you in the kingdom of darkness. The marine world, darkness, air, land, air, air, north, south, east, and west. It's mine. His family. His family. His family. You wicked ancestral spirit. You witches and wizards. What are you doing in him? Come back here. Come. What are you doing in him? Huh? Speak quickly. We are many. Mm, we are number many. one. The foundation from the water. Try the name of Jesus Christ. With the water. Name in which local government? We state in Nigeria. How do you operate? You marine agents from the marine kingdom. We destroy destinies. Whose destinies have you been destroying? A lot, a lot from his foundation. A lot, a lot. We create hatred, hatred. We create hatred among who? Among him and people, people. Anybody he comes across. Uh -huh. I create hatred. I ruin careers. How do you destroy careers? I take what they have. Like? I give them what I have. I stop their education. I stop their work. I ruin them. After education, they won't get a job. There is a medical doctor here that is coming from United States of America. And she graduated and she's not working with a certificate. What do you know about that? Is that also part of your evil job? You evil spirits? Yes, yes. You that are studying and you believe when you graduate as this and that, you can travel to this and that country and make it without deliverance, without being separated from evil spirits that have been hiding in your character and in your life. Are you not seeing that that is the reason why you cannot give account? Even though you have graduated with the best degree, best certificate, and traveled outside the country, you cannot even feed yourself nor your family. And you are still saying, I'm not possessed. Repent. How else do you operate? Especially this one. I create destruction in this academy. I will make him face troubles. What kind of trouble?
Shalom. Hello, man of God. Uh, my name is uh, Van Gey Silva, and I'm speaking from uh, Belgium. What is your country of origin? My country of origin is Suriname. Wonderful. So, what do you do for a living? Right now, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing nothing. I'm just home. So, I'm unemployed. So, yes. Great. So, what do you want Jesus Christ to do for you? Yeah, so uh, what I uh, I want God to help me with uh, a couple of things that I'm uh, struggling with, uh, such as uh, spirit of lust, uh, spirit of fear, uh, anger, unhappiness, uh, doubting, and, and not being able to open up to, to no one. So I keep everything to myself. And uh, things from the past also, such as uh, masturbation and uh, pornography, that's that, uh, that uh, oh, yeah, something like that. And uh, I also want God to help me with my career because it's been a long time. I, I'm looking for what I'm supposed to do in this life, but it's like I am keep standing at the, at the same spot every year, every year, every year. So it's, it's keep repeating itself. And at the point of breakthrough, it's like I, I, I'm, I'm going to achieve something. And then at the point of breakthrough, I fall down. Every time, every time. So I want God to, to really help me and show me what I need to do because it's like I'm losing time. What can you do? What do you know how to do? What do you derive joy in doing? Yes, uh, a couple of days ago, I uh, applied for uh, like, uh, I don't know how to say it in English. It's like uh, working for the, for the state. Like not policemen, but uh, uh, people that are working on the, at the border to control uh maybe if if people have uh dangerous weapons or drugs and you wanted to join the immigration i i think yeah i think that's uh, that's the name but yeah but it's i don't know of if that's it's uh what god has planned for me so i want i want god to guide me because it's like i don't know what i i need to do anymore so yes um you struggled in the past uh, because you did not involve god to involve God in your life is to involve his kind of life. God's life is a life without sin. God wants you to be fully sanctified, purified and justified. So if you finally give in the grace to work somewhere, you will not promote sin but God. So you have not wasted any time. Everything you have faced brought you to a place of knowledge of God. So it is not to be considered as a waste. So the best time to start working for God is now. The best time to start achieving things is now. It's not too late. Nothing is too late for God. Okay? You are not a wasted life. You are not a nuisance. You are not totally destroyed beyond repair. So don't be confused. Don't condemn yourself. God has a big time plan for you. And that plan will start unfolding after the prayer. Okay? So just get ready. Don't condemn yourself. Don't begin to compare yourself to someone else. See this one? He has achieved this. I have not. This, that, that. No. You are not like others. Your life is designed to glorify God, not Satan. Okay? Feel free and be happy. You are a young man. Don't be depressed. Oh, Feel yes, free. Life. So be happy with yourself. Now you are going to be prayed for. That will be breaking of chains. Mm -hmm. That Satan used to tie you and your career down. That will be totally destroyed now. And you walk mm -hmm. out in liberty and mm -hmm. begin to possess your possessions. He will not tie you anymore. The only mm -hmm. thing you need to do now... Don't say, I'm a young man. Let me live my life the way I want it. Stop swimming in the ocean of sin. You have to abide. Jesus said, abide in me and let my word abide in you. For without me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15. So you have to abide in the word of God. It is very important. Don't neglect that. Okay? So we will pray for you. Now you will see what will happen after the prayer. The very day you come back and say, I have my testimony I want to testify live and direct like this. I will remind you, remember that very day. Yes. So, yes. so be happy. God has opened doors for you already. All right. Amen. Call the name Jesus Christ and get ready for prayer. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
I send the fire of God's holiness into your heart. And I stand against the spirit of sin. I stand against lust, immorality. I stand against anger, spiritual wife, Holy Ghost. Fire! Did you see that reaction? <laughs> Who can stand the fire of God's holiness? Yeah. What? Turn the blood of Jesus Christ, you Satan, you <coughs> Lucifer, and spiritual wife. I send more fire to all your hiding places in your evil kingdoms. Holy Ghost, turn the blood of Jesus Christ, his eyes, face, <coughs> back. Turn the eyes, the eyes. Turn, turn the blood of Jesus Christ. Right now, I send the fire from God straight down to your secret places, your secret codes, his tongue, and I command your evil secrets to be exposed, his mouth. Tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear the tongue. Tear the eyes. Tear the tongue. Tear. I command your secret to be exposed. Speak out. Your secrets have been exposed. Speak out and answer me quickly. Who are you? I am the one who will destroy this world. I am the great master. From where? What's your name? Every master has a name. Who are you? Hero of the underworld. Leviathan. Holy Ghost. Tear! Tear! What sign is this? X66. The number of the beast. Who are you then? Are you the beast? You want to praise me. You are not only going to be oppressed, you are captured to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, tear the two eyes. Now answer me quickly. Are you the beast? Yes or no? Yes, the beast. <sighs> How do the you beast. operate as the beast? I destroy everything. His family. Uh, his career. Uh, uh, what life of sin did you push him to live? You beast. Uh, masturbation. Pornography. Watching evil things. Uh, anger. Anger. It's consuming him. He's not happy. Uh, right now, I send fire from heaven. Fire of God's holiness straight down to you, beast, and all kings of the modern world. Holy Ghost, fear the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Speak out and expose your evil works. What other addiction and life of sin did you push him to live? Adultery, fornication. <laughs> I even kill this father. Jealousy. Jealousy among his family. And then they kill this father, one of my agents. How? What happened? How did you do that? Explain. Cut him with a knife. Jealousy. You made a sign, a wicked sign, and you call it sign of what? It is a sign of the beast. What do you use it, it for? Uh, uh, we use it throughout the internet to capture people, destroying their destiny. Uh, How do you uh, normally use it to capture people? What caliber of people do you capture? Uh, People that are watching Netflix. I send fire to your secret codes and I command all of them to be exposed so you cannot hide anyone. Fear the name of Jesus Christ. Now answer me quickly. What caliber of people and how have you been capturing them? The youth. The youth. They are very naive. They are very naive. Yes. How do you mean? Explain. Uh, they don't know nothing about life. Uh, the only thing they care about is pleasure. They are young. Uh, they are young. What type of sinful pleasure 
have you been using to capture this so-called naive youth, as you claimed? Monography, masturbation, Instagram. You cannot begin to mention social media because they too are promoting things of God. You cannot begin to condemn them. We are not here to be against anyone. We are only against sin. Speak and expose these sinful activities you have been using to capture people and destroy them. Movies. Satanic movies. There is one particular rapper in America. He designed a show to praise me. You said I designed to praise you. Who are you? Oh, I am the beast. I control everything on earth. Everyone that is not believing in me. You cannot control everyone. Who are the people you have been controlling? Non-believers. The one that doesn't believe in I know. You know. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak and answer me quickly. The one who does not believe in who? You cannot call the name. You've got no right. This is not a place you control or give condition. We are not here for negotiation. <sighs> speak and answer me quickly. The one who does not believe in who? Holy. The name is too holy. We cannot call the name. You will call the name, but let's fetch out some things. Now, how have you been capturing unbelievers? What have you been using to capture the so-called unbelievers, as you said? Big pastors. Some people love prophecies. How yeah. do you use your so-called fake pastors, as you claimed, and fake prophecies, as you claimed, to possess and destroy the world? Telling people what they want to hear. You have money. People will know you, and that's how we deceive them. I People hope love me. You are gonna become a millionaire. You're gonna be famous. Everybody is gonna know your name. <sighs> Who used to say all these kind of words? The prophets. Who possessed them to be saying that kind of things? Me. Who are you that possess them to be giving such messages? The beast. How many of them have you possessed all around the world like that? How many all together? Too many. How do you normally possess your so-called fake ministers? How? What uh, life of sin have you been using to possess them? Money. <sighs> Some people love money. They love money too much, and that will bring them downfall. <sighs> Are you also saying that money is the root of all evil? Are you also yes. using that one to connect them to you, the evil beast? Yes. What other life of sin have you been using to possess people like that, as you claimed? Mention the lives of sin. Right now, I send fire to you, wicked beast. You cannot hide your secret. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What other life of sin have you been using to possess them? Use women in the church to deceive them. Young women, young girls, we make them rare. So that you can see their body. And that's how you get initiated to a kingdom. Which kingdom? Kingdom of light or kingdom of darkness? Darkness. What is your position in a kingdom of darkness, you beast? I am the king of the underworld. Apart from the people you have mentioned, who else in the world have you been possessing 
are using to operate. Uh, ministers, presidents. Uh, we don't have time. Your master, master is coming. How do you operate? You have mentioned another level. How do you operate and use that second level you have mentioned? Uh, bringing confusion throughout nations of the world. What kind of confusion have you been bringing? Economic crisis. <laughs> Violence, uh, police violence, through the name of Jesus Christ, speak out and say everything. Discrimination. Right now, I send more fire to your secret codes, and I command your evil secrets to be exposed. You cannot hide any one of them. Holy Ghost, through the name of Jesus Christ, through, pick out and expose everything. Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist is on his way to deceive the non believers. Through what means? Signs and wonders from the evil kingdom. Deceiving them that the Messiah is not coming. The name is too holy. Leading people from leading people from your master. How? Deceiving them. What do you normally tell them that makes them not to believe? In is Jesus this, Christ. Is that one of the even real? Did you see him? Did you encounter him? Making them to doubt the world. You mean this one? Yeah. Why are you hiding your eyes, your face? Viewers, are you watching? Are you not seeing just the Bible alone? See the power of God <laughs> coming out of it. What is in the word of God that destroys you beast and all the powers of darkness? Fire! 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 I send that fire to your heart. To your evil kingdoms, you beast. Tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear the heart. Tear and the mind. Tear. Speak out and answer me quickly. What is in me, Christopher O.G., and in the city of Jesus International Ministry, that will destroy you, beast, and all the powers of darkness? There is fire. If this man is delivered... Helping people, telling them good things, being gentle. Viewers, what? Right now, I send a fire of the Holy Spirit to your base in Marine Kingdom. Tell the name of Jesus Christ. Now answer me. If you are finally destroyed, you beast. What will happen to this man and to the people you are possessed all around the world? What will happen to them? They will prosper in life. What is wrong about that? Why do you hate freedom, prosperity, salvation, and eternal life? Why do you hate that? Because I don't have much time left. You said my master is coming. Right now it is time you cannot hide. Say his name. What is his name? Speak out and say that quickly. Yeah. I send fire to the tongue and I command you to speak clearly. Tell the name of Jesus Christ. Tell. Tell. 
What is the name of my master? Who is my master? Jesus. Viewers, the time of deliverance has come. All that calls on the name Jesus Christ will be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. Right now, I send the light of the gospel of God's salvation to his soul, spirit, and body, and to the kingdom of darkness. What sign is this? The beast. What does it mean? Protection. You cannot stop the power of God. Right now, I send the power of God straight down to his heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot oh. stop the power of God. Fear! Jesus Christ had the conquering power. He has the conquering power and has given us the conquering power. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you removing? Failure. It's just failure. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to the marks of the beast. Six, six, six. Holy Ghost, fear! Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Every mark of the beast in any human being. In anywhere all around the world, I command them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Fear! Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. What is happening to your evil Max, you wicked beast? I will kill this one. It's being burned down. They are not I'm only going to be burned down, they will be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! What is happening to your underworld, your evil kingdoms? It's falling apart. It's not only falling apart. It's totally destroyed. I send more fire in charge of total destruction to the marine kingdom and base. To you wicked beast and your evil signs. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! No one can withstand the power of God. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! You wicked beast, your prince and princesses, your thrones and kingdoms, your ornaments and weapons of warfare, I send fire from heaven and I command all of them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! I send the fire of the Holy Spirit. To the sun, to the moon, to the oceans, to the water, to the sea, to the rivers, deepest part of the ocean where you are hiding. Holy Ghost, fear the name of Jesus Christ. Fear you spirit of immorality, spirit of anger, spirit in charge of murder, killing, stealing, and destruction, spirit of deception, antichrist spirit. Holy Ghost, fear the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Viewers, you are watching. We are going to 70%. We have 30 more percent to watch. Mm -hmm. Right now, I saw the whole world, both believer and unbeliever, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, where you beast cannot operate. And I command their souls, spirit, and bodies to be delivered. Holy Ghost, fear the name of Jesus Christ. To Satan himself, to Lucifer, to serpent, and the evil eye monitoring the universe. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Your science cannot work here. This is the city of Jesus International Ministry where you cannot operate. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Your wicked horns. You Satan, you Satan, I send fire to you. You Lucifer, I send fire to you. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. You snake, the python, I send fire to you. The trinity of Satan and everything that operates therein, I send fire to your total destruction. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! 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 I stretch my hands and I command 
Satan and his evil kingdoms, Lucifer and his evil kingdoms, serpents, Python and his evil kingdoms, and all kingdoms of Antichrist operating in the visible and in the invisible worlds to be captured and destroyed totally by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I command every soul that have been held captive by Satan, Lucifer, serpent, the beast, Antichrist, and the like, to be totally delivered and set free by the power of God. Right now, receive your deliverance. I am speaking to you. I send the fire of God's holiness and deliverance to your soul, spirit, and body. I send the fire of holiness and God's deliverance to your soul, spirit, and body, to your mind, and I command you to receive your deliverance right now. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! 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 I am speaking to your heart. I command your heart to be redeemed by the power of God. Receive your deliverance. Receive eternal life and total redemption. Receive Jesus Christ into your life. Receive the mark of Jesus Christ. The mark of holiness. The mark of eternal life. The mark of purity. The mark of goodness and kindness. The mark of love and self-control. The mark of joy and peace. Receive the mark of righteousness. Receive the mark of righteousness and purity. Receive the mark of Jesus Christ in your soul, spirit, and body. I stand against all satanic marks. I stand against the mark of the beast. 666 operating in the air. Operating on the land. Operating in water. Operating in your soul, spirit, and body. I command all of them to be captured and totally destroyed completely by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! 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 I declare everyone free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now we are going back to the man. Tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! I command all souls that are kept in the kingdoms of Satan, that are kept by Satan, Lucifer, serpent, the python, that are kept in the underworld to be totally taken out of the kingdom of Satan and fully placed forever in the kingdom of God. I command his soul to be taken. He's been taken. His spirit to be taken is being taken out of Satan. His body to be taken is taken. He can no longer be tied there. He's taken and placed into the kingdom of God forever. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! Tear! All satanic chains and cobweb. All satanic chains and padlock. Keys of Antichrist. I command all of them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! <laughs> what are you removing? His career. <laughs> His breakthrough, his marriage. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Remove your wicked horn, you wicked beast. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Horn of sin, horns of sin and iniquity. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Horns of deceit and immorality. Remove all. Every horn in charge of lies and fake news. Remove everything. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Pull them out. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. What are you pulling out? Fake news. Fake. Right now, I send fire from heaven to destroy the spirit of lies. Fake prophecies. That lying spirit. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. The fire has gone down to the stomach, to the heart, to fetch them out. That lying spirit. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. What? The poison of lie will come out more. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. I command the poison of lie. That spirit in charge of lies. Tear! Are you seeing the poison coming out? Hearing it? 
say, hearing him vomiting it. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, all satanic powers operating in, in him, I command all of them to be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Anywhere they're hiding, his eyes, his forehead, his brain, his nose, his ears, his tongue, his mouth, every organ, cells or tissue, his heart, in the name of Jesus Christ, tear! We are the 99% of the completion of his deliverance. So just one more percent. What? Tear in the name of Jesus Christ, tear! I command all satanic signs, incantations, charms of all kinds, covenants of all kinds, initiations of all kinds, sacrifices of all kinds, all satanic bond, I command all of them to be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. Is the one working, going straight to every division, every part. There is nothing that is created that is hidden from him. Where can the beast hide? Where can Satan and Lucifer hide? Be hidden that will not be traced by the spoken word of God. Right now I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to the visible and the invisible world. And I command all of you to be totally captured and destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, tear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! The two hands, the fingers. Tear! 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 The feet, the back, where you move, you snake. Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! The powers are totally destroyed. The beasts have been totally destroyed. Satan and his evil agents are totally destroyed. Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tear, you spirit of death. Tear! Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been swallowed up in victory, you spirit of death. Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! Be free! In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Watch viewers. He has been totally delivered by God himself. Congratulations. Many that have been possessed in the past are totally set free now. His deliverance is not just for him alone, but for everybody that have been possessed by unclean spirits. He is given a new heart now. It has come down. It has entered him now. And he will come back to his normal sense. What? Did you see that? How are you? I am fine. What happened to you during the prayer? I don't know. You said that you were the beast. Huh? Which beast? You said that you were the beast and you have the marks of the beast. Six, six, six. No. Oh, I don't have marks. Huh? Can you tell the whole world what happened to you during the prayer? At the beginning, I just told what my problem was and all that, what I wanted to pray for. And suddenly, I called, the, I called the name Jesus two times. And then, man of God, he, he was praying. And then, my, my body just moved. I don't know. Check yourself. Yes. Check your heart. Do you still have the desire to live a life of sin? Do you still have the desire to commit sexual immoralities, watch lustful things? Yes or no? No, no. I want to live only for Jesus. So your appearance and everything yeah. about you should reflect Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen. And make sure you start reading the word of God, meditating on the word and obeying the word. This will help you not yes. only to continue to receive, but also to maintain what God has graciously given to you. Now you have the conquering power. Yes. You can actually overcome your past, overcome setback, mm. limitation, and the like. Okay? Thank you, G. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Which power has set you free now? Only Jesus can do it. Only Jesus. Have you I... ever experienced anything like this before? At my home, never. 
What did you experience now that you believe you've never experienced before? I, I don't even know how to explain it. Look, I'm, I'm sweating. Um, it's it's crazy. And I also see I, I spit on the ground. Yeah, I don't know. It's very... Right now, I'm a bit confused. So God yes. is not the author of confusion. You are no. just being set free from the beast that was yeah. hiding in you, leading you to live a life of sin. So you are totally free. Amen. Now that you're free, you have to live a life without sin. Did you hear mm. that? Yes, yes, yes. I heard it. I heard it. And yeah. then come back for your wonderful testimonies. Yes. Shalom. 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 Hello, man of God. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Wonderful. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us your names, where you are speaking from, and what you do for a living. Uh, my name is Meron Asafaharom. I am originally from Ethiopia, but have been residing in Canada for the past 20 years. And uh, I am currently a student in uh, the Doctor of Ministry program at a theological university. And uh, I am planting a church with my family. Wonderful. All right. You are welcome to the Zoom meeting here in the City of Jesus International Ministry. What do you want God Almighty to do for you? I would like to confess my sins uh, so that I can be free and uh, do the work of God with more power and uh, with divine guidance. Uh, I want to be free of anger, frustration, uh, of all sorts of limits patience. Uh, I lose my temper very easily. I'm impatient. I have a tendency of not believing God, even though he gives me a lot of promises. Uh, I tend to mistrust a lot. Uh, and I do say that I forgive people, but I do hold on to unforgiveness and to offenses uh, because he keeps showing me the same people in my dreams. So I know I haven't really forgiven from my heart. Um, in my past, I came from a lot of bad back background of all, lots of sins that he has delivered me from, but uh, I see a lot of limitation. I advance and then I am held back. I advance and I am held back and I'm not functioning at the full potential that God can use me at. So I believe I need deliverance and I have a lot of nightmares. Uh, I see men chasing me. I see... Uh, me not being able to advance, my car being stuck in mud, uh, even though the promises are there, I am being held back. And uh, I also see a lot of attacks on my family all around me, even though we have a lot of potential. For example, I have three brothers, they're all under attack, they're not married, their lives are scattered. Uh, I see a lot of scattering ar around us, a, a lot of, even the, the, the church that we are uh, about that we're planting, we're renovating it, but we're, we're stuck. It's not advancing. So I just want to confess, I, I just want to be free so that I can hear from God, so that I can minister to people with power, so that it's not just, uh, you know, through eloquence of words and, and just preaching the word, but with the power of God. All right. Uh, when it comes to knowing the power of God, you cannot know God's power if you do not know your weaknesses. God's power is made manifest in God's children's weaknesses. If you come arrogantly and say, no, I am righteous, I am this and that, there will not be any spiritual basis for God's power to be manifested or to be made manifest in you, since you claim that you don't have any weakness. Jesus Christ said, I did not come for the righteous. I came for the unrighteous. He preferably said in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, Come unto me, 
all ye that are weak and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Did he say that, come unto me, all you that are very, very, very righteous, those who claimed to be perfect and right, arrogantly came to Jesus in the form of Pharisees and Sadducees and teachers of the law. How many of them inherited the kingdom of God? Jesus Christ went and gathered people that were nobody in the society and used them to form his ministry and empowered them to operate, even after he had ascended to heaven. If you claim that you have no sin, you deceive yourself and the truth is not in you. Everyone is a sinner. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. This calls for humility. This calls for sincerity and openness. God does not condemn anyone. God can use anyone, not some people. God can use anyone, whether you are a male or female, old or young, married or single, fair-colored or dark-skinned. If you believe, you will repent. If you repent, you will follow the path of genuine and sincere obedience to the word and promises of God. Your obedience to the words and promises of God will enable you to receive the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be empowered by God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God given to God's children to operate. If you are empowered by the Spirit of God, you will have the nature of God. I mean the fruit of the Holy Spirit, obviously living and working in you and through you. The nature or the fruit of the Spirit of God are found in Galatians chapter 5 from verses 22 to 23. That is why confession is very important. If you say you are working for God with the nature of Satan, you are indirectly working for Satan. Confession helps you to be totally submissive to God. You cannot say, no, I am neither cold nor hot. I only get angry occasionally. I only tell lie occasionally. I only commit sin occasionally. If the Spirit of God lives in you, your body will be dead to sin and will begin to live for God. The very Spirit of Jesus, Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, will quicken your mortal flesh to start living for God. The life you will start living at this point will no longer be yours, but that of Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. So if you begin to tell lies, you must know who is living in you at that moment. The person can never be God, can never be Jesus, and can never be the Holy Spirit. The era of deception is gone. The era of pretense and hypocrisy is gone. No one can pretend anymore to be a child of God. If you are a child of God, by your fruit, by your character, by your behavior, you will be identified. If you are a child of Satan, but you claim to be a child of God, by your fruit, by your character, and by your behavior, you will be identified. Viewers, I believe you have learned. She decided to follow the right process. And we are going to pray. So let us pray, madam. What do you believe that Jesus Christ will do for you? I believe he uh, will deliver me today uh, of all my afflictions and will uh, give me a new, a new life with him, a very close, intimate relationship with him. All right, let us pray. Focus on him alone. Imagine how Paul and Silas 
behaved when they were in the prison. They were not focusing on themselves. They did not focus on the co-prisoners. They did not focus on the chains and the condition of the prison. They focused on the power of God. They focused on God himself, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The trinity of heaven that were capable of setting them free. And they were simply praising and glorifying God. And they got their salvation. Now focus on Jesus Christ, the amazing Savior. And believe that by calling his name alone, you will be totally set free and positioned to worship him. Now call the name Jesus Christ by faith and get ready for your salvation. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command your sins to be washed away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Receive the forgiveness of your sins. Receive a pure heart. Receive healing and deliverance. I stand against all evil spirits that are opposing the grace of God and the blessings of God upon your life and family. I command them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, I send a fire of the Holy Spirit to your life, to your heart, and to your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, you wicked ancestral spirits, spiritual husband, demons, in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot hide here. All of you that have been hiding to operate, stopping a vision and mission, I command all of you to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Your evil rings and crowns. Put them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. You wicked spiritual husband. Ancestral spirits. In the name of Jesus Christ. Leave our soul, spirit, and body alone. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot say no. I send fire to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, her heart, the back. In the name of Jesus Christ, tear, tear, you wicked serpent. Tear, tear. I sell fire to your base and your evil kingdoms. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Tear. Remove everything you have planted in her. <coughs> Pull them out. Pull them out. Fear, 
evil voices. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Right now, I command every obstacle in your life and in your relationship with God to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I send fire to her heart, her mind, her back, and her womb. In the name of Jesus Christ, Move, you serpent. Move. Pull out your evil rings. Pull them out quickly. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. I send more fire to the marine world. And I command serpent. To be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear. Remove your covenants. Put them out. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Your evil rings and crowns. Her face. Her face. Fear. Viewers, watch the forces of darkness that have been hiding to operate, to cause her setback and stagnation can no longer hide. The Spirit of God is going down to their hiding places to destroy all of them. The fire has come down mightier than ever. Down to her heart! Turn the name of Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ, you cannot escape here. You spirit of Lucifer, snake, Satan, spiritual husband, marine spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I send more fire to your base. The water in the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. You watch this screen. The power of God is still coming down heavier. And the fire of the Holy Spirit is coming down against Lucifer, spiritual husband, Satan, and the snake that have been hiding in her to stop her blessings. They will no longer hide today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I send fire to a voice, the voice you are attacking. Turn the voice, the voice, tear the tongue, tear, tear, tear. Right now, I send more fire to your evil crowns, the crowns on her head. Tear. Tear the head and the mind. Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. They can no longer hide in her mind. Tear in the mind, the mind, the head. Tear, tear, tear. Lucifer was hiding, thinking they can hide. And his spiritual husband. There is no hiding place for all of them. The fire is going down. To the kingdom of darkness, more are coming. The womb, the back, the brain, your evil chains. Turn the name of Jesus Christ and your evil rings. You will be forced to speak. Right now, I send fire to the family and I command you, ancestral spirits, witches, and wizards monitoring demons to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. No hiding place for them. They 
cannot hide. This is the city of Jesus International <coughs> Ministry where demons cannot hide. I sell fire to the sun, to the moon, and I sell fire to the heavenly realms. I sell fire to her heart, her family, her mind, her marriage. In the name of Jesus Christ, the evil spirits hiding in these places that have been mentioned can no longer hide them. Imagine what is happening in their midst now. The fire is coming down again, going straight to all of them. Watch. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. The eyes, the tongue. Tear. Tear. I send no fire to her tongue, and I command your evil secrets to be exposed. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, she was very comfortable at the beginning. When she started speaking, they were hiding, all of them. Spiritual husbands, ancestral spirits, snake, Lucifer, and Satan. They never knew they would be touched. Anytime she goes to a place of prayer, they will always find themselves somewhere where they, they will hide. They hide in her mind not to believe that she will be delivered. She will be seeing herself as a righteous person. You just need no more prayer, just like that. Watch. Right now, I send fire to your secret places where you're hiding. All of you know hiding place. Within her house, within her office, outside her house, in your coven worlds, in your shrines, in water, on earth and in the kingdom of darkness, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit is going down to her mind, straight down to the mind. There is a very spiritual battle now against the mind controlling powers of darkness. Lucifer himself, watch. <laughs> They are trying to block the prayers, but that would not happen here. The fire has gone down to the heart and to the hand. The hand! Turn the name of Jesus Christ! <laughs> trying to cool the fire, which cannot be quenched by anybody. Not even by air, nor water. I send fire to her blood, to her bones, to all the organs in her body, her cells and tissues, and I send fire to her eyes, and I command the powers of darkness operating there to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, what? Fire! More fire to her tongue. The tongue, the voice, from the name of Jesus Christ. You have never witnessed what you are witnessing. From the name of Jesus Christ. I command your evil crowns on her and your evil staff of authority to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is being destroyed. You cannot stop that. The fire has come down. More. More on the hair. Inside the brain. In the name of Jesus Christ. The mind. Fire. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, I send fire to the satanic horns, the two horns on her forehead, and I send fire to the monitoring eyes, and I command them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. 
The fire has come down. Watch viewers and see what is happening. In the name of Jesus Christ, every part of our body, your covenant rings. In the name of Jesus Christ, put them out. Your covenant rings. Put them out. You are not removing the rings. Remove the rings. The crowns and your evil rings, pull them out, all of them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I send more fire to everything you have planted in her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fire. The fire has gone down to the water. And all the kingdoms of darkness there are undergoing total destruction. The queen of darkness, the kings of darkness, the spiritual husband, are not left out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speak louder. What have you done to this woman? How did you destroy her? How? Why do you not want her to serve God? Who are you? How was she given to you? Who are you that claimed that she was given to you? I sell fire to the tongue. I saw it. I saw it. Who are you that claim that the mother gave her to you? Who are you in a family? Are you in a family idols? Yes or no? Yes. How do you operate as a family idol? What have you done to her and members of her family as a family idol? We want to destroy her. We want to destroy her. We don't want them to be. We got to stop them to be. We want to scatter them. We hate them. You don't want to scatter them. So we hate them. What have you done to the siblings and to yeah, other members of the family? What have you done to this lady's marriage, her career, and her willingness and desire to serve God? What have you done to her so far, you family idols? I'm looking at her. I'm looking at the dragons and she gets me. She can save many people. She can save many people. She can prophesy. She can save. She can save. How many families and people all around the world have you possessed and destroyed? Your family mm. idols. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. How have you been possessing and destroying them? Poverty. Poverty. What lies of sin have you been pushing them to live so you can continue to give them poverty, limitation, and the like? Mention the lives of sin. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. What other lies of sin apart from doubting? Hatred. 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 What are the bad characters you've given to this woman 
that enabled you to possess her and to destroy her and her family. Go ahead and say more. Lying or what? Destruction. Destruction. And the two much time. Destruction. We destruct person. Who else is hiding in this body? What about you, spiritual husband? What are you doing in her? And what have you done to her marriage? What do you intend to achieve by pushing this woman to always quarrel with her husband? I take away her bad things. I take away her bad things. How many women all around the world have you possessed? caused to quarrel with their husband and destroy their marriages. Some are divorced already. Some are undergoing process of divorce. Some are no longer speaking with their husband and some have lost affection for their husband. How many women and marriages have you destroyed in this manner? From the name of Jesus Christ, you are speaking already. I send fire to the tongue and the voice. Speak and answer me quickly. How many women and marriages have you destroyed in this manner? Many, 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 many. You, Satan and Lucifer, what are you doing in her and what have you planned to do to her ministry, to her relationship and fellowship with God? What did you give up? She's stubborn. She doesn't stop. She's stubborn. I want her to be blind to the things of God. I want her to be deaf. Spiritually deaf and spiritually blind. How do you mean? Explain. I don't want her to hear his voice. I want her to hear his voice. What have you done to our relationship and fellowship with God? <sighs> I don't want to spend time with God. Ugh. I don't want her to spend time with God. Why do you not want her to spend time with God? Why? You Satan. Because she loves him. She... Because that makes me jealous. How many people that have been destined to spend time with God, serve the Lord in spirit and in truth, have you destroyed their relationship and fellowship with God, you, Satan, Lucifer, and Snake? How many people all around the world? Mm -hmm. Speak loud. Mm -hmm. What have you been using to stop them from serving the Lord and spending time in God's presence? Who have been distracting them? Who caused them to be very busy doing something else instead of rendering their services to God? <laughs> Mention your names. You were hiding at the beginning of this prayer when this prayer started. When God led me to pray for this woman, you, Satan, Asian serpent, Lucifer, spiritual husband, idols, and the like, were all hiding. Why were you hiding at the beginning? Because we don't want her to be free. We don't want her to free her. She had a dream. She had a dream. She had a 
had a dream that you delivered her. She saw your boss, your boss. She saw him with you, and she had a dream. She had a dream. What is in me, Christopher Oji, and in the City of Jesus International Ministry, that exposed you evil spirits and will destroy you, your evil works and your evil kingdoms? Fire, 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 fire. During this prayer section. The network was affected. Who affected the network? Why could you not succeed? The deliverance is still on course now. Why could you not succeed in preventing her from being delivered? You evil spirits. Why? Speak louder. Fire everywhere. There's fire. There's fire. I'm powerless. I'm powerless. Who is in me, Christopher Oji, that makes you evil spirits, powerless, and that will finally destroy all of you? He's in heaven. He's there. He's there. He's there. I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> right now, I send fire to all of you. Mention his name quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. I am seeing you mentioning his name, his complete names. Jesus Christ. Say that louder and clearly. Jesus Christ. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 13, it is clearly written. And those who call on the name Jesus Christ will be saved. Salvation has come not just to her, but to everyone that has been possessed and destroyed by Satan, Lucifer, serpent, spiritual husband, idols, and the powers of darkness. Right now, I see fire from God coming down to all of you. And I see you and your evil works and kingdoms being totally destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is the second anniversary of the City of Jesus International Ministry. Satan cannot work and operate. The ministry has been given by God to destroy Satan, Lucifer, and all the powers of darkness. And none of them will escape. In the name of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is not just a matter of vocabulary, matter of words. It is all about the presence of God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, working mightily to set all the children of God free. Watch. If God were to be here in human form, what would his presence be like? Watch. The presence of God shows the presence of power. Power not to kill, steal, and destroy, but to save lives. Watch. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Your total destruction has come now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are not only going to be weakened, but to be totally destroyed. And this woman and everyone you are possessed will be set free. I command her soul, spirit, and body. The soul, spirit, and bodies of everyone you are possessed in the world to be taken out of your evil kingdoms of darkness and to be finally placed into the kingdom of God forever. And I command your kingdoms and the works to be destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ, check your kingdoms. What is happening? Check your evil works. What is happening to all of them? And check yourselves. What is happening to all of you? In the name of Jesus Christ, 
<laughs> Remember, she is in Canada, and we are here in the City of Jesus International Ministry in Enugu State, Nigeria, West Africa. Check the social distance and see what God is doing. See the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire to the crowds and to the evil horns, the monitoring eyes and the marks of the beast, and I command them to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear your wicked horns, you Satan. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear. I declare her and everyone free in the name of Jesus Christ. She has just received a new heart. She has come back to her senses now. Watch. Thank you, man. Thank you. I'm free. I am free. I am free. What are you being set free from? What are you thanking God for? Why are you thanking God? I was tormented for a long, long, long time. I didn't want the spirit, but I knew it was there and it was hiding and it was not being discovered. So I had a dream. I had a dream that you were teaching me how to put on socks, dress socks. I just had a dream out of nowhere, a couple of weeks ago and I, I knew that I would get my deliverance here. I, I knew that from now on everything will be brand new. My relationship with, with God will be brand new. I will be able to hear his voice. I will be able to serve him more obediently. I know that I am free. What are your words of advice to people all around the world, particularly those who claim they are closer to God and they want to start ministries. They just want to go into missionary works. What do you have to tell them? What are your words of advice? My advice is everyone should be delivered. Everyone should needs to get their deliverance, especially before ministering others. They, they, need to, they need to check themselves. They need to check their hearts. They need to hear that. And if he shows them that there's something in their lives, they need to go for their deliverance. And this is this is a fruitful place. This is a place where they can come. Christopher Orgy Ministries is one place they can come where there is the fire of God, but they need to be free so that they can be free to serve God. What if they say that they are too big? Or what if they say that this ministry is fake? What if they do not believe? What words of advice or counseling do you have for people in this caliber? Mm -hmm. People need to reach out. People need to link to this ministry. It's a, it's a place where deliverances happen, where lives are set free, where lives are transformed, where the fire, the, the pure fire of God, you know, it's here. They need to come. They need to link up. They need to, to contact you. Who has set you free now? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has set me free. How much did you pay to receive your freedom, your deliverance, and your salvation? Nothing. It was free. It was a free. It's a gift of God. I just contacted this ministry. They put me and I told them I was what if someone stands somewhere to say you were being paid money to start behaving the way you were behaving during the prayers what if someone says that your deliverance is fake what message do you have for such group of people of God. I, I am I'm a pastor. 
I uh, I'm put in church. I I was not paid. Again, as I said, this is the first time I I'm, I'm speaking with you, prophet of God, man of God. I was not paid whatsoever. I didn't pay anything. I was not paid. If anything, I don't want to manifest. I want to be dignified. You know, I I, I want to keep I want to keep a uh, safe face. So this is genuine. I was surprised. I knew there was a spiritual husband and some idols, but the way that I manifested was a surprise to me. But I don't care because I want to be free. I want to be free. Are you boldly saying that your clip can be played off and on to bring people to a place of genuine repentance and salvation? Yes or no? Yes, yes. I, I, want, I want people to see this and I want people to be free. Yes. Wonderful. God has set you free through his words and by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Continue to allow your life to be controlled, ruled, and dominated by the words and spirit of God. I am seeing you coming back with powerful testimonies that will make people to believe that Jesus Christ lives. So get ready for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man of God. Thank you so much. I will come back with my testimony. Thank Wonderful. You. Make sure you inform members of your family to connect. You are saved to save others. Let your friends know. Let everybody know. Let your colleagues know. And God will bless you for that. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you very well. Shalom. Shalom. Tell us your names, where you are speaking from, and what you do for a living. My name is Kele Bohile. I'm calling from Botswana. I'm 32 years old. I was once doing a business, but now I don't do anything. I'm just the indoors. What do you want the living God Almighty to do for you? I want God to forgive all my sins and cleanse me the sins of impatience, gossiping, lies, depression, anxiety, excessive fear. I just want God to forgive me and I want God to deliver me from the spirit of, it's like a mental disorder, it's like a confusion, spirit of sickness, spirit of death, anxiety, depression, and panic attacks. Let us pray. Call the name Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You evil spirits, why are you attacking her mind, her marriage, her health? Why? Why? Turn the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why should I leave her? She has to go mad. Your evil plan has failed. She will not go mad. Now, who no. are you that wants her to go mad? What is your name, you evil spirits? Ancestral spirits. How many of you are hiding, living and attacking her life? A lot. Yeah, many. Mention your various names, ancestral spirits. Who else is hiding here? Python. She has to die. Why do you want her to die, you Python? Mm -hmm. Why? She, she's just the only one in her family. Yeah. Praying, pray. Have you ever seen anybody praying in the family? What is wrong in praying in the family and praying for everyone? What is wrong about that? This one, she is going to destroy us. This one, we wanted to kill her some few months ago, but your master couldn't allow us. How did you plan to kill her? 
What did you use? What method did you take? We present her. How? Physically or spiritually? Physically, even spiritually, we inject it. What did you use to inject into her body? How did you poison this lady physically? <laughs> because she's ignorant. Your master told her that we're going to poison her. And because we made her to be ignorant, and she eats. What did she eat? And how did you poison the food? <sighs> we put something inside and she eats, she eats, she eats. Next thing, that's, 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 that's. It was supposed to, to stop. And because of this nonsense, we couldn't. What is the nonsense you are talking about? This one, this one, ah, you know, you know. How do you operate we, you, Python? What are your evil activities? We tie her life. Surely we destroy and kill. What are the bad characters you've given to her, you, Python? <laughs> <laughs> this one is just the depression, <laughs> anxiety, fear. You know, morality, this one, she's. We can't go there. How many people have you possessed and destroyed in the world? You, Python, and ancestral spirits. <laughs> How many? Many. Uh, Many. A lot. How have you been possessing them and destroying their lives? How? From their forefathers. That's how we enter. What do you normally do to their mm -hmm. marriages, their careers, their health, and their relationship and fellowship with God? And this one, she thinks she's clever. She's the only one who's married. She never seen anybody in their family married. Who is she? Even her mother, she's not married. Even everybody, everybody, the auntie, everybody, they're not married. Why this one only? She thinks she's clever. <laughs> hey. God said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother, just like a woman will leave her father and mother and be joined together to a woman, and a woman will be joined together to a man. This is marriage that is ordained by God. Why are you against marriage, you evil spirits? Why? Why are you against the word of God? She should not read the word of God, this one. She should not read the word of God. Why do you not want her to read the word of God? Why? What is in the word of God that destroys you, evil spirits, python, ancestral spirits, and the like? How will I operate? How will I operate? How will I operate? What is in the word of God that does not allow you, evil spirits, to operate? <laughs> right. It will take away everything, everything that we planted, everything, everything, and then we lose the grip. I hope you are watching and listening, you viewers, you that are always tired and sleepy. Anytime you want to study your Bible, repent. The solution you're looking for is in the Word of God. Okay? Find time to study your Bible and put everything you have studied into practice. All right. Now, you ancestral spirits, how else do you operate? No, our mission is only one. Only one. What is we your mission? Kill, we have to kill this one. <sighs> Blood is sacred and must not be wasted. Not even by you, evil spirits. 
How can you kill someone you have not created? How can you unmake someone you have not made? Are you not trespassing, crossing the spiritual boundary? No, because she disturbs us. She disturbs us. She disturbs us. She disturbs us because we have seen her. Her mission is repent, repent, repent. For who? For who? What is in the message of genuine repentance that destroys you, evil spirits? You destroys me. She always tell people to repent. Why can't she just talk about receive money, receive cars, and then people be comfortable with their ways? We told her to stop. She's not listening. Who are you that told her to stop preaching against sins and sinful desires? Devil. How do you operate you devil. I just people they have to get the soothing messages, soothing swan, you know. What do you mean by the soothing messages? Can you explain? Just to give them no your creator loves you. You are fine, receive your money. Receive your job, and then everything will be fine. Go and explain more. What do you mean by that? Does it mean that you also have your agents that are not willing to stand against sins and sinful desires, that are not willing to preach the message of genuine repentance? If yes, go ahead and expose your evil works. There are many, there are many, because they are afraid people will run away from their churches. Just do her favor and tell her to stop. We are not here to stand against genuine repentance. We are here by the special grace of God and untouchable anointing from God to preach the message of genuine repentance and salvation. Why are you crying? <laughs> tormenting me. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, you the devil, how else do you operate? You devil. How else? I just torment her mind. Her mind. When, when we know that she's going to pray, we begin to torment her mind. And she thinks she's so sinful. And then she doesn't come and pray. That's when we relax. Yes. How many people have you been tormenting their minds to believe that they are sinful and unworthy? to come to the presence of God to pray. How many people all around the world? <laughs> we just torment those one, those one you know, those one, the genuine ones. That's when we torment, because we know. <laughs> Why are you covering the face of this lady? Too much light. Where is the light coming from? From you. That's Go ahead and explain what you were saying. You said you torment people's mind and make them to feel unworthy to pray and come to the presence of God to pray. Yes. Yes. We seen that the immorality cannot catch them. Ah, uh, then we cannot catch them. So we have to work here. Tormenting, tormenting, tormenting. You, 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 you have insulted God. You cannot come before God. God doesn't love you and you will die in hell. And then she believes. <laughs> How many people all around the world have you tormented and weakened their prayer life and their genuine desire to come to the presence of God? You know what? 
a lot, a lot, a lot. And she was even afraid. She wanted to switch off the camera and just disappear. Yes. At a time in this meeting, Zoom meeting, this lady switched off her camera and she was not prayed for. She just switched off the camera and was nowhere to be found. Who pushed her to do that? Me. She, she should not be set free. What is it me, Christopher Oji, that sets people that you are possessed? You, the devil, ancestral spirits, and the like. Free. Your light. Your light. Your light. If the light is coming from this side, what is coming from you? Where do you belong to? Light or darkness? You know, you know, you know, you know, it's darkness. So that she cannot even see, even she can't even see tomorrow. Darkness. Why do you choose to give people madness, depression, mental instability? You, the devil. Why? <laughs> They just have to to lose their mind so that they cannot do their purpose. They can just be lost and die like that, useless. How many people have you destroyed in this manner all around the world? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Others, they even kill themselves. This one, she's so stubborn. I sometimes tell her, just to kill yourself. You have sinned against the God. Just be keen yourself. This is Christmas. What are your evil plans? Obviously, I will deal with those ones, those who doesn't pray. Deal with them. How do you want to deal with people who do not pray, who do not like to pray? Killing. Destroying, rendering them useless. How do you want to carry out these evil assignments? Ooh, the accidents, fights, murder, everything. Don't just limit what you are saying. You are captured to expose everything you have been planning to do. And... You know what will happen. You are already captured for your total destruction. So say everything once and for all. You have just said three things. Murder, accident. What else again? What else? What else? Just to kill them. What else then? What other secret plan do you have? Nothing, 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 nothing. Our agenda is just for this one. You cannot deceive me. You have so many other secret plans. You know you cannot hide them here. Right now, I send fire to you and all of them. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, now speak and expose them. You, the devil. My agenda was for this one. What else do you need? But you claimed you have possessed many people all around the world. What are your evil assignments? What are your evil agendas? I told you. I told you. I just want to kill them. Kill, kill, kill. What makes ministers yours? You said you have your agents that... Always talk about prosperity, money, 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 how you can become rich and fail to also touch the path of genuine repentance and salvation. Can you say more and mm. talk more about that? Because even them, they are deep in sin, so they cannot expose that. Who are they? Who are they to talk about? Hey, 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 stop seeing what they see. Who are they? I captured them. How did you capture them? What did you use to capture them as you claimed? Sexual immorality. 
sexual immorality. Yeah. Go ahead and expose all, not some. You have just mentioned one. Go ahead. Anger, envy. Yeah. Yeah. Say, hatred. Say all. Anger, envy, hatred. What else again? Bitterness. The love of money. Yes. The love of fame. What is in the message of genuine repentance and salvation that destroys you, the devil? When that person begin to preach that only, only, only those who live that will preach that. And then when that's when people can hear. If you can just come and say, repent, repent, without leaving that you're just wasting your time because they won't hear you. They won't change. <sighs> you have been to many places and here you are, you the devil. What do you have to say about this place, the City of Jesus International Ministry? And me, Christopher Oji. I just, just don't know how this girl sleep hard to come here because she will be going anyway deliverance for who for what we know you 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 will always visit her that time and pray for her yo we once poison her so you have your own agents and your own people, and you have come here. What have you seen here? What is in me, Christopher Oji, and in the city of Jesus International Ministry? Holiness. Why are you against holiness, purity, righteousness, and the things of God? Why? You the devil. Because that one will operate fully, 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 and set a lot of people free. If you live holy, that one, that one will operate fully in that person. Now, you said if someone comes out merely to say, repent, repent, without repenting, without living a life of holiness and purity. The message will not have any power to change people's lives. Here in the City of Jesus International Ministry, messages of repentance are being preached on daily basis. What do you have to say about this? Because when you live holy, that one, that one, that one, will release the spirits upon you so that you can impact to others that current. What are you saying in summary that is happening here? You are impacting. What am I imparting to others? To live holy. This stupid one who always listen to say, hey, this, and he always like, those messages, she's so stupid. Stupid, stupid. She will be hungry for those messages. So those messages, every time you come, let me hear Christopher what he's saying. Lord, help me to pretend to be pure before you nonsense. Who is she? What do you have to say to people that only go to church for deliverance, people that only go to church to receive breakthroughs, people that only go to church for marriage, people that only go to church for material things and not to listen to the word of God and put the word of God into practice. That will save them. What do you have to say about that? Why should I bother myself to chase after them because now mine I chase those one 
those one who want to, to change genuine. That's what I come up for them. Who are you once again that are operating in this manner, you evil spirit? Your name? Devil. I am the devil. You have talked about ministries and ministers. What about other places in the world? How else and where else have you been targeting, operating, and destroying? Why should I target? Because they are mine already. Who are they? They worship me, hey? So why should I be after them? Nothing. Who are I the people that worship you that are yours already? Mention them. You know them. They go to clubs, drinking, smoking, everything. They are mine. But they claim that they are enjoying themselves. Some even believe that they are celebrating Christmas in that manner. What do you have to say, you the devil? <laughs> Enjoying. <laughs> yes, I tricked their minds. I told you I work in a mind. What do you put in their mind? How did you trick, how have you been tricking their mind? I, it's like I put a cloud of darkness so that they they think is yes. Some students abandon abandon their studies, go into several addictions. Some are addicted to taking drugs. Some will think that they are cool and high when they are addicted or when they take that drug. Who deceived them to think that way and who caused them to be addicted? It's me. Even this one, when you I operate in their mind, I torture them, I tell them the, the best way to have peace is to take drugs, is to do alcohol. Even this one, I was telling her, why can't you just leave this thing of praying and just go? take alcohol or something so that you can always be dizzy and your life will be fine. But she's stubborn. <laughs> she's stubborn. She, she doesn't want that. That's fine. She's stubborn to be treated. <laughs> Are you saying that everyone who is being deceived in this manner to be addicted is possessed by you, the devil? Yes or no? That's very true. I manipulate their minds. But some of them would say, I do go to church every day. I even hold post in the church. I am not possessed. What do you have to say about that? Those ones who try to justify themselves. That's why I'm leaving. The one that always comes saying, no. We help me. That's way is difficult for me to operate fully. But the one those always justify themselves, hey, because I go to church, because I do this, that's I operate. Say more about these kind of things because there are a lot who are always justifying themselves. These days you see husband justify himself and wife also claiming right. Whereas there yeah. are things that are going on wrongly in their lives and marriages. Who is the cause of this yeah. kind of thing? And how do you operate in this manner? I, and because of that, the divorce. Everyone will be like, help. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, and then boom, blasts. How else and where else do you operate? I just closed her mouth so that she cannot speak. Now I send fire there, and I can see her speaking. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ! Now answer me quickly. 
I closed her mouth so that she can not preach. Can you hear me? Why did you do that? What is in preaching that destroys you, the devil? You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know, you know, you know. This year, we wanted her gone, 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 gone. What did you say to her that made her not to be preaching? We work here, 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 in her mind, and he will be thinking like a mad person. Maybe she will think that when I will open my mouth, I will, I will insult the people, and that thing has been tormenting her. She doesn't tell anyone. <laughs> We tormented him this one. He said, if you open your mouth, you have insulted the Holy Spirit, you have insulted God. So if you try to open your mouth and preach, you will insult. So just to keep quiet. That's how we operate. How many people have you stopped from preaching in this manner all around the world? A lot, a lot. Those one who who are, are supposed to be, uh -huh, you know, you know, you know, the end revivalists, you know. There are still many things you have not mentioned. Go ahead and expose them because you will be destroyed now, you the devil. Go ahead and mention them before you be destroyed. I did. I did. I did. I did. What I have did. you not said? Say them quickly. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. And uh, she's always depressed. But her husband, yo, he, he loves this person, the husband. But this one, we always control her mind. The next minute, she's fine. Two seconds, she will log herself. Three seconds, she will come back and see. Five seconds, log herself. So the husband will always stay at home. <laughs> this one will always be inside the room. How many women or men have you pushed to be living that kind of life? Oh, it's a lot, a lot because of depression. <laughs> I hope you are watching and listening. Even by listening to uh, this kind of expository confession, you are set free. There are many things you have been doing wrongly in the past. By mere hearing this, you will know that you need forgiveness and you need to repent. <laughs> Do you think when we have a grief, of depression, we can just repent easily? No. You are not here to control. You know who is here already, and you know what will happen to all of you now. You are not here to bargain nor negotiate with us. We are not buying your idea. It is what God wants that will be established here. If you are finally destroyed any moment from now, what will happen to the people you are possessed and destroyed in the world? What will happen to you and your evil works? They will be free. What are you removing from her eyes? We block there so that she cannot see. She sees a lot. This one stupid, this one. We closed her eyes. Right now, I send the unquenchable fire of the Holy Spirit in charge of your total destruction. You, the devil. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, pull out your monetary mirrors. Remove the spirit of depression, madness, suicide, and confusion. Pull them out.
You've got no choice. I send fire to the mind and brain. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Lose our tongue to preach. I send fire there. You have got no choice. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear the tongue. The tongue. The tongue and the mind. Fear. I send fire to the heart. To the womb. The back. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I send more fire to the tongue. And I command the power of the devil. That I tie down the tongue. To be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear. Pull out the covenant rings, you spiritual husband, ancestral spirits. Remove the spirit of death, joblessness, hardship, confusion, lack of affection, fear, condemnation, guilt, inferiority complex. Pull out your evil horns, you the devil. Pull them out. Your wicked horn of iniquity and madness. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire to the evil marks of Satan. 666. Six, six. And I command them to be destroyed. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ, let Lucifer, serpent, and all the powers of darkness in this body be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ, I command her sins to be truly forgiven and forgotten by God. And I command her to receive a pure heart. Receive the kingdom of and the righteousness of God into your life. I command the devil to be totally destroyed together with other powers of darkness. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God has taken over her heart and her mind has been disconnected from the evil voices of the devil. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. What is happening to you, the devil, and other powers of darkness? I'm powerless. You are not just powerless. The fire of the Holy Spirit is destroying all of you. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Total destruction. None of them will escape. Nothing like moving out to come back and check on her. Nothing like that. This is total job that is done by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. I send fire to the back, the womb, the heart, the feet, and to the house. And I command the activities of the devil to come to an end. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, live a marriage, live a career, live a spiritual life, live the fruit of a womb. In the name of Jesus Christ, the unclean spirits are totally destroyed now. Watch, we are the 99%. In the name of Jesus Christ, I send more fire in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
She's been given a new heart, and you've got no control over her life anymore. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I declare all evil spirits captured and destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit, and I command the lady and everyone you possessed in the past to be set free by the power of God. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ. The evil spirits are totally destroyed now, and she is free. She is regaining herself now. What? Shalom. How are you? I'm fine, man of God. What were you doing? What happened to you during the prayers? I couldn't open my eyes and I couldn't control what I was seeing. Why could you not open your eyes and what were you saying? Because I tried to open and I saw just light coming to my eyes. Where was the light coming from? from your side. Were you aware that you were possessed by the devil and other unclean spirits? I would say yes, because I was tormented in my mind. She's becoming emotional. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and explain. I was very, very tormented. I liked to preach about God. And I just stopped because I hear like some voices like I'm insulting God, I'm doing this. But at first, I liked to preach about God, to tell people about repentance. And it has tormented me. I always keep quiet. And when I take the Bible, those voices, there will be more. Like I'm insulting God and then I will close the Bible and just leave. And then I was so depressed. Sometimes I'll just go a day without eating, just on bed. And it was not good. Even bathing, I sometimes just go a day without bathing. When my husband comes from my work, he'll say, did you bath? I will say yes, but... I couldn't take a bath because I was even uh, possessed by uh, uh, excessive fear. Like, what if I stand up from bed and just fall and die? What if I go to take bath and just die there? And then I couldn't cook. My husband will come from the work who just even cook himself for the kids. Or I will tell the kids, can you cook if you can? Uh, sometimes I will be okay, just energized. But the next moment when I'm just busy trying to prepare a meal, my mind will be tormented again. I will just run back to bed and tell my husband, can, can you continue? And that's how it was. And now after the deliverance, check your mind, check your heart and tell us your current situation or condition. I feel, I don't feel that torment now. I don't feel it at all. Because even to stay up to this time alone, I wouldn't. Because I'll be afraid. I'll be afraid to say, what if I put it, that spirit did always wanted me to to sleep always. So I will take uh, the medication so that I maybe I can sleep for the whole day just to be inside the blanket and cover myself the whole day. When I go outside, I just stop uh, driving because every time I will get panic attacks. And my heart will be beating so, so, so fast, like I will die if you can see the ECG here. 
I will always lend it to the hospital because of panic attacks and the heart will be beat. As you can see here, it's like a heart failure because the heart will be pumping so, so fast. Every time I go in the midst of the people, I get the panic attacks every day. Now check yourself, are you experiencing that after the prayers? No, I feel relieved. The unclean spirit did say that they stopped you from opening up your camera, even while you were in Zoom meeting, and they told you to go out and not join. What do you have to say about that? Um, because when I get in the Zoom meeting, I begin to hear that torment, like insulting people, like, you see, you have even insulted this one, you cannot get delivered just to switch the camera and just to disappear. I was like, I I almost did twice. And it was like, you see, God hates you. We told you, you will never get delivered. God hates you. I was like, I wanted to switch the camera and then just to go. And now, are you confirming that you are truly set free? Yes. You go to live your life to glorify God. Stay away from Amen. negative thoughts. Stay away from sins and sinful desires. And come back for your powerful testimonies. Amen. Shalom. Amen. Shalom. 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 My name is Sterling Strong. I'm speaking from Naples, Italy. I'm originally from Florida, the United States. I'm uh, in the United States Navy. I'm a culinary specialist. I'm a cook in the Navy. What do you want Jesus Christ to do for you? I would like Jesus Christ to deliver me from my addiction to pornography and the spirit of lust and to rescue my family as well and to forgive me for all my sins. All right, so you should stay away from taking excess sugar. Anything okay. that contains excess sugar, avoid that. Okay. I'm looking at the condition of your health. Your sugar level is getting very high. That's, that's true, man. And that is drawing you closer to the pit of hypertension. That's true. So you have to take care of your health, okay? Yes, man. You are a very kind man. You should continue that habit. Thank you. Uh, you should do that without allowing sin to be concealed in your heart. I hope you are genuinely ready for genuine repentance. I'm ready, man of God. Create time to build your relationship with God through his word and by his spirit. Okay. Call the name Jesus Christ and get ready for prayer. You have to focus on him, not on me, not on yourself, okay? Focus on him. Allow him to come into your heart and set you free. He is ready. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I send the fire of the Holy Spirit down to your spirit, soul, and body to search out Satan and unclean spirit that have been controlling your mind to commit sin. <laughs> Holy Ghost, through in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold the screen and see. You know you cannot hide. You Satan. Spiritual wife. Holy Ghost, through in the name of Jesus Christ. Through her. Through her. All of you, there is no hiding place. You can see the fire in the kingdom of darkness destroying all of you. Through in the name of Jesus Christ. Through his heart. His heart. His mind. Through. Mind controlling demons. You serpent. Holy Ghost. Through. 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 You Lucifer. Through. Right now, I send fire from heaven down to all the kingdoms of darkness. The prince and princesses in the kingdom of darkness down to the marine kingdoms. Holy Ghost, fill in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! 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 Now speak and answer me. Who are you? Supreme 
spirit of darkness. Prince and spirit of darkness. Queen of the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, it's limiting him. Giant. Giant. Giant man from where? From his family. This man complained of many things. He said he has spirit of lust. He watches pornography, masturbates, and many other weaknesses. Who is the cause? The giant man. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak clearly. The giant man, the queen of the Atlantic Ocean. How have you been controlling his life, his family, and destroying him and the entire family, you wicked queen? from our Atlantic Ocean. He thinks he's so smart. I who the strange spirit of darkness. We watch him everywhere he goes. He knows it. <laughs> How many people have you possessed? You queen of darkness? You Queen from Atlantic Ocean and you wicked giant man. How many people have you possessed all around the world and destroyed? So many. How have you been possessing them? And what sinful life have you been pushing them to live so you could continue to possess and destroy their lives and their relationship and fellowship with God? They love music. They love fashion. They love drugs. So we into them. What kind of music, what kind of drug and fashion are you talking about? Can you classify? The pop anything we find. Ooh, drugs possess the family. I destroyed his family. I've been in his family. I am the supreme spirit of darkness. We carry them from one continent to the other. You said you move from one continent to the other. How do you move and when you move, what are your evil activities? His family has been mine for over 500 years. I took from one continent to the other, and I am destroying them. <laughs> Through what means have you been taking them from one continent to another? And through what means have you been destroying them for the past 500 terrible years of slavery in your evil kingdom of darkness? Family is originally from Africa. Which part? Nigeria, Obo, Cameroon, many. I took them. You did what? I took them from Africa. I shipped them away. How? Boy, them. How did you take I them? I am the supreme spirit of how did you move them from Nigeria to other continents? How did you do that? Across the Atlantic Ocean, on ships, on chains. They are in America, but I'm destroying them. You said you took them day. on chains. Was it like slavery? Yes or no? Slavery, yes. <laughs> they were great in Africa. His family was great there. And then I took them, I shipped them to America to destroy them through addictions, through hatred, through bitterness. Ooh, I am the supreme spirit of darkness. What is your name? Lucifer. 
You came to rescue this boy, huh? <laughs> you want to rescue this boy. Jesus wants. And you are already trembling because you are captured. All of you and your evil agents will be totally destroyed. You know what is happening to you already. Are you now feeling the fire of destruction? How have you been possessing people and destroying them? You, Lucifer, the prince of darkness. Keep them in sin. Expect it every day. I send my agents everywhere. To do what? Take them to my kingdom. <laughs> Through what means? Through addiction, to drugs, to not. Biography, through unforgiveness, through hatred. You know, look in the world today. What is I it? am destroying the people in How? every country. How? Through hatred, through disease and sickness. What kind of diseases and sicknesses? Mention their names. COVID 19, through cancer. Diabetes, HIV, <laughs> any means, destroy. And I keep destroying them. Look at this boy. He thinks he can overcome meditation, prayer, 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 prayer. Oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. And I, I come and I hit him. I just destroy anyone I see that think they can overcome. I hit them with sickness. I hit them with hatred and forgiveness. I keep that that man over the way. He wants to take over. <laughs> Which man wants to take over? Are you listening? You ask your watch. The cause of addiction to terrible Fiends, are you watching and you're listening? There are several unclean spirits in him. The prince of darkness, that is Lucifer. The queen of Atlantic Ocean and other dangerous spirits are living in him. Speak out and mention all your evil secrets before you mention the name of the person you said is coming to take over. This boy, he is this. To save, to deliver people, to pray for people that we sow in. <laughs> what is in the city of Jesus International Ministry, and in me, Christopher Oji, that is destroying you, Prince of Darkness, Lucifer, Queen of the Coast from Atlantic Ocean, ancestral spirits of all kind. So much light. Coming from where? From you. If light is coming from me, what is coming from you? Darkness. What is screen and see that deadly tattoo? What are these? I wrote strong. What is the meaning of but this? His last name is strong. He thinks it means his last name, but I wrote it to let him know I'm strong. I'm strong, not his last name, me, the giant man. How old are you, wicked giant man from the pit of hell? I said I carry them from one continent to the other. I've been in the family for 500 years. And how old is this man you are living in his body? He's 28. What have you done to his marriage and to his finances? What marriage? <gasps> I am his wife. What's your name? I'm the queen of the Atlantic Ocean. How old are you, wicked queen? Over a thousand years old. How many <laughs> people have you possessed all around the world, you wicked queen? So many. <laughs> What assignment have you been giving to your agents to do for you, wicked queen from Atlantic Ocean? So we look for stars. Explain. <laughs> on people's heads. 
your master sent to this earth to destroy us. He has a star, so we enter the <laughs> How? Through <laughs> the television, through shows, through music. We enter. We enter anyhow. <laughs> When you enter and possess them in this manner, what will begin to happen to their spiritual life, their relationship and fellowship with God? They can't pray. <laughs> and when you try to pray, we are there. We look. We look. And we look to see when you stop praying. And we... Ooh, we distract you. How? And we enter. We do lust. Many people, they have the spirit of lust. We give it to them. And they are constantly looking at men, looking at women to sleep with. And we destroy. You see the powers in his eyes and in his mouth. Who gave him the powers in his eyes and his mouth? I, the queen of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> what are the evil powers in his eyes and in his tongue and mouth? Men for we, we gave him the spirit of men, and he looked with his powers in his eyes and in his feet and, and in his hand at any man, and he captured them. And we enter when you can destroy their lives. You gave him the spirit of man. So, what happens to any man that is being seduced by him? through the evil powers. This boy, he rejects us. He said, oh, he will save me. Oh, he will deliver me. No, 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 you can't take over. No, no, in his heart. No, 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 no. But we, but we come, we consistently try. We consistently try. We say, look there, look there. Capture him. Look there. Look there. So we really can't with him. But others, we constantly destroy their lives. We rip their marriages. We rip their ministries. We rip their careers. <laughs> How have you been capturing others and ripping their marriages, their careers, and their ministries and their lives. Explain you spirit of man and woman. Many go to church and they sing, they dance, they pray, but without your spirit, you know. Which spirit? You say without, without my spirit, which spirit? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Did you hear that? You say many go to church, they sing, they dance, Without the Holy yes. Spirit, go ahead. Take like this boy. I say I got powers in his mouth. He likes to sing. He, it is true, he loves, you know, your master. But like I said, I distract and I keep them from praying. And I distract them to where they do what I want. So I control so many go to church, they sit and they sing. I ain't. I come. <laughs> I come when I sing. I sing. <laughs> because there's no spirit in the mist. I preach. Because there's no spirit in the mist. So I enter people and I destroy their lives. You said you wicked way. queen from Atlantic Ocean do sing as well. You preach as well. I sing. We have our agents. Uh -huh. Agents that do what? Who we send to destroy. They are preachers. They are teachers. They are worship leaders. But they are not from, <laughs> they're not from your master. So we control their mouth. What kind of characters are these old agents possessing that will make people know that this one belongs to you, wicked queen from Atlantic Ocean? What kind of sinful life 
have you been pushing them to live? In the church, they are nice. I mean, they appear to be nice, but in their hearts. <laughs> in their Literally hearts. There, they have the word here, you know, your Bible, but not here. Where your master wants to take control is where we settle in the heart. Are you listening? He said, if you don't have the word of God in your heart, you will have it in your mind, in your brain. And when you have it in your mind, in your brain, Satan and all his evil agents, the queen of Atlantic Ocean, prince of darkness, giant man, and all manners of unclean spirit, will come and take hold and possession of your heart. And your heart is supposed to be the controlling place of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. When you take hold of their heart, sit therein, what do you push them to do? We use them, like I said, they sing, but they're not singing. They preach, but they're not preaching. They teach, but they're not teaching. It is we from the kingdom of darkness who is doing it. We, we know the word. You know, we've been here from the beginning. We are in control of the hearts of so many. But people like you, Dying so bright. <laughs> we know you. You threaten us. Why are you not able to control my heart? You have a light. They surround you. They come from the most high and they surround you. We send people to destroy ministries like yours, but they can't enter. Why? Because you. He sent you. Who sent, sent me? I can't say his name. You have no choice. It is time. In the name of Jesus Christ, tear your tongue. Your tongue. Tear. Word is screen. The fire is coming down now. Watch and see. Tear in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tear. I send fire down to darkness. And all the prince and princesses of darkness, down to all seas, all oceans, Atlantic Ocean inclusive, down to marine kingdoms, to destroy every spirit operating therein. Through the name of Jesus Christ, to the tongue, to the mind, to the heart. Holy Ghost, fear! Every occultic signs from the kingdom of darkness, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. What are the signs for? This is witchcraft. You know you cannot operate and work here. Fear! All witchcraft activities and spirits. All satanic traps. Satanic traps of destruction. Holy Ghost, fear! Fear! You serpents, fear! What, you will see what will happen? The hands, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. The powers are gone. Fear! Speak and answer me. What is the name of my master? Jesus, he's coming back. Can you see the irresistible power of the Holy Spirit? Those who said no, they cannot call it. Have no choice than to do that. He is the most powerful. Why are you not happy that Jesus Christ is coming back? We are running out of time. <laughs> what will happen to all of you now that you are captured? and will be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. What will happen to everything you have destroyed and those you have possessed? They will be free. This boy, he will be free. And he will be doing your work. What about your evil agenda and evil sicknesses and diseases which you mentioned you brought into the world to kill, to steal, and to destroy? 
they will be free. Why do you hate free? We want this boy. He's from America. Do you know what we are doing there? Do you know what we are doing all over the world? We are causing many to come against each other through hatred. They will destroy one another and they will come to be with us. Which kingdom? We are. Are you not seeing that this your evil agenda have been captured? Are you not seeing that this your evil agenda in the entire world have been captured now? You yourself have been captured. All your evil networks have been captured and it is time for everything that has to do with you to be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Are you not seeing the fire burning already? That's fire. We've been around from the beginning. Everything that has a beginning has an end. It is only God who has no beginning and who has no end. Right now, I stretch my hand in obedience to God's command from the beginning. And I descend the fire of his judgment down to you, wicked giant man. Down to you, evil winds from all oceans all around the world. Not only the Atlantic Ocean. All marine kingdoms, I descend the fire of the Holy Spirit down to you, Lucifer, prince of darkness. Down to all your evil agents and networks. They are coming down now. Watch and see what will happen. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Viewers who watch. Fear! Spirit of sorcery, witchcraft, divination, antichrist. Spirit of Satan and sin. Holy Ghost. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire down to his heart. Your base. Fire. Viewers, watch and see. They have been captured now. Down to his heart. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. They are weakened now. As the city of Sodom and Gomorrah have been totally destroyed and no longer in existence. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit go down to all the kingdoms of darkness, marine kingdoms, kingdoms of Satan. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. The eyes where the evil powers are situated, his tongue, his mouth. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. His two legs and fingers. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear. The evil tattoo on his chest. Fear! Spirit of fornication, masturbation, pornography, lust. Fear! We gave him a mark. Fear! I only care for the marks of Jesus Christ and not the marks of Satan. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. The giant man has been struck down by the fire of the Holy Ghost. What? Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. And see the Holy Spirit doing the job. I am waiting. No, no power can resist the power of God. Watch. Everything has been set free. His career, his marriage, his mind, his heart. And everyone you are possessed all around the world have been delivered. All nations you are possessed. Every institution or department you manipulate have been set free. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the fire of God to go down to the hearts of everyone you have possessed all around the world. You viewers, you are watching. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit go down to the heart of everyone. Everyone that is manipulated by Satan and all his evil agents, receive forgiveness and deliverance. Receive healing. Receive your salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all industries you possess to operate, to initiate, and to possess human beings to be sanctified and delivered by the power of God. In the might of Jesus Christ, the fire is destroying the wicked queen. Queens of all oceans are in trouble. Their servants, their maids, their evil kingdoms, their evil crowns and evil rings. They are ornament of seduction. Fear! Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. The crown is being destroyed now. He's looking for it. They are gone. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Crown of sin. No one is stronger than God. No one is older than the power of God. No one is older than Jesus. 
Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear, remove everything and let them be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. All wicked spiritual covenants. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. That evil tattoo and the power therein. More fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch and see. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of immorality. Fire in the mouth of Jesus Christ. We are at the eight five percent of his deliverance. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. We are the ninety five percent, remaining five more percent. Watch. Fear in his heart, his soul, spirit, and body. I call his soul out of the kingdom of darkness. I command his soul that has been sold to Satan to be delivered. In the mouth of Jesus Christ, let his soul, spirit, and body return back to this body. In the mouth of Jesus Christ, the old heart is gone and the new one has come. A new spirit has entered him. He is purely delivered now. He will come back to his senses now and get himself. Watch. So you are healed. So you can actually see without the glass. You are free now. Thank you. How are Thank you? Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm fine, man, guy. Can you explain what happened to you during the prayer? We were um, talking and then you uh, started to pray for me. I heard myself speaking. I just didn't have control over what I was saying or anything. And I just, let, uh, I guess I blacked out from there. I, were you aware that you were possessed by the spirit that calls himself a strong man of 500 years? I didn't know exactly what I was possessed by. I just knew I was struggling. Yeah, you were also possessed by... The spirit that calls herself a queen from the Atlantic Ocean and ancestral okay. spirits. Have you ever had an encounter with all these unclean spirits? And Lucifer himself also said he possessed you, the prince of darkness. I, uh, I've manifested before in the past and I knew I was struggling. Uh, I knew uh, I needed deliverance. I just didn't know exactly what was holding me back. So these were the spirit that caused you to be masturbating, watching pornography, and living a life of sin. The unclean spirit, the giant man, talked about where you came from. He said that you came from Nigeria, migrated to America. You have been moving your family for so many years, about 500 years now, from one continent to another. I, I didn't come from Nigeria, but I... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I know my fam um, and my family history. I, when I did a, a DNA test, I know uh, I'm, I have percentage of Nigerian and. Um, the same unclean spirit mentioned Nigeria and Cameroon. My family been in the United States for a long time, about maybe 300 plus years or so. You are <laughs> totally delivered. Thank you. Start allowing the word and the spirit of God to live in your heart. Yeah. Yes, man, God. And start living in the Word and the Spirit of God. Yes, Don't man, God. memorize the Bible. Live in the Word of God and let the Word of God live in you. Be the doer of the Word. Thank you. So there are many people that believe that such deliverance does not exist. What do you have to tell them? Now that you have experienced deliverance yourself, what message are you giving to the entire world? Oh, it's, it's real. I mean, I was one of them people way back because um, I was, you know, living a traditional Christian life, going to church. And we don't see those things normally. So, uh, but it's real. What is real? Deliverance. You know, true man of God like yourself, allowing God to use you and deliver people like myself who've been struggling. And uh, we are fighting, I guess, a, a battle of against the evil forces and spirits. And that is real. All right, check your heart, check your thoughts. Do you still have the desire to watch pornography, to live a life of sin after your deliverance? Yes or no? I, I struggle every day, all the time thinking about it. And right now I feel 
feel free, like light and relax. Great. So maintain your deliverance by living a life without sin. And come back for your wonderful testimony. And make sure you let people know what God has done for you. Don't keep silent. Tell everyone. Yes, man of God. Shalom. Shalom. On January 11th, 2024, in the virtual prayer gathering of the City of Jesus International Ministry conducted over Zoom, Miss Sherika Neal actively participated from the United States of America. She shared her ongoing struggle against various evil forces, including Satan, Lucifer, snakes, spiritual husbands, and others. These dark forces had wreaked havoc in Miss Neal's life and family, subjecting her to hardships, causing memory loss, and leading her into sinful actions such as adultery, fornication, masturbation, lust, and the like. During the prayer meeting, Miss Sherika Neal courageously confessed her sins and sinful desires. In response, the man of God, Christopher Orgy, filled with the spirit of truth and grace, fervently prayed for her. Miraculously, the evil spirits that had tormented her were instantly captured and destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Miss Sherika Neal was declared free from the clutches of these evil forces, Kindly watch with a prayerful heart. Shalom. Shalom. Hi, man. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Sharika from Jamaica. All right, what do you do for a living in Jamaica? So currently I am a customer relation expert. So I qualify persons for life insurance in the United States. Great. So what do you want God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to do for you? I would like the Lord to deliver me from immortal spirit, spirit of luck, spirit of depression, anxiety, not being able to focus. What is the main reason why you are depressed? Growing up at a tender age, I was attacked. So at a tender age. What form of attack? Spiritually attack. So at certain times, I would like totally gone. Like my life is coming out of my body from a tender age, four, three years old, five years old. I had a sister who is a prayer warrior. She's no longer here with us, which... She actually like bring me to a church and I got saved at the age of seven. However, during that process, I developed a love for God. I was a prayer warrior. Um, the thing is that I know, um, I found out that that church is not a church that of God. So the that pastor, that leader, um, deal with witchcraft. And she, instead of blessing me as a young girl, she would say things like, I would not live to see 15 years old. I would not live to see 20 years old. She would say hurtful things to me that I would like being wheelchair, not being able to walk and so forth but i had this belief and i think during that process i had that connection with god to believe only what god says in my life but even though i do believe that at sometimes based on those trauma that i've been through it caused me to have that impact of depression not feeling that i'm enough not feeling that um actually valuable and so forth and during that process even in my family i am the breadwinner of my family and to be honest it's very hard knowing that to go through the process and even that time my sister who is the one that is able to help us and she was a prior warrior she got attacked spiritual attack anytime you talk about spiritual attack what do you mm -hmm. mean by that? So she started to operate in a, a totally different. She started to telling us um, to heat bush. She said that she's not seeing people physically. She's seeing uh, like spirits. 
And even for myself, I didn't really understand certain stuff based on spirituality, um, based on how I grew up. And I think even for herself, she didn't understand as well. Uh, at one point, I had had a sister who actually was going through the same thing. She was hearing things. She was seeing a different type of vision. And one day, what has happened is that she was led to TB Joshua. And there was a point where there was a person that got deliverance when uh, something happened where he found something on Facebook and it, the picture that he, he saw, he was possessed by it. And so that's how we first found out about TB Joshua. However, even at that point, based on how we were brought up, we didn't really believe, to be honest, we didn't even believe in like deliverance in that way. But what has actually opened up this deliverance thing to us is when my sister was under attack, where she was doing a lot of things that was out of the norm. And we were trying to find out what was really going on with her, uh, not knowing that we would ever experience such things. So that is how we actually come about and we found you as well. So, and seeing you doing the deliverance program with other persons and, you know, in the process of COVID, uh, after COVID, we found out that you actually did online service, which we really wish that we could have that opportunity at then because she's no more. We travel the most churches in Jamaica to get deliverance for her. And it didn't happen but we prayed and we trust and we we saw seed i saw seed even for her life you know for god to spare her life and hopefully that she actually make it in but even that process that affected me very badly because she would have abused me and what i get to find out is that the pastor that we were going to she's the one that is behind everything um, you talked about a certain minister of God before. And you yes. that you were taken there at the early stage of your life. Yes. And you made some allegations. I wouldn't want you to see that minister of God as fake or as if the minister of God was the one that uh, bewitched you. We are not here to judge any human being. Of course, God gives a divine invitation, a spiritual invitation to everybody to go to various ministries, especially living ministries, for the salvation of their soul. Going to the ministry that God has sent you to is like answering God's divine invitation. If God is leading you to any ministry, he will also lead you to his word. When you have deep knowledge of the word of God, where you are in that ministry, you will not fight against flesh and blood. And you would not blame any minister. You will not start speaking against the ministry. You will not start judging the minister. You will not start speaking against the minister, nor seeing the person as if he's representing Satan. In the first place, you were led there. Who led you there? That is the person you should obey. God has his true ministers that he has sent to attend to his children all around the world. We are not given any spiritual right to judge anybody. We are not. Okay? So it is what you do where you are that matters. If you live a holy life, you cannot be touched by evil spirits. If you live a holy life in the ministry where you are, you will not be touched by evil spirits. You will not be possessed by unclean spirits. And you will not be used by evil spirits to speak against that ministry, nor the minister. I hope that is clear. So yes, that situation has to be changed. 
and that impression has to be corrected worldwide. Going to any church is like being invited by God to his kind of ministry. If God is leading you, he's leading you through his word and by his spirit to a place of worship. You are to pay attention to God. How do you pay attention to God? You pay attention to God. When you pay attention to God's word. You pay attention to God's word when you are led by the spirit of God in the word of God to act upon the word of God. The word of God has not given anybody any spiritual right to judge any human being. The book of Matthew and the book of Mark talks about this thing. Judge not and you shall not be judged. But the same measure you use to judge, that will be used to judge you. Let us leave judgment for God. Okay? So, yes, my love. That where your sister went was also a wrong place where she was bewitched. That is a wrong statement that is being influenced by the spirit of deception and manipulation, not from the spirit of God. Living ministries are not a place where one can be possessed, manipulated, brainwashed, caged, or possessed, and destroyed. We see everything that we go through in living ministries as a blessing and not a curse. Did you hear that? Yes, man of God. All right. So have you decided to change that impression that you went to a wrong place? Yes, man of God. But I, I would say that because sometimes you will go to a place, man of God, it's not necessarily that, that God will lead you to that place. And that when going to that place, it can change your entire destiny as well. So I totally understand what you're saying, man of God, in regards to that. But even for herself, it was a total different. If you are led to God's ministry, you are led by God through his word and by his spirit. Right. If you are led by evil spirits to yes. any ministry that are also possessed by evil spirits to operate. You are not led by God. Jesus right. and the Holy Spirit. It means before you even made a decision of going to such a place, you were possessed right from your home to go there. You cannot take, you cannot take any step without being led. Yes, that's it true. Whether you are led by the Holy Spirit to take the step and go to such a place if the place is not of God. Or you are led by the Spirit of God, meaning you are led by God through His Word and by His Spirit to go to living ministries where He does yes. through His Word and by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. So let us clarify this. God has been yes. where He operates through His Word and by His Spirit. And that is where you see holiness, righteousness, purity, self-control, complete dominion of the spirit of God and of the glory of God, meaning where the power of God is absolutely present. Another place, like places that are not of God, people are only being led there by the evil spirits in them. They don't get to the place and become possessed. Before you go to the wrong place, you were already possessed to go to the wrong place. So yes. you cannot have anyone to be blamed for going to that left place because for going to such a place because already you are led by the indwelling spirit of Satan yes. to go there. No one can go to Satan unless he is led by evil spirit. And no one can go to God unless he is led by the Holy Spirit. I hope that is clear. Yes, man of God, it is. That is definitely true. 
All right. So go ahead and explain the lies of sin. You have found yourself living and how this affected your life and what you want God to do for you. Go ahead. So uh, sexual immorality, fornication and adultery, masturbation, depression, anxiety. And I think that these are what enable me for, because even at my work, I am currently hot now. It's taken me mentally. It's um, there are sometimes I just want to not work um, as well. I'm getting feedback based on my management that they, which this week is, it's up to whether they will keep me or they will let me go. June to, based on those stuff, I think that's affecting me um, in depth as well, debt. Uh, my credit card, both my credit cards are maxed out. Moving from a location because I got notice where I was renting last year. And when I started to make a decision because I was actually um, courting a person, however, you know, God has actually, actually said that that per, he has someone better for me. And so uh, based on having some stuff, I get rid of some stuff uh, that I had that I got from him. And uh, the Sunday that I did that, the next morning, I got a notice that uh, I do need to leave the property. And uh, that has actually led me to be in a state of mind knowing what next, what I'm going to do, because I'm only the breadwinner for my family right now. I have my two sisters and my mom. And without me not working, then we're basically on the street. And at one point we were, and God has blessed us where I am able to, to work and to take care of them. And moving forward, God has also given me a word that he will bless me with somewhere that is more upgrade, which I have found somewhere renting. But even though I have found somewhere, the rent that I'm paying, it's sky high based on what I am getting paid for. So I really do need, um, I've been seeking God that he will be able to bless me with much better job as well. And also uh, for me to be able to clear my debts as well. So that's what I'm asking God for. And, you know, just to be continue to be closer to God and praying continuously as well. And that his will be done in my life. What made you believe that when you connect this way, you will be totally set free and everything you have lost will be regained and restored and fully given back to you? I have actually watched videos of you, man of God, and I have heard testimonies of persons, even from my country. So um, just to even see that, and uh, I have been searching and, you know, seeing uh, the passion that you have for God as well. It really joined me to this ministry. And uh, even my sister has become a partner with you as well. So to God be the glory and bigger God into that. So based on that and seeing other person being delivered, their testimony and seeing God have turned their life around. And I really want that for myself. And I can be in that position to even to share that to the world as well, to other person that. God is in the control and God is in the deliverance business as well. All right. Did you pay any money to be attended to now? Did you pay any money to register for prayers? No, I didn't. Did you sow any seed to be prayed for? Here at the seat no. of Jesus International Ministry? No, I did not. All right. Jesus Christ, who has invited you to the city of Jesus International Ministry, is here to attend to you. Amen. 
open up the door of your heart, he is knocking at the door of your heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, now surrender to him. Let him come in. Oh, and get your problems him. totally solved. The fire of the Spirit of God has descended already down to her soul, spirit, and body. Oh, God. To stand against the enemies that have been hiding in her life and family. It's they cannot him. hide. It's going down to the family. Going down to everybody. Going down to destroy the forces of darkness, witches yes, and wizards. Yes, Lord. As well as spirits. Yes, Lord. Now call the name Jesus Christ and get ready for prayers of deliverance. Jesus Christ. Again. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I send the fire of the Spirit of God to your life and to your family. And I stand against the enemies that have been hiding. Spirit of death. Spirit of hardship. Depression. Marine spirits. Occultic spirits. Wicked spiritual husband. Satan the Lucifer. What are you doing? Free the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot continue to take souls from her family. Fire! All of you in your evil kingdoms. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire! The heart and the mind. Fire! Fire! The back and the water where you are hiding. In the marine world. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire. Wicked spirit of darkness. Wicked spirit your husband. I send fire to her dream world. And I stand against all satanic activities. Astral traveling. Astral projection. Evil voices, spirit of madness, spirit of madness, depression, suicide, joblessness, and homelessness. Holy Ghost, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove everything you have placed on her. Everything. Remove them one by one. Everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, the fire is going down deeper, down every part. The back, the womb, the heart, the voice, down to the rings. Fire on your wicked covenant rings. Fire on the rings on your crowns. All of them, one by one. Fire everywhere. Fire everywhere. Fire in the home. Fire in the home. Fire in the home. Fire the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, the tongue, and the voice. Fire in the face. Fire. I send the irresistible fire of the Holy Spirit to your hiding places and to your evil secrets. And I command all of them and all of you to be exposed in the air on the land, in water, in any ocean, Caribbean islands, Holy Ghost, fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire your wicked crown, you witches and wizards. Fire your crowns. Fire on the crowns, the crown, the crowns. Fire on the head, the head. Fire. Pull out the covenant rings, you spiritual husband. Pull them out. Pull them out quickly. <laughs> I send fire to your wicked voice. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Pull out all the covenant rings. All of them, not some. Pull them out. Pull them out quickly. The crowns. The crowns. Spirit of blasphemy. Lust. Confusion. Pull them out. 
Throw them out quickly. Throw <laughs> the devil! Jesus Christ! I send more fire to the womb and I command all poisons of sin, spirit of seduction, lust, masturbation. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear the spine where you're moving, you snake. I send fire to your spirit of madness, depression, lust, homelessness, hardship. Fear! Right now, I send fire to that spirit of seduction. Oh, Monitoring eyes. Spirit of loss of memory. <gasps> fear! Fear! Pull all of them out. Everything that is not of God. Madness, depression, forgetfulness. Fear your wicked crown. Pull out the spirit of confusion. Unforgiveness and deep hatred. Pull them out quickly. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are not spiritually strong to know that there are evil spirits that are hiding in your family to kill, steal, and destroy, then you are fighting the battle that you will not be able to win. The evil spirit that is making you so greedy, unwilling to be truthful in life, unwilling to prosper in life. You cannot do anything without stealing. Even when you are being given money, you cannot give account. You always want to steal. You believe it's normal. These are evil spirits that possess you. You are only just to sit down to feed on money you have not struggled to get. Or you find yourself committing sexual immorality. You have terrible spirit of hatred, laziness, stubbornness, addiction, masturbation, and the like. These things are not normal. There are evil spirits that are hiding in you that are causing you to have these kind of unclean characters. Blasphemers are possessed by evil spirits. And the way they are, they believe other people are like that. All of us cannot be the same, my brother and sister. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. All of us cannot be blasphemy. Only those who are not useful in God's kingdom that will have time to blaspheme other people. If you are useful, you will be too busy doing the work of God than talking against other people, lying against them, and trying to look good in the eyes of people that are possessed by evil spirits. We don't try to be good. The spirit of goodness is in us. We are not trying to be faithful. The spirit of faithfulness is in us. We are not trying to be holy. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. And you cannot change that grace. God does not need to consult you to approve us. He doesn't need your permission. His decision is final and his choice cannot be questioned by any human being. He has the final say. You didn't hear that. God has the final say. God created every human being to be saved. You cannot change that. If you cannot save people, stop blaspheming. Your primary work is to seek and save the last. Why are you not doing that? Repent. Go and do your work. That is your job. You cannot save the soul of somebody you hate. It is not possible. If you are no longer there to save and you are there to blaspheme, you are heading to hell where you will spend your eternity. Our prayers still remain that God himself touches you and redirects your focus toward his heavenly will which is not only to put his words into practice, but also to enter into his holy kingdom, the kingdom of God. Hear his voice. Still under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Right now, I send more fire to all of you that are hiding in her. You cannot stop the deliverance. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit 
to her soul, spirit, and body. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, every part, and I send fire to darkness. Darkness is self. In the name of Jesus Christ, fire, remove poverty, sickness, disease, live a marriage, and leave every member of the family alone. I send for you to the spirit of witchcraft, divination, satanic charms, evil sacrifices and initiations. You know you cannot hide. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, the fire of the spirit of God is going down to all witchcraft activities and getting all of them completely consumed, destroying all available covenants, returning everything that the enemy has stolen from them, restoring her mind back. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave her mind. Leave her mind. I send fire to you, Lucifer. Stop attacking her mind. And to you, snake, in charge of depression. In the name of Jesus Christ. What he tried to do was just to only light and possibly make me to say, all right, she is free. Whereas she was not free then. What? I send fire to you, snake, spiritual husbands, Ancestral spirits, Lucifer. Watch and see that reaction. I send for you to you, Lucifer. Leave her mind. Fear! The brain where you hide your evil head, you snake. Fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! 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 The back! And the bones. Fire in the oceans where you hide to operate. Fire in the marine world. Not in the city of Jesus International Ministry. We cannot be deceived. If you are not destroyed, she will not be declared free. I send fire to all of you, your thrones in the kingdoms of darkness, and I command all of you to be destroyed. One by one, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is moving her out of the deepest part of the marine world, removing her soul from the prison of Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ. Moving out everyone in her family that have been caged for years and taking them to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command her true salvation to come. And I command you evil spirits to be totally destroyed. Let them begin to experience true salvation, prosperity, healing and deliverance. Freedom from depression, madness, and evil attacks, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. She is finally set free by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Everyone is looking new to her, and everywhere is becoming brighter and brighter in her eyes. As if she was just coming from the dark. God bless you. Thank you. God be the glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened to you during the prayers? I don't know explain it. I don't know. Uh, uh, all I, I, I just started to shake and I, I don't know where I'm at. 
Did you know that various powers of darkness that represented Satan in the form of spiritual husband, snake, Lucifer, witches and wizards that operated with ancestral spirits. We are the one that hid themselves in you to cause you to be depressed and tormented in life. I know that something was wrong because even when I'm studying, it's like I'm not able to retain anything. Um, I'm hearing vices as well. So I know that something was wrong with me. I know that I needed deliverance. Now check yourself. You have just been totally delivered. Are you still hearing the voices? No, no man of God. No, I am light. Even when I was in the service, I felt so heavy, so sleepy. I can't stay one place. Now I'm feeling so light. I'm feeling so light, man of God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Who has set you free? Jesus Christ. And how do you want to start living your life so you can maintain and enjoy your salvation and blessing? Oh, I'll continue seeking the face of God, getting closer to God, and ensuring staying away from sin, anything that is not of God, staying away from it. As you allow your life to be obedient to God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Bible says that you will eat the good fruits of the land. There are blessings when it comes to obedience, and these can be found Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, from verses 1 to 14. So these blessings will become yours as you see that this year, 2024, is a year of obedience to you. God bless Amen. you. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. Shalom. God bless you. Shalom. On the 13th of February, 20 at the City of Jesus International Ministry, the congregation assembled with their faith strengthened by the Holy Spirit of God. Among them was Miss Blessing, whose faith had been uplifted, was also attending the prayers. Miss Blessing had been grappling with malevolent forces such as spiritual husband, spirit of anger, hatred, stubbornness and the like, which inflicted various sicknesses and diseases upon her ranging from appendix issues, general body pain, migraine headaches, depression and confusion among others. Despite these challenges, Miss Blessing approached the prayer room of the City of Jesus International Ministry with a broken heart and spirit prepared for her encounter with God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Christopher Orgy, the man of God filled with the Holy Spirit, served as a beacon of hope, guided by God to lead Miss Blessing to the light of salvation. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, all these evil spirits were captured and destroyed, and Miss Blessing was declared free to the glory of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Kindly watch with a prayerful heart in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom. Call him again. Jesus Christ. Again. Jesus Christ. Leave her dreams. Stop giving her food in the dreams. Slap! Slap your kingdoms! Pull out the covenant rings, you spiritual husband. Slap! What are you pulling out? Pull them out quickly. Who are you that gave her a ring? My husband. Slap! You say you are the husband. What have you done to her? She's she honest. She does not rest. Yeah. How do you mean? She does have peace of mind. Who made her not to be resting and not to have peace of mind? Me. Who are you? <laughs> uh, huh? Uh -huh. What have you done to her destiny, her future, and her spiritual life? Terminated it. How do you mean? Explain. <laughs> what did you use to terminate her spiritual life, her health, and her career? She don't understand. She don't know her. 
She don't know her going and coming back. She just wants to make it in way. But, but she can't. Be. What, who is she destined to become? <laughs> that you don't want her to understand? Yes. God made her to become a nurse. Yes. To be caring for people. Yes. Huh? Yes. What did you use to stop her from becoming a nurse? Put fear. So that she cannot go to What is her level in school? <laughs> she just finished her work. She's supposed to be in nursing school now. Mm -hmm. What did you do to stop that? I brought up appendix so that after the operation, all the money they will. Has she done the operation? Yes. When did she do the operation? When? Last year. Is she still having the pain and the sickness? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Any appendix or sickness you caused, and the people you have afflicted happen to go for operation, would they be permanently cured? Or the problem will still come back again? <laughs> no. And for the moment, it is at as if it has calmed down. Mm -hmm. And maybe they will believe that the operation has been done. But a few months later, they will start feeling the same symptoms. Is that what she's feeling now? Yes. Meaning what? The appendix is still there. It's still there. Who has exposed you here at the city of Jesus International Ministry? Jesus Christ. What else have you done to her? What are the bad characters you've given to her? Mother mm. hates people. Who are those people she normally hates? Paranda. Like, give examples. <laughs> like, if you correct her, mm -hmm. she might not talk to you for the rest of her life. She will hate you. There are so many people that hate to be corrected. Many people that hate correction. Children that don't even listen to anybody's correction. <laughs> who possess people who are always unwilling to listen to people's correction. Us. Who are you? Mention your names. Number one. Threat. Ja! Expose yourselves. Who is the second person that used to make people not to take to correction? Spirit of stubbornness. How many people have you possessed to be stubborn not to take corrections from people? How many all around the world? Uncountable. How did you possess this lady? Through fornication, yes. At what age did she start fornicating? 18. How old is she now? 20. What are her names? Toma Fevo DK. Where is she from? Imo State. In which part of Imo State? Oruto. Which local government? Mbitolo. Did she tell people that she started fornicating at the age of 18 years? No. Where are the parents? <laughs> The parents uh -huh. <laughs> scattered. Who scattered everything about them? I. What is happening to them? Are they alive? Are they working or not working? Where are they? She was small when her dad gave up, when her dad died. But what about the mother? The mom remarried and gave birth to seven children. But the mother did not yet to be found. And the husband left her, the woman. And she's suffering a lot. Who is the cause? <laughs> I did. Who are you? Your name's again? <laughs> My spiritual husband. What other sicknesses and diseases have you caused her? Apart from appendix? She's not herself. How do you mean? Her body is filled with pains, especially her stomach. Uh -huh. She's always passing through pains. <laughs> in her head. <laughs> Her neck, mm -hmm. her tummy, mm -hmm. her legs. She can't bend down for some means and stand up, no matter that she's a young girl. <laughs> what is it that is hiding in the places you have mentioned that is causing all these pains? <laughs> neck. Try the waist. I send fire to the snake and to the waist. The back. Try. Now mention your name quickly. Speak and answer me, you snake. What is your name? Anytime she's having sex with men, what do you Python used to do to her and those men? <laughs> they are not a business. Uh -huh. Finances. We never go again. How do you mean? 
Meaning? Meaning that especially his business would never work. Business of? A boyfriend business. What is the name of the boyfriend? Chibi Kevina. How do you normally get those men to her? Make her look. I build up her body system. I should be attracted to men. Which part of the body have you affected? Everywhere. Her backs. How do you mean? Her hips. What did you place there? I placed attraction. So that when they see it, they get confused. Who are those people that you used to see it and get confused? Men. Where again did you place your seductive power? Her front side. Mention the names of the places. Her back and her front. I made it look at short. Which part of the front? Her breast. What did you place there? Abstraction. When these men are simply being attracted by this, your weakest spiritual powers of seduction, what do they normally do with her? What normally happens to them? They will be interested to know her and like to sleep with her. Mm -hmm. But when they are done, they will be seeking for her, seeking for her, but she will just dump them. See if she's the man. <laughs> tell them to go there, we'll let her go now. She cannot reject what men are telling her. Anytime they, they ask her, hey, let's do this. Let's lodge somewhere. Let's have sex. She will say, okay. But after she's done, <laughs> she'll be crying. <laughs> How old are these kind of men you have been sending to her? Are they her age men or older men or what? Explain. Like 24, 25. So if they are students or businessmen, what used to happen to them? I will squander it. <laughs> How do you mean? What do you normally squander in their lives? Their future. For instance, if they are going to become a billionaire, a well-to-do person in the society, a politician, or even a leader, what do you normally do to them? They will just be lighting around like fools. There are so many people that graduated, so many people that have become ex-leader, ex-this and ex-that. What do you have to say about issues like this? Who is responsible? <laughs> Does it mean that people like that must have had one or two encounters with your evil agents like this? Yes, even people that are in schools mm -hmm. that refuse to graduate, mm -hmm. we make them not to. Graduate. How? What did you use to capture them and make them not to graduate from school? We came them to have sex with our agents. <laughs> Where are those agents of yours? Are they everywhere in the marketplaces, in everywhere, on the street, even in schools? Can you figure out where are those agents of yours? Where do you normally position them to seduce men and have sex with men and women? They are in every girl that refuses to encounter your God. In every woman, even married woman, that in any of them, I refuse to encounter your God. Who is my God? And how should somebody agree or submit or get ready to encounter the God of Christopher Oji? <laughs> what must the person do to encounter the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? <laughs> what the person will do? Just heart open. As she did, open your heart to God, confess your sins, mm -hmm. and encounter Christ. As she did, which I have been begging her not. How? But she refused, and I told her, please. She refused that she's tired of her life, that she's tired of all these things. In the morning, she was being prayed for, and you, evil spirits, did not speak out when she had not confessed her sins. What is in the power of confession, genuine confession of sins that are used to expose you evil spirits? Get all of you completely arrested and destroyed. She has exposed me. Meaning, genuine confession of sins used to expose you evil spirits. Not only the one that you said through your mouth, but the one that is from time and from a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Do expose us. You can say it out, but only through your mouth. Between yourself, you are with a broken heart. 
and it's time for your mind. How should one do his or her confession that will make such person as someone who has confessed his sin with a broken heart, a repentant spirit? How should someone do such confession so that it will become a confession that comes from a broken heart or a repentant spirit? You will not be shy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you will say it publicly and make sure you are tired and you are not going back to it. <laughs> what about people that say, no, I'm a public figure. I am from a big family. And my friends may be watching me on TV station or on social media handles. I don't want to confess my sins. Let me keep them secret. Who used to harden their hearts? Spirit of pride. Pride. Spirit of what? Pride. Who used to give them the spirit of pride to conceal and cover up their iniquities? That's another kingdom. Which kingdom? Kingdom of darkness. Try the name of Jesus Christ. What have you been doing to her in the dream? Anytime she's sleeping, you spiritual husband. What form do you normally take to appear to her in the dream? I come to her as a man and I sleep with her all the time. She has sex in the dream. With? Mm -hmm. And you are? The spiritual husband. Do you use any particular face or you use any face you want that she cannot resist? Any face, but she don't see it. But she will feel like she will be having the sex, but she will not see the face. <laughs> when she wake up, she looks as if she had really had sex in the in the natural form. What used to happen to her? How does she know that truly she had committed this kind of sin in the dream world? When she touch her private parts, she feel wet. She feel that she has done something. She has had sex, but. I did it. How many women have you possessed like this <laughs> and tormented like this in the dream world? Hey, that one. Women. Let's just put it. Almost all the women in the world. Almost all. Do they know that such acts that normally take place in the spiritual world, in the dream world, are coming from you, spiritual husbands? Some know. In the kingdom of darkness. Some know, but some don't know. Something that maybe, hey, is how this word is. Maybe it's the hungry of the flesh. It's natural. Something that is natural. Something that is a puberty to eat. It's natural. It's how it's supposed to be. But no. Now answer the truthful question. Having sex in the dream, is it really natural? How it's supposed to be? Or not natural? It's not natural. Having sex in the dream, is it demonic or not demonic? Usually demonic. <laughs> when she had not started having sex, she's okay. She walks really. Mm -hmm. She gets trouble from people. She has a nice voice. Meaning she can? She can sing. Anytime she sings, the Holy Spirit comes down. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't want her to. So, since you started attacking her in the dream through sexual activities or intercourse, what has happened to her voice? And what has happened to the favor she used to have? Uh, whenever she tries to sing, I will sink her voice, press it inside. Inside where? Inside. I will tie up her voice and bring up all these worldly songs. And she will come up with some worldly songs that people can see and like it. What about the favor she used to enjoy before? Favor from God and favor from <laughs> people? Uh, people hate her. No. Anyway, she goes to. People always discard her, disregard her, call her names, gossip at her bags. Is there any particular sickness or disease you normally give to people you have had sex with in the dream? and also people that you have sent your agents to seduce and have sex with in the physical world. What kind of sickness do you normally give to these people? <laughs> Don't give them particular sickness. I scatter their body, I turn it upside down. Like the way you did to this lady? Yes. What kind yes. of sickness? Just mention, mention. 
appendix, mm -hmm. high knee, mm -hmm. fibroid, pains, all of pains in the stomach, mm -hmm. headache. Mm -hmm. What about sexually transmitted sicknesses and diseases? Do you also share this kind of sicknesses and diseases with the people that you use her to seduce or you use your evil agents to seduce? Or with the people that you have had sex with in the dream, you spiritual husbands? I give, but not that much. You give them what? What kind of deadly sicknesses and diseases have you been giving to people like that? Head IV, eggs. Mm -hmm. Oh, not that much, not everybody. Why not everybody? Why did you decide to be selective? What makes you to give somebody HIV AIDS? Those ones that have a greater future. Like? Like, that will save, that will come out next time and destroy us. Mm -hmm. Like people that are destined to men of God. How many of them have you seduced, slept with? and giving this HIV AIDS just to stop them from leaving to carry out their God's giving mission? Um, I can't count. I can't count. I can't count. A lot. Those people that you possess to be giving people HIV AIDS, if they go for tests, will they also test positive or they will test negative? Whereas they are giving HIV AIDS to people. They will test negative so that they will not know they have it. We're going more, spreading it. And people will be getting it. Those people that will be getting it will now be finding out that they have HIVS. What if they come back to those people, your evil agents, and say, come, let's go for a test. I tested and uh, it's positive to HIV AIDS. But you, let's go, go and do your own test. Then we go. Uh -huh. Those your evil agents who go to hospital yes. to run a test, HIV AIDS yes. confirmatory test. Yes. What would the result be like? Negative. Negative. Yes, positive. And they would be like, can't look for the person that gave you HIV, not me. Whereas? Whereas they are the one. <laughs> you evil spirit, what made it easy for you to make your evil agents to be negative to HIV AIDS? Whereas they are carriers and distributors of HIV AIDS to other people. What made it easy for you to hide it anytime they go for test, they test negative. Whereas spiritually they are positive and they are the one distributing HIV AIDS to other people. How do you normally hide it from being detected by equipment in the laboratory? We make use of all those things. We make use of it. Explain, how do you normally make use of that? We turn it upside down when our agent is concerned. Mm -hmm. Make it test negative, positive, positive, negative. I will make some people like at the moment a person that is positive comes. This might be negative through that engine because we are there. <laughs> we have landed. <laughs> so how do you normally make the people's own positive even when they are negative? Because we are there. How do you use your agents to turn a negative report into a positive report? We turn it upside down. Who are those your agents that you used to be in the laboratory? We live in some doctors. Some doctors. So our agents are working on some of them. Some refuse. Some accept it. Especially nurses. What kind of works? do you always possess people to do for you that made them to turn the negative result of somebody who is not even having HIV AIDS to become positive and to turn the positive result of your evil agents to become negative how their brains will not be there their brains are gone i'll be handling it until when they are done how do you normally appear to handle all the assignments there to handle the machine, the equipment, <laughs> to run the test in various laboratories. How, oh, you evil spirits? The person that the heart is open for me, I'll go through the person. What makes one's heart, a heart that is open for you, evil spirits? A heart that is full of darkness. How do you Saints. mean? Full of what? Saints. What kind of saints? Fornication, lies, mm -hmm. stealing, mm -hmm. 
especially those ones that steal drugs in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Those ones that do all negative things mm -hmm. from the hospital. Mm -hmm. We go through them. To do what? What do you go through them to do? To walk through them. We walk through them. To? So? Make their brains not to be there. So all the tests they will be doing be nonsense. They will not be their self. It will be relieve them. But leaving them does not mean that we are gone. Our particles will still remain in them. What are the evil particles you normally <laughs> deposited in them? I, the particles make them commit a lot of things. Like? They do abortion for people. They steal abortion medicine to go and sell. They steal drugs secretly to sell. That's our particles. They will still be working. Anytime they steal and do those things you have mentioned, are such people easily caught? Anytime they are doing these evil jobs for you, evil spirits? No, no, unless they are deciding to get tired of our works, then we expose them. How? Like someone that will be tired, I don't want to do this, I'm tired of this. We will make sure we push the person to go and do it again and set a witness. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, don't take this, like, look at her, what she's doing. I see her, report her. Even though she beg you, report her, don't mind her. She thinks she can deal with me and just dump me and go. No, she can't. So? We are supposed to. Mm -hmm. When they're exposed like that, what used to happen to them? They're alive. Mm -hmm. They're reckless. Getting another job is very hard for them. What if they go to church for prayers and they are finally delivered? Their sins are finally forgiven. What will happen to them? <laughs> that one. They'll be free from our chain. That will go. What type of ministry will God use to set people like this totally free? from these demonic oppressions? Yes. Major the name. City of Jesus. Uh -huh. Complete the names. City of Jesus. Mm -hmm. International Ministry. Uh -huh. Who is in the City of Jesus International Ministry that will set everybody you have afflicted, possessed, disgraced, made jobless, and destroyed completely free? Jesus Christ. What else have you not said? How else do you operate? Her family. How did you destroy her family? I made a senior brother not to look at her anymore. How? Nobody wants to help her. Nobody wants to. What do you normally tell this elder brother? What are the thoughts you are placing in his heart? I made the elder brother not to look at her. Let him focus on his own career first before looking at her. Mention the names of the elder brother. Precious Buka DK. He's in school. Mm -hmm. Which school? University. Which university? She don't even know. Because her brother does not give. What do you know? Which university? <laughs> Which university? Uh, uh, that's in the state. Mm -hmm. What have you done to him so far? What is your role? What have you done to his studies, his career? I made him lose that he have, he's the only one with this one. I made him lose that he have a sister, and her sister will be always crying. What lives of sin have you been pushing him to live that enabled you to also attack him in this manner? Fornication. Did you also give him spiritual wife? Because you have given this lady spiritual husband. <laughs> Did you give him spiritual wife? Yes or no? Yes. I made him hate ladies. I made him get the girls. Who are you that made him to hate girls? All he likes is just to sleep and dump. Sleep with them and dump them. Hmm? Meaning to commit what sin? Fornication. Girls and dump them. Who is in him that is pushing him to be committing sexual immorality? Spiritual wife. How did you possess him, you spiritual wife? Dreams. How? Dream. What happened? With food. And what have you been doing to him in the dream? You spiritual wife. I did. What kind of sin have you also been going to him to commit with him in the dream? Sin yeah. of what? Fornication. 
Yeah, we have sex in the dream. Yeah, they have sex. They still have sex. Meaning you, the spiritual wife, you have become the jealous type that do not want any other lady. You only push him to commit sexual intercourse with ladies. Dumb them. Yes. And find his way. If he tries me to deal with another lady, <laughs> the lady will see the color of me. <laughs> what would they see? <laughs> I might kill. How? What do you normally plan to use to kill people? You spiritual wife. Sickness. What kind of sickness? I might increase typhoid. What again? Malaria. HIV and AIDS. The HIV and AIDS. And they will suffer from it. Those ladies that you allow him to have sex with, what used to happen to their careers, their studies, if they're students, if they're business Terminated. ladies? Huh? Terminated. What about their marriages? Oh, some might be alive to get married. But their marriage, we never have fruits. It don't be barrenness. Mm -hmm. No time. <laughs> How many of them have had an encounter like this, sexually, with him? Mm. And with you, spiritual wife? Can you count? No, I can't count. What do you want to gain by doing all this evil? What do you want to gain by doing all this evil? They both of them are great. They are great. What is wrong if one is born to be great? What do you evil spirits want to gain by doing all this evil? They are great. They will destroy. They will destroy us. Listen, why can't you spiritual wife get married to a spiritual husband? Or you spiritual husband get married to you spiritual wife? Why can't two of you oh. get married together? You the spiritual, spiritual husband does not have feet up. He's just a spirit. And I need human being to? to work on, to torment. <laughs> you yourself, are you aware that you do not have any future? If you don't have a future, why are you looking for someone that has a future? Why? Things I don't have, they will not. God says in Jeremiah 29 verses 11, that his plan for his children is for good, to give them great future and expected end. Who are you to destroy the future that God has given to his children? Do you think that will succeed? Answer me. Are you not seeing your wicked plan to destroy people's future? Failing. Wait, do you know me? I want to get her. I want to scatter her. I want to make her not have left and right. Here she, she's working for somebody. Who is she working for? <laughs> for a woman and her husband. Uh -huh. They are very clear and their mind is so clear. They don't have anything against her. But she still lied to them. They are always shouting about his, her lies. I made her lie, lie, Give lie. Give examples of the lies she has told to the <laughs> husband and wife she's living with. You will see her doing this, so. Hey, who did this? It's not me. There will be many evidence. You just say it's not her. Where are she's the one? But after she's done, she will just go one side and stay. Am I the one doing this? <laughs> I will tell her. You are the one. <laughs> Who are you that used to tell her? You are the one. Spirit of stubbornness. What about those husband and wife? Do they know that this lady actually had been the one doing all the evil things and lying to them? Yes, they know. How? And they will tell her, change for good. Change for good. Mm -hmm. All the time. What are the names of those people? The husband and the wife? Me too, family. The husband, Ennis Metu. The wife, lovely Metu. They like her so much. She's scared. She needs to take care of kids. Mm -hmm. Their grandchildren. She takes care of them very well. But sometimes the demon comes to her. To do what to the children? To make her treat them bad. How? <laughs> Anger. Anytime she gets angry, what does she used to do to them? She don't beat them. She will feel like beating them to death. But herself will calm herself down. Saying that the way I take care of these children will be the way my children will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the only way that used to scare her anger away. <laughs> Who used to put that anger in her? 
Your names? Anger. Mm -hmm. Hatred. Like I was saying, the way I want to terminate her, where she was working, she was paid. Ending of this year, she wants to go back to her village and start up a business. And after doing the business, she would then, if the business grew up, she then go back to her school, to her nursing school. But I wanted her to do it so that I would terminate the business. I would just squeeze it. What kind of business did she plan to go back to the village to start up? <laughs> she wants to start up with all these provision stores, mm -hmm. all this provision. She's good at that. And if she stands in business, you know why I want to destroy her more? She has a nice face. You know when she stands selling something, people will be coming to buy from her. <laughs> if she stays in another person's shop, people will be coming. <laughs> but I want her to open her own. So that will terminate it. How? What is it that you planned to do to terminate? Uh, her own shop, her business. Hmm. And her plan? Lots of gain. What do you want to use? How? I will make her to be selling and spending. On? Fashion. Say more. Hairs. Mm -hmm. Clothes. Mm -hmm. Shows. Mm -hmm. Makeups. Mm -hmm. Other things. And taking care of her family. Will you then be sending more men? <laughs> That's when she looks beautiful, more beautiful. More men will come. And when they come, they terminate their future. Through her, they terminate my future. And her own as well? Yes or no? Yes. Her destiny can be delayed, but her destiny cannot be terminated. That's the worst part of it. <laughs> That's the worst part of it, though. That's what I'm trying to destroy. Make sure I scatter her. Maybe she might die like her father. Die of what? My father died of HIV too. My father was flexing, left her mother. Mm -hmm. And my father was flexing, so he got HIV mm -hmm. and died too. Mm -hmm. Then she was nine months old. Is she having the HIV AIDS now? This no. lady? No. What so, about the mother? No. She divorced her mother before he got it. And only the brother did because she was so small. They left her with the mother. And the mother suffered. After suffering, she got married to another man thinking that she has come to enjoy. After seven children, the man left her for another woman. So she suffered. And the woman must suffer because she has destroyed a lot of us. How? She, what did she use to she have destroy you evil spirits? She has ministry. She has what? Ministry. What is the name of her ministry? Salvation Ministry. What did you use to terminate the ministry? I enter into people. To? Tell them that the woman is fake. Mm -hmm. Tell them the woman is my mother. Whereas? Whereas she is not. How many ministers of God have you incited your evil agents all around the world to believe that they are fake, whereas they are not fake? <laughs> ministers that are real. Ministers that are what? That are from God. What do you normally do to them? I make them mm -hmm. think that they are using chance. Minister like who? Ministers like you. Fire! Ministers like you. How do you tell people that true ministers are fake? And fake ministers are true? I don't tell them. They figure it out by themselves. Who like, used to whisper to them? Like, maybe I will show them a particular something that they will be looking at. Like? The altar. Like that in your altar. Look at the altar. What is wrong with the altar? Is there anything wrong with that? Is there anything that is not real in that water? Everything is real, but people think that there is something that you put in there, that whenever you step your feet, you start delivering people, but no. <laughs> Everything is real from God, but maybe I might show them, like, okay, look at that statue that was written by Bovas there. Hi. There is something there. Just leave this church. This church is not meant for you. And you see them standing up and down. <laughs> Especially those that have the, our agents in them. How do you mean? Those that come for deliverance. Mm -hmm. You make them go before you come out. <laughs> because they will expose us. What do I might tell them? That make them to leave before? This one is fake. Go. He's fake. He's fake. Go. Have you He's... ever succeeded? Because this also is one of the persons you possessed, and she did not go. Did you ever succeed in doing this kind of thing? I do succeed, some. 
But some that really needed that came with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to me. <laughs> like her. <laughs> Who are those ones you have succeeded in driving to go? Okay. Impatiently, without waiting for their deliverance. What kind of character do they normally possess? How do they normally approach the ushers and the security <laughs> people? Yeah. They are ready to fight. Leave my way. They're not the one fighting. Me. Who are you in them that used to fight with the workers? Security agents and ushers? Spirit of giants. Giant. giant from where? Which kingdom? Can anyone run from the Holy Spirit that delivers people here? People that their heart are blocked. What makes their heart to be blocked? Like, they are not ready to leave their sins. What they are, are those sins? Lives of sins. They are enjoying it. What? How? Like you said, <laughs> how can I leave drinking? No. How can I leave fornication? No. How can I stop smoking? Uh, they can't leave that. So they decided to block their hearts. Just come and receive blessings and go. Like she always do. Mm -hmm. But she came last Sunday with the broken and tears. <laughs> Did she know that she was possessed? Yes. She knew? Yes. I speak to her, she hears me. Where do you normally speak to her? When she's gone. Is it in her heart, in her mind, or you come physically? How? In her mind. She asked me to shut up that she's crying. That today is my last day. That she's tired of me. Now, all those people you have had in their hearts, they are also listening to your wicked confession, you evil spirits. What is in this confession of yours that will also get them delivered anywhere they are? Bring them to the presence of God anywhere they are and get them disconnected from sins, sinful desires, and all of you in the kingdom of darkness. To soften their hearts and get ready to leave their sin and sinful and get tired of it and don't think about it again. People you have hardened their hearts and caused to them not to wait for their deliverance impatiently, arrogantly, stubbornly, as they are hearing how you have been operating, how you have been manipulating their minds through lives of sins and sinful desires. What is in this confession you are making now that will also get them delivered and brought into the kingdom of God? I've been exposed them. Most of them will figure out their characters. Most of them. Don't know that they are possessed, but through me, they will be figuring out their characters and be getting ready to let it go. Meaning, getting ready to be taken out of the kingdom of darkness, your evil kingdom, yes, and to be permanently placed into the kingdom of God. Yes, if they don't think about it, if they don't look back. How would they be approaching the workers they have shouted upon? Try to fight away, cursed, and quarreled away. And some of them. How would their actions, attitudes, and characters be like? And they will be coming back repentantly into the presence of God. What kind of character would they come out with that will produce their deliverance? Calmness. They will always be there. Are the ushers and workers here? You say that. Your evil agents are the ones that used to fight against the workers that are working. Mm. Because the workers want them to be delivered. Yes. But they don't want to be delivered. Yes. Because you, evil spirits, are living in them and do not want them to be delivered. Mm. Now my question is, are you confirming that the workers of the City of Jesus International Ministry are here doing the work of God? Yes. And that is why your evil agents and you are always fighting against them? Yes. Yes. What is your mission, you evil spirits in the church? It's not my duty. Whose duty is to attack churches? Spirit of destruction. Destruction. How do they operate? They cause contamination in the church and between the leaders. What they are the things they cause between the leaders? They make them feel jealous of themselves. Mm -hmm. They make them think negative. It's like she's stealing from the pocket of the church. They make them think that the fellow leaders are stealing. So they will ask you to look like them. And at last, <laughs> mm -hmm. when they find out, um, you will see them before I started. 
and there will be war. There will be war. Now check, this is the City of Jesus International Ministry. Have you ever operated in the City of Jesus International Ministry? No, no. Who is in the City of Jesus International Ministry that stopped you never from never. causing confusion, never. promoting jealousy, envy, stealing, destruction, and killing? Whenever I'm here, I'm always changed. You spirit of destruction, who used to change you? <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I used to wait for her to get. Whenever she's out, she feels like a newborn. Whenever she's out from the gate, she hit a jaggy bomb. And I'll start working with her again. What is it in her that used to open doors for you to enter into her and repossess her? And the spirit of fornication. Has she ever tried to seduce people in the church? In any church she goes? Yes. How? And who? She walks past you. You must look at her. Has she ever done that in the city of Jesus International Ministry? <laughs> she has done it once. Where? Yeah. With who? She don't even know the person. She walked. What happened? The person looked at her. But there is problem about her. Even when the person called her, she neglected her. I was one that was looking for the person, but she don't want the person. She neglected the person. Meaning the, the person came to the church here, yeah. saw her moving, looked at her, decided to do what? Calling her face to face to ask for the number. Uh -huh. But she neglected the person. I was forcing her to go. You know what she told me? This is church. This is no street. <laughs> this is church. This is not street. Who were you and who are still you that this lady addressed that look? This is church, a holy ground, and this is not the street. Spirit of fornication. Meaning that you, spirit of fornication, does not operate in the city of Jesus International Ministry. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes, our power is suppressed here. She have a very big problem. Big one. In her streets where she lives. <laughs> if you see guys that are looking for her. But in her mind, like I'm in her mind, I will take charge to pick for her. But outward of her, when they come for her, she will not let them. Say she took her first deliverance. The f her first time she was here, she only had sex wounds. Since for a year now, I've been forcing her, even pushing her for her to sleep with a lot of guys. She just did it last year, December. With who? With her boyfriend. Where is the boyfriend? At him <laughs> That one. That one. That one threw lies out. No. But that one. His business is not moving. He's not even thinking for them. He's just thinking there that he's what to eat and what to drink. He don't even think of. Drink what? What does he normally drink? Alcohol. Who made him not to be moving forward? Who crumbled his business and caused him to be addicted to alcohol? I did. Who are you? <laughs> Spiritual husband. <laughs> now, what is your message to people that come to church? What message are you going to give them that will enable them to concentrate? Not to be looking at women, men, looking at people, collecting their telephone numbers and contacts. What message do you have for them? Speak to them before all of you will be finally destroyed. You will respect. Let them focus on what they are here for. Men and women, those who come here to find husband and not deliverance. Focus on what you are here for. Pray. What should they focus on? What should they be here for? Their deliverance. How to be safe. How to live their sin and sinful desires. That's it. But they don't though. They will be praying and they didn't even walk past them. That prayer. And they'll be thinking, how? Oh, how can I get this lady? How can I talk to her? How can I get their number? Um then, if they are here for something else. Like? 
deliverance and healing that has been terminated for that day. Because? <laughs> because they have looked back. <laughs> Look back to? Communication. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> what is in the prayer of Christopher O.G. that does not allow you evil spirits to fully accomplish your evil tasks like this? Fire. 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 Even she can't look at your face. Why? It doesn't light. But you sent her to be seducing men. Why did she not try it here to see if the minister of God, Christopher O.G., would be seduced? She, she fear you a lot. She know that you're a saint. She know that you're a saint. I've been forcing her. If I put the thoughts, like the thoughts in her mind, to think about it, how to say this? Who? Mm -hmm. Christopher Oji. You know what she say? Ha, this man is a saint. Before she came inside there, the spirit tell her, <laughs> it's time. True. See this year. But do you know what she did? She said, <laughs> Your spirit that is talking to my mind should calm yourself down. I'm not here for you. I'm here for my deliverance. And I must receive it today. She wrote in her post, The story of sadness must end today. Right now, she was sitting aside there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Story of pains and sorrow will end today. Mm -hmm. That's what she wrote in her post. So it's pain. She was just suppressing me. She was suppressing me. Even though you didn't pray for her, she will suppress me because she has seen the light. She's tired of me. What if other people are saying? Oh, Christopher OG is not holy, he's not righteous, he's only pretending. He's preaching what he does not do. What do you evil spirits of fornication, adultery, masturbation, and all kinds of sins and sinful desires have to say? We know that you don't do that. What are the things Christopher Oji does not do? Christopher Oji is not a person that is the same. His body is not a sinful place, but a temple of the... Temple of, Temple of, it's not, it's not. Temple of what? Temple of God. So what are you telling those that are saying, or people that believe, or people that want to find out? Oh, those, those that they are thinking stupid. But we made them to be, like, right? they are thinking stupidly. They are thinking stupidly. I think you know sense. They can't even get you. Even if they bring them in hundreds, they can't get you. Why? Because you, Christopher, you surrender with the hands of the Lord. No one can get to you. <sighs> what about the dream? Oh, what about the dream? What if people say they cannot get him in the physical? Let's try to get Christopher Oji in the dream. Say he's that. He's worst in the dream. Oh. He's worst in the dream. How do you mean that he is worst in the dream? If he catches you in the dream, you are dead. If Christopher catches anybody, any demon in the dream, hey, that one is gone. Uh -huh. He's gone. He or she is finished. <laughs> Meaning? <laughs> he can't even operate anymore. He will be sent to the deepest part of the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, he can't operate. <laughs> Who is in Christopher Oji that destroys all powers of darkness? Okay. Not asking, only in the physical world, but also in the dream world. You are asking me as if you don't know. You know. You know, speak and say you that know. to your agents. Okay, I will tell them. But they already know the Spirit of God. Yes. If this lady is delivered now, what will happen to your evil plans, your kingdoms? her destiny, her siblings, and all the people you are possessed and afflicted with sicknesses and diseases all around the world. I will be free from my chains, and she will be free. And what is pinning me most is her voice. Her voice. She will start using her voice to scare us away. She will be 
use her voice to do a lot. And through her voice, there will be healing. Through her voice, there will be deliverance. Uh, her voice will be returned. Her voice will return. I will just give it back to her. Just let me go. Are you aware that no evil spirits will be allowed to exist again? Because all of you have worked together and none of you will escape. Yes. Are you aware? I'm aware. But, huh? I, but just pity, pity for me. Let me go. There is no mercy for evil spirits. You know that. Mm -hmm. Because you have never had any mercy for mm -hmm. any human being. I know. Huh? I know. Let me go. Let me just... Right now, I send fire to all of you. Throw the devil Jesus Christ, you wicked spirit of destruction, seduction, fornication, adultery, masturbation, anger, stubbornness. Throw the devil Jesus Christ. I send fire to the waste, especially to you, Python. The womb. Every part of our body where you place the negative powers, spirit of seduction. Fornication, lust. Throw the devil, Jesus Christ! Fire! Spirit of stealing. Uh. Where dreams. Fire! Fire! I send fire to the altar of the kingdoms of darkness. All satanic altars. Your wicked beats, rings, brows, crowns, ornaments, monetary mirrors and spirits. Uh, fire! Uh, uh, I send uh, fire to all hospitals, all workers, everyone working in the hospital, everyone operating in laboratories. Everyone working in marketplaces. Everyone working in all nations all around the world. Both the male and female, old and young. I send fire to all institutions, universities, secondary schools, primary schools, nursery schools, polytechnics. Polytechnics. Technical schools. Fire! I send fire to all religions, theological schools, and I command deliverance to take place. The Holy Ghost, fire the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot wait for her anywhere. I command all of you, evil spirits to be destroyed. Fire! Throw the water! Throw the water! Throw the water! In the darkness! On earth! In the air! In the air! You Satan, Lucifer serpent! Throw it! Go. I send fire to all incurable sicknesses and diseases. Let me go. HIV AIDS, cancer, ulcer, syphilis, tuberculosis, asthma, diabetes, hypertension, infection, staphylococcus, 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 appendix, hernia, Goiter, asthma, skin disease, general body pain and weaknesses, irregular menstruation, fibroid, 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 madness, migraine, headaches, depression, please, I want to go, headaches, I want to go, headaches, depression, silver. Shame, disgrace, accidents, accidents, 
spirit of poverty. Hardship. Delay. Confusion. Confusion. Try your kingdom. Spirit of nightmares, wet dreams. Spirit your husband. Spirit your wife. Idols. 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 Try your bigger crowds. What are you removing? Try your crowns and monitoring mirrors. Power of seduction. The eyes. The eyes. The tongue. The face. Try her steps. Walking steps. Try on the steps. The legs. The waist. Try her walking steps. I sell her to her voice. The voice. The voice. Try the voice. Let everything be restored back. More than ever. Try the voice. Oh. Oh. Oh, Try. Let me go. I command the voice to be restored for the glory of God. And I command your wicked head, you snake. Your evil poison, your venoms will be destroyed. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. No water will take you. No creature will take you. The air will not take you. The river. The... I self where to see oceans, rivers. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go. It's over. Turn. You know you cannot even cross the chair. Check and see if you can. The place is free. Check the door! Jesus Christ! You cannot cross the you know. Try the door! Jesus Christ! I send for you to ministers of God. All around the world, businessmen, students, politicians, people on the street, people in the market, people in various banks, various institutions, people on social media handles. And I command all of them to receive deliverance. Turn in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn Spirit of pornography, masturbation, <laughs> lust. I send fire to all occultic spirits, satanic creatures you have been using to operate in the day and the night. If you can. Everywhere is filled with the fire of the Spirit of God. Check if you can see down there. Fire! On the ground. The air you breathe in and out. Holy Ghost fire. Fire in the air. Fire in the air. Her blood. Her blood. Her blood. Her blood. Her blood. Fire your blood. Turn her blood. Turn her blood. Turn I send fire to the bone, the spine, the back. No hiding place for the snake. Turn the spine. Turn. Those places you have invested your wicked power of seduction, I command deliverance to take place. Turn. You are not undergoing spiritual torment. You are undergoing complete spiritual destruction. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for setting fire everywhere. 
find the north, south, east, and west. In the air, oh. in her bones, in her blood, on her skin, oh. on the clothes, oh. the hair, oh. the ears, the nose, the tongue, the clothes. Try! Try the skin! Try the skin! Try the blood! I send fire to the brain, the brain and the mind. Try! Try! The fire has gone straight down to the brain, the mind. You cannot control that place anymore. Try the mind, the brain. Brain of madness, migraine, depression, confusion. Turn the brain! Turn the brain! Turn! Turn! And I send fire to the womb. And I command your infections, your sicknesses, and diseases to be dried up and consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit forever. Turn the name of Jesus Christ! I command the people you have afflicted with HIV AIDS, cancer, sickness, disease, migraine, infection, epilepsy, lust, fornication, stubbornness, anger, hardship, sins and sinful desires, drunkenness, smoking, to be totally delivered. Holy Ghost, through the name of Jesus Christ, More than ever. More. More! The family, the family, the family, the mother, the siblings, the siblings. Where she is working now, the place is staying now. Holy Ghost, turn the devil, Jesus Christ, the shop. Turn! The entire market. Turn! No hiding place. The war is affected. The Holy Ghost fire is consumed everywhere. Fire! I send more fire to her cells, her organs, her tissues, her systems. The water in her body. The water in her body. Fire! The eyes. Fire! Spirit of seduction. spiritual powers, all of them, not some, all of them, turn the name of Jesus Christ. I command all of you to be destroyed forever by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Turn the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for destroying all of them and for setting her totally free. I command her to receive a pure heart from God that is not controlled by sins and sinful desires. A pure heart from God that is not controlled by the spirit of fornication, lust, seduction, disobedience, stubbornness, stealing, killing, destruction, Satan, Lucifer, and snake. Spiritual husband, and spiritual wife, witches and wizards and idols, both now and forevermore. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My name is Chumadike, and for me, mistakes. I'm 20. This month is my birthday. I'm 20. Where in Nimo State you come from? 
Orodo. Who are you living with now? I'm living with my two family at Obaka Street. You know, Obaka Street, actually out. What do you do with them? I take care of their grandkids and they pay me. I've been living with them for up to a year now. What kind of character have you been having that you do not like? I'm, I'm stubborn. I'm, I don't lie. Yes. I don't lie. Maybe any crime that I commit, if you ask me, I'll tell you that I'm not the one. Whereas I'm the one. Whereas even though there are many evidence to tell me that I'm the one, I'll tell them that I'm not the one. Can you give examples of some of those things? Now that you're free, feel free to give examples. Why? Like? I did that day, it's not a few days from now. The baby that they asked me to be taken care of, they asked me if I change the clothes. <laughs> Where is the clothes? The baby was still wearing it. I said yes, I did. But they said the coat, the baby was still wearing. Nobody was giving evidence that this clothes is not true. But I don't know what was persuading me to say no, that I did. The letter was like, Okay, am I the one doing this or not? I was tired of it. No comments I will say without lying. And I will let her regret it. Did you know that you were possessed by lying spirits, spirit of fornication, spirits of disobedience, stubbornness, anger, hatred, and the like? Yes. Explain how these spirits that was when I was 18 years when I started having sex with man. So that was when my life changed. Everything about me changed. Don't longer respect anybody. I like to be on my own. Nobody talks to me anymore. Nobody, if you give me any advice, both of us. We no more talk. I will not talk to you, even though you beg me. I will not even talk to you. Everything about me, my body system, I'm not myself. Like, pain is all over my body. To the extent the pains up to included me to go for tests, and I find out that I have a pain this. And in the pain this, after I went to, to the theater, I almost died, but God saved me. But after that, I still come out for some months. The symptoms started again. The appendix symptoms. Like yesterday, I was still feeling the symptoms of the appendix. I was not myself throughout yesterday. And I was telling myself, it's because of the deliverance that I'm going to encounter today. That's why this is happening to me. But no matter what, I must be here today to encounter my deliverance. Did you know that evil spirits push you to be having sex with men only to give them sicknesses and diseases, cause their career to fail and to destroy their business? Did you know that you were being sent? Not to say no to fornication, to sex. I don't know that it's to destroy their careers and their future. What has been happening to the men you have accepted? Their businesses, their health, their career. But anytime men approach me, in my mind, I would be like, I would say no. But out of me, I would be saying yes. At last, I will end up sleeping with the man. They will be begging me to come back and like, let's be friends. Please let us talk. But I will always bush them. I, don't, I will not like to talk to them anymore. A lot of men will be asking me, what did they do wrong to me? Like. I'll be like, I'm not interested anymore. Just go, let me go. Because I regret what I did. The shame to face them is too much. I can't stand them anymore. So only the person that I know that I'm still with is my boyfriend. The evil spirits, when they push you to have sex with the same person you mentioned now, and right now, his business is not going on well. He's confused. He's yes. addicted to drunkenness. Yes. What do you have to say? He's my boyfriend. He was the 
first guy that slept with me. But since then, he has not been himself. But he, he didn't call it anything. But I've been inviting him here. He refused. His business, his work, doesn't go. All he do is to use his money to play bet. He will use his money and play bet. After he's finished, we start regretting it. And he got drunk. He will buy alcohol, like beer, Henneken for people, his friends, spending money in parties. Though if he's ready to stand as somebody, if he has the money, he will spend it on parties. If you just get that one that he have, he spend it and just waste it. Later, he'll be telling me that he have regrets what he have done. I don't know that it was the spirit in me that was tormenting him. What happened to your your own dad? What kind of sickness killed him? Actually, Did you know that the evil spirits you possessed also claimed that they were the one that pushed him to be committing adultery? And through that means, he contacted HIV AIDS and died. I don't know. I was still nine months when he died. Did you also know that the same evil spirits also led your mom to get married to another man, had seven children, and finally got divorced, and she's suffering with the seven children now? What do you have to say? I thought it was my mom's fault. At the first place, secretly blaming her. She married the first husband who didn't work out. The second one didn't work out. I even said that she's possessed. That it was her fault. The evil spirit claimed that your mother is not possessed. Your mother was always against them because she is called to be a minister of God, to have a ministry called Salvation Ministry. Yes. What do you have to say about that? Yes, my mom may have a ministry. What are the names of your mom? Ogechi, Gillette. Rufus. Where is she now? She's at the state. What is she doing? Like, any business she open, we just go down. She's not doing anything. She just based on me. I used to send money to them. I even don't like sending money to them because I'm doing it because of this, my siblings. Because of her. Because I thought she was the fault. She was everything. She's now you know that she is not the one that caused this trouble. How are you going to be relating to your mom? A relationship with her will be very tight and close like mother and daughter. And what life do you want to start living now? They say they gave you an assignment to always move. That was the way you used to move. And they gave you power around your waist, your chest region and other parts of your body. Anytime people see you, they look at those parts, especially men, and they get themselves seduced by you. What do you have to say about things like this? Anytime you're moving, what do people used to tell you, especially men? Anytime I'm walking, especially when I was in the village, almost all the guys in our village attracted to me. What lives of sin have you been living with them? Fornication. They were always looking for a way to get closer to me. I choose the person that I want. Hates who I want to hate. Did you know that evil spirits in you were the one also making those choices? They were the one telling you, choose this one, choose that one. And they always choose people that are great, cost you to have sexual intercourse with them so that their great future would be destroyed. Did you know? No. no now you me. know. How do you want to start living your life? And what message do you have for young people all around the world? The youths. People that do go to places like markets, people that walk on the street, people that go to universities, secondary schools, or even primary schools and other places just to seduce men or just to seduce women. For them to be careful and clear their minds from all sin and sinful desires and be focused on stop looking at especially ladies. Why did you say especially ladies? Why? Because the monks get through ladies easily than men. How? And why did you say that? Because their mind are soft. They have a soft mind. Amen. Yeah. The evil spirit claimed that while you were in the church, they made you to walk in their own way and also in their own style. And that attracted the attention of one man. 
that looked back and wanted to get your number, yes. but you rejected that. What do you have to say about that? I can remember that was when I was new in here. It was just something like a young guy called me. I passed through the young guy, he called me and said that I should come. I just neglected him, but one part of my mind was telling me, go and see why he was calling me. One part and said, this is church. So, you don't have to stand with man. Whatever you are saying, people will still think negative. So, better be going where you are going. The evil spirit said, immediately he pushed you to seduce that young brother. You came back to your senses and said that this is church. This is not street. Was that what you said? Yes. Say the same thing? I said it. <laughs> I what said, did you say? I said, this is church. This is not streets where you can stand with a man on the road. So no matter what, even though you're not saying anything bad, hence he's not your brother, he's not your dad, people will still think negative. Yes. And the evil spirits said that while you were entering here for prayers, they told you that this is the best time to seduce the man of God, Christopher Oji. But you said, no, you evil spirit, get away. I am tired of this kind of life. I want to be delivered. What do you have to say? Yes. As I was about to come inside, the spirit told me, for my mind, I had a voice that said, Maybe you should go there and see this the man of God. What did they want you to do? How did they want you to do that? I, th I still said that I should just open my shirt, the mm -hmm. front side of my shirt. I said, no, this is the man of God. I fear him the same the first that I set my eyes on him. How do you normally see the minister of God, Christopher Oji? How do you normally see him? I see him as a saint. As a human of God, sin by God. Why did you decide to be seeing Christopher Oja as a saint? A man who is sent by the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Because he's pure. Deeply in my mind, I always know that he is pure. And I always pray to be like him, to be as sinless as he is. What message do you have for people that have negative mindsets? People that believe that the man of God is not pure. He is preaching against sins and sinful desires, but himself is not living a life without sins and sinful desires. What message do you have for them? The message I have for them is for them to think about their own life and give their life to Christ and stop picking on another person's issue. And they should stop laying costs on themselves. Because saying that is adding a very big load on the one they are having already. How do you see the minister of God here? Do you see him as somebody that can be seduced by any woman, <laughs> any lady, or any person? That was the reason I cautioned the spirit that spoke to me, because I know that you can't be seduced. I strongly believe that you are from God. And nothing can change that in my mind. The unclean spirit claimed that they wanted you to be lying and doing all the sinful acts so that at the end of the day you would gather money, go back to your village to have your own provision store. And then they would want you to sell, use that money to buy more makeups, get flashy nails, fix your hairs with various attachments and revons and the like get new dresses and clothes that you would also use to seduce more men because then appearance-wise, you would become more pretty to seduce more men. What do you have to say? <laughs> the money that I've been saving from where I've been working, I've been planning to use it for business, like provision store. At the ending of this year, I will go back to my village, Orodo, Mbitolu. So I will go back and open a store. And after that, I will in Tabak. If the business grew, I would leave it for my mom and go back to my school. So, though I used to think, hey, if I open this business, I would dress cool, I would buy more clothes, buy wigs, fix my nails, buy more makeups and look good. That was all I always think. That if my business then this is what I would be doing, so I would look more beautiful. I only say that in my mind. Did you know that such outward looks and beauty we are only inspired by evil spirits to 
They use that to manipulate the minds of men and get them seduced and forced to commit sexual immorality that would destroy their destinies, their careers, their spiritual lives, and their blessings. Mm. Now that you know, what lessons have you learned? I've learned a lot of lessons. Especially me, I've learned my lesson. I should be careful, especially the way you dress and the way I dress. You should dress decently because the way you dress is the way you'll be approached. Dress decently. The evil spirit said they used to wait for you at the gate. Anytime they end the service, and they wait for you at the gate and repossess you through the spirit of fornication. And they caused you to go back to fornicate with your boyfriend. Yes. What do you have to say? Anytime I come inside this church, I feel happy. I praise God, I pray, I sing. Um, I have peace whenever I'm inside here. But since I'm out, I will just think like nobody is looking at me. Let me just pray for deliverance. I'm always praying for God should help me to make it in life that I can save my mom because I can save my siblings and my mom because they are really suffering in poverty. They don't live in a good house. They don't eat well. That's what I'm always praying for. The unclean spirit said they caused you to be very, very filled with the spirit of anger. You always feel provoked to beat those children that you are taking good care of yes. to death. But sometimes when that anger came upon you, you quickly came back to your senses to say no. Sometimes I do get angry very well. Sometimes I get angry without any, any problem, without any case. I would just be angry. I would be looking for who to fight with. But sometimes there is a way that always is to calm me down. The way you take care of these children is the way you take care of yours. So you should take care of them well. So at yours, you will be taking care of God. So that's the way I don't beat them. Take care of them very well. I make sure I do what they ask me to do to them. Are you aware that the people you are living with have good minds towards you and they're really caring for you and they want the best for you. Yes, yes or no? Yes, imagine the people that are paying me, still buying me clothes, feeding me, buying me everything a woman needs, that still pay me spirit. I don't spend the money that they pay me. They give my mom 10,000 and a bag of rice and some food stores up and they're paying me. The thing that they gave my mom is not the thing that they gave others that were staying with them. I was surprised. So what will your attitude be towards them? Seeing that you were lying before. You were like stealing, you were not telling them the truth, becoming stubborn, full of anger, and not willing to listen to anybody. And whenever people offend you, you become offended forever. You never wanted to forgive people. Now that you've realized that they are really taking good care of you and they don't deserve all these ungodly characters. And no one else in this world would deserve these kind of ungodly characters from you. What will be your attitude from now on? I will change for good. I will be loyal. I will not be easily angered. I will say the truth whenever I commit anything. And they should please forgive me for the ones I've already done to them. Did you pay any money to be prayed for like this? Or did the people you are living with pay any money for you to be prayed for and set free by God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit here at the city of Jesus International Ministry? No, I did not pay any money to be delivered or paid money money to be pretend to be delivered. But the deliverance came from the Holy Ghost, from the Holy Spirit. Who delivered you now? Jesus Christ. Is this deliverance fake? Were you just pretending? Just as if you were manifesting there? Or it was real? If I was pretending, I would know what I was doing. But to me, I was not pretending. I didn't even know what was happening to me. If I can, any moment I try to get myself, I will feel like I'm being blown with air. I mean, it's not pretending. It's the real handwork of God. 
So what message do you have for people that believe that this kind of deliverance and confirmation of deliverance are fake and not true? The message I have for them is for them to come and see for themselves. Because it's like many people have been saying that it's fake, they don't believe. But I think they should come and see for themselves. Let them check whether it's fake or not. What message do you have for all the men you have had sexual intercourse with? Through which evil spirits in you destroyed their destinies, their careers, their health, caused them various sicknesses and diseases. The message I have for them is for them to keep their life and look for any living church like City of Jesus International Ministry. If it can be easy for them to be here, so they can receive their deliverance. Because without receiving their deliverance, their future, their career is terminated. Now, before the deliverance, you had so many challenges. Mention those challenges health-wise. Those challenges you were having and how you are after the deliverance. Before the deliverance, know myself, I'm always feeling pains, even not in my chest, in my head, in my tummy, even the appendix that I that was operated, I was like then, not now. I would feel like my tummy is blowed like balloon and I will not be myself. I can't sleep in the night. I always take drugs, I'm always with drugs, I'm always taking drugs. But now I'm free. I can't feel any pains in my tummy anymore. Like before I can't press my tummy like this. Without, sometimes I used to think like it's fibro, but now I'm okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now check your waist. What were the things you could not do before that you can conveniently do now without pain? I could not bend down before like this and stay for up to three minutes. Me standing up would be like a big job for me to stand up. Well, but now, now I can bend down and stand up freely. Thank As you are standing up now, did you feel any pain? No. Why? Because I've encountered deliverance. Who delivered you once again? The Holy Spirit. All right. Finally, what life are you going to live so you can maintain this kind of deliverance, maintain your salvation, and finally enter into the kingdom of God on the last day? I will live a prayerful life a sinless life and stop desiring for sinful things. I will stop fornication, masturbating, lies, telling, anger. I will try to be using the Holy Spirit to guide myself, not guiding myself by myself. Meaning you are saying that you would want to constantly be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. All right, for you to be under the influence of the Spirit of God, you must study your Bible from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelation. Make sure you have the words of Jesus Christ, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, the New Testament and the rest in your heart. Allow your soul, spirit, body, mind and conscience, your thoughts, your words, your actions and inactions to put those words of God into practice. This will enable you not only to receive the blessings of God, but also to enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. And this is our prayers for you. And we believe by the grace of God, as you play your role, God will also keep his promises for your life both now and forevermore. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for delivering me. So, dear sister, you're welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, kindly introduce yourself and introduce the lady standing beside you. Shalom, church. Shalom, viewers all over the world. My name is DK Favor Choma. I'm from Imo State. And I'm still a student. And the person standing beside me is my mom, my lovely mom. 
Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So we just watched a video clip, a deliverance clip, a moment ago. We'd like to verify. Were you the one in that video? Yes. All right, tell us why you're here today. I'm here to give God all the glory, thanks, honor for delivering me from all these negative spirits. I'm here to thank him. And for this, I will never stop thanking him. I say thank you, Jesus. Can we do something for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? All right, you can begin with your powerful testimony. All this started when my mom gave birth to me and my dad died. I was still tender then. I don't know who my dad is. My mom had a girl and a boy, my brother and I. And then my dad died of HIV, which she left my mom after the divorce. She left my mom to go for an other women, and then she had this sickness, HIV, that was still tender then, before he died. Then I started growing up, which when I, when I was up to like five years, my mom remarried, which she had seven children, and after the seven children, her husband left her again. And she has been suffering since then. then. But before this, that was when I was 18. But I started fornicating, masturbating, lies, telling, spirit of anger. My character changed. Everything about me changed. I don't listen to anybody. I have this stubbornness. If you talk to me, I will not listen to you. Whoever that you are, even my mom, don't listen to her. Whenever she's talking, I neglect her and do whatever I wanted to do. So, me I started doing all these things, my body system changed. Sickness, pains, I can't squat down for, him for some seconds and do like other girls. I'm always feeling pains, I'm not myself. I don't focus on my studies. I'm always thinking negative. I don't think positive, I don't think further. So I've affected my life in so many ways, a lot, and I couldn't even tell. So I decided to go to nursing school after my work. And surprisingly, I had this pains of appendix. And they said that the thing is too much, that I have to go and do it before it will explode in my tummy. So later then, I went for the operation, and after the operation, I almost died. Others that did the operation with me, we are okay, but I will be always shouting in the night, feeling pain, feeling as if there isn't a needle to choke my tummy. But after then, my mommy went to church, and they prayed for me, and I got healed. After that, after some months, I started feeling the same symptoms I used to feel. I feel that the same symptoms, let it not be that I'm complaining too much. I never told my mom because she had spent a lot of money in the other operation. So I just kept silent. I kept it to myself. I never told her. Whenever she's, she asked me, are you okay? How is that your operation doing? I say it's fine. Because I have pity on her, so she don't even have money to feed the children, talking of taking me to hospital again. So I kept it to myself. So I came here at Tinubu. The people that took me in, they wanted me to work for them. Mr. and Mrs. Metso Ennis, they took me in. Then I started working for them. The first place they brought me to this church and I received my first deliverance. I was like, I was a bit okay. I was living a life of fornication, masturbation, stealing lies. Anger, hatred. I do things unexpectedly that I don't like. I'm always pushed to do things that I don't want to do. Sometimes when I'm angry, I shout out people, I curse people around me. 
if you hear my voice, it looks as if a man is talking. Like, I cross, like saying, thunder, idiot, mm, I will call you all sorts of names. You are mad, a lot of things. But I, I used to calm myself down, I don't fight. Because the family I'm in is always a Christian family. They don't tolerate that, but I always calm myself down. So, through that, in my dreams, I always see snakes. I fornicate in my dreams with a particular man. He's you tall and black, yeah. He come with different faces in my dream, and I eat in my dream. I see snakes, I stay with snakes in my dream. I play with them, like, even in physical, I don't like people killing snakes. Because, like, I'm possessed with, I'm, the reason why I don't like people killing snakes is because I'm possessed not knowing that I have python around my waist. This particular snake, python, I always see it as the chief snakes among others in my dream. And whenever I'm around something like bush, like I easily see snakes, even when people are not seeing it. I see it, they show me themselves so easily. And they don't hurt me, even in my dreams not knowing that there was a spirit behind all these things. But truly, to myself, I know that I'm possessed because the spirits always speak to me. I know that it's not my conscience that is speaking, it's a spirit. Spirits always talk to me and I hear the voice, especially whenever I'm alone. That makes me, I don't like staying alone because some, whenever I'm alone, if the spirit talk to me, I'll be like, I'll be like a heavy, a heavy fear. I'll, I'll be sweating. If you meet me, you think I'm doing a size or something like that. But no, because of the spirit is talking to me, like sometimes I talk to myself. If the spirit is talking, I'll be talking back at the spirit. To that extent, until on Sunday, like the spirit will be telling me to do all negative things, chill, lies, masturbate. Go outside, look for a guy that will trust you, you sleep with the guy, like all those times, all those negative ways. I reject them after I received my first deliverance here. I've been abusing it. But I couldn't abuse all this. I can't be myself. I'm always in pains, I'm always crying secretly. I don't want to complain to anybody. Let them feel that I complain too so much. I can't walk in, so I have to keep everything to myself. I was thinking that whenever I get money, I will go for a test, like to check what is wrong with my body system. I have steady headache, stomach pains, leg, waist, neck pain. I'm always having sore throat, always, all the time. A lot of things, even appendix. I never knew that I have fibroid. I never knew about that. And since I started all these lives of sins, I used to sing before very well, but now I cannot sing. Whenever I try to sing, there will be like a force suppressing my voice inside. But if you get to singing worldly songs, I will sing it very well without any stress. But coming to godly songs, I can't. Into my try, I will try and try and try harder. I will write it out, but still, I can't. But since that I received my deliverance in City of Jesus International Ministry, I've been able to sing to the glory of God. My voice is no more suppressing. And since that I received my deliverance, the pains, the headaches, I've not been seeing them again. I can squat down, stand up, do anything that I want to do. No pains. And I thank God for that. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, our sister is testifying of the wonder-working power here at the City of Jesus International 
ministry. After her deliverance, she said all the pains and all the trouble she had faced in the past have been completely eradicated from her life. Can you do something for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I like, would like to take you back a little because we listened to your deliverance. It was such a profound one because the light of God was shining expressly and unveiling and exposing the root cause of not just your problem, your life issues, but also the problem of your entire family. And after the exposition, they were completely destroyed and you were declared free. So during your deliverance, we heard the unclean spirit say several things which we would like to verify from you. We listened to its confession. It identified itself as your spiritual husband, which we believe you have confirmed. We would like you to talk about that again. That gave you lives of sin like seduction. We would like to know where these powers of seduction was put inside you by this spiritual husband. The spiritual husband claimed that he, he placed the spirit of suggestion on my backside and my front side, at my waist and at my front side, my breast. And I never knew about it, but guys always forget themselves in staring at me, always. And at the end of the day, they will find themselves sleeping with me. And I don't know that after that, their life and their future and their finances will be terminated. I never knew about that because I don't go back to them again. So tell us how you go about this seduction. What inspires you to seduce men and how do you go about it? Tell us. Like, I don't know that I do seduce men. I'm always pushed. A voice always told me to pass by. And whenever I pass by, the person will be interested to know me more. And at the end, the person will just end up sleeping with me. So you said interested to know you more. What are their approach to you? What do they do after you have successfully seduced these people? Tell us. Have sex with me. That's it. Also, we listen to your deliverance and the unclean spirit said that it gave you the spirit of anger and that you're currently staying with some people right now and then you have been exhibiting strange characters like anger and lies. Tell us. That no issue. I shout at anybody that come close to me. I curse the person. Like even the person that's seen him, I can talk to you anyhow whenever I'm angry. But the children that are staying with me, the spirit will always push me to beat them. Like, beat them. And the spirit will give them, make them to do something that will make me more angry. And whenever the spirit come up with that, I will always calm myself down. Telling myself, the way these children are taken care of is the way yours will be taken care of. That was a word that the grandma gave me that is keeping me going. The way that I take care of these children is the way that mine will be taken care of. Including lying, I always lie in everything that I do, even though there are many evidence around. Even though someone saw me, I will always look for one at night, and after that, I will always be asking myself, am I the one doing this? And my mind will always tell me, yes, you are the one doing this, so you should stop pretending you are, or you are a liar. It's my mind always beats me up of bad things that I do, and even asks me again to go and do it. I always speak to the spirit as if he's a human being. He's an invisible human being. People that is always near, close to me, I don't know if they noticed it. But to myself, I'm not myself. I'm always talking as if I'm mad. All right, we also listened while the deliverance was going on. The unclean spirit that identified itself as your spiritual husband also said that it stopped your education, that you wanted to study nursing, but it terminated that plan that you made. So what can you say about it? I've already paid for the form. So the nursing form, I've spent up to 5,000 Naira in taking the form, and I filled it. 
after then the operation case came up and the money I was planning to use for the nursing school was spent in the operation. So I couldn't couldn't perform it again. So I have to drop it to look for money first. So the spirits claim that he's the one that brought up the operation that was done. I tell that it was done, but not. Later, I started feeling the same symptoms that I used to feel. All right, tell us about these operations, because we listened to the unclean spirit while it was undergoing spiritual destruction. It said it gave you sicknesses all over your body and also led you into having an operation. Tell us about this operation and whether or not you received a permanent solution to all these problems. I did apprentice operation, but I never knew that it was spiritually. And later after all these, after spending all the money, the symptoms continues. But now I'm okay. I don't feel more pains. My body, but then I was feeling pains all over my body. All my body was scattered. I'm not myself. I, sometimes I used to ask myself, this way I feel, is it how other people feel? Because people walk freely, I don't walk freely. Is it the way that girls of my age mates feel? Like, I don't feel myself. I'm like somebody that is, that is scattered and turned upside down. Everywhere there will be pains. I can't stay. I have not stayed for one day without feeling pains all over my body. But I kept it to myself. But it's not for the glory of God and for the city of Jesus Christ International Ministry. I don't know where I could have been today, but for his grace, I'm alive today and I've received my healing and I'm free in Jesus' name. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, truly who the Son of God sets free is free completely, indeed, totally. And we give God all the glory. Yes, we listen to your deliverance. The unclean spirit said it puts python in your waist, which you attributed to be the reason why you could not do some basic things at home. That means it affected your squatting and bending. So what can you say about that? And the changes afterwards. Before, I couldn't squat down or bend down and stay for some seconds. I'm always standing up. Even when I'm sweeping, you'll be thinking that I'm lazy. But because of if I bend down very well, it will be very hard for me. I will need help to stand up. But now, I'm okay. I can squat down. I can squat down. I can bend like this. And this is what I cannot do before. I can do like this. I can shake my body without pains. I'm okay. I'm a free human being. I've experienced healing. I never knew that a human being can be like this as free as I am today. Thank you, Jesus. We can do better than that for Jesus. So learning about your experience here at the City of Jesus International Ministry, yes, while you were explaining and telling us about your deliverance and healing, you made mention of your first deliverance. That means your first, your first encounter with the Spirit of God that exposed the root cause of all the problems that you faced. So I'd like to know your first experience here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. My first experience is that I came inside the church for my first time and I felt fire. I felt the Holy Spirit surrounding me. And after then, we went to the mountain After that, we went to the mountain, and the man of God declared me free. That was my first experience. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we'd like to know, in that first experience, 
Who was praying for you at the time when you felt the power of God, the fire of God all around you? The man of God, Christopher. The woman of God, Evangelist Joy. Evangelist Joy. Imagine he came close to me. I felt fire in my heart. Then before then, he came to me. The spirit in me that was talking to me through my mind was talking, was begging me not to expose, expose them. Because the spirit talks to me. The spirit was telling me that if I say this, that I will be ashamed. People, people that like me will hate me, telling me that if I do this, people will be looking at me somehow like a spoiled girl, that I should keep this to myself and die in silence. But I said no, that I'm tired of this life that I'm living. I prayed and asked God to locate me, and he located me. And Mary Sister Joy came close to me. Evangelist Joy came close to me. I felt fire in my heart. I felt in another dimension. I wasn't myself. That was all I can remember by for then. Then after that, we went to the mountain. Then after they finished praying for me, one of God asked me to go and confess my sins, which I did. Which I did. And I confess my sin as a fornicator, masturbator, liar, anger, hatred, and stealing, and spirit of seduction, which I did. Then after that, they conducted deliverance on me, and I'm now free. I never knew what happened to me, if, if not what I just saw now on TV and the one I've been watching on YouTube. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, truly the man of God, Christopher Orgy, was saying that salvation means to be set free from sin and sinful desires, as well as the consequences of sin and sinful desires. The Lord Jesus said that I have come to seek and to save them which are lost. Lost where? Lost in sin and sinful desires. Our sister was one time being oppressed by an unclean spirit that identified itself as the spiritual husband that tormented her life and gave her life of sin. As the man of God, Christopher Audrey, would say, that before Satan attacks your life, he will first of all give you a life of sin. That is the open door through which Satan and all the evil spirits who enter in and possess that human being. So the unclean spirit that identified itself as a spiritual husband gave her lust, seduction, masturbation, anger, lies, and the like. And through that means, it possessed and continued possessing her until the day God Almighty set for her deliverance. She came to the City of Jesus International Ministry and received prayers from God's choice servant, the man of God, Christopher Orji, and she was declared free. If you believe you have received your own freedom, your own deliverance, your own sanctification, do something for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, during your deliverance, because we understand that Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that is his agenda. And he should. So we believe he, has, he had its base in your life. But also was extending its reach to your family members. As the unclean spirit confessed. That it also affected your family members. Your dad. Your siblings. And also your mom. So starting with your dad, we'd like to know how these unclean spirits also possessed and destroyed his life just before you were delivered. Tell us. My biological dad died when I was nine months. I was still tender then. Then after then, my biological dad 
left my mom and they divorced. They took her home. And later then, he contacted this disease, HIV, and died of it. Then later then, I started going up, me and my brother. Tio, my mom remarried. And then, after seven children, the husband left her for another woman. And accuse her of a lot of, of sleeping with another man. Why she never did that? So, my mom had a ministry, and the ministry is called Salvation Ministry, which she has been growing up since I can remember when I was a child. When the ministry goes up, it falls down. It goes up, it falls down. Every time, and they're using people to gossip around that she's fake, that she's using marine powers. Why the spirits confirm that this ministry is real? While it's a real ministry, she's always begging God to build up her ministry, but not. Whenever the ministry tries to stand up, it falls down again. So, my brother. He don't know me, he doesn't call me, he don't care. But I'm his only sister. He don't care anymore. Whenever I call, I call him, he'll be in my line. He's in school. Even when he enters school, I don't know. When he did anything, everything that he did, I don't know. The spring the priest claims that he gave him spiritual wife. And makes him to sleep with the girls and dumb them that he hate girls. And the spiritual ice cream that she's jealous that she can kill. I never knew about this. I thought it was ordinary. I thought he was doing it intentionally until my deliverance. Can we do something for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> she said she never knew that those lives of sin and sinful desires that were being lived by her own brother was as a result of the unclean spirit that was once living inside of her. What are you doing? How are you living your life? The things that you do, are they inspired by the Holy Spirit? Or are they inspired by unclean spirits? Which life are you living that you think is normal? Examine it in the light of God's word and check to see if truly you are led by the Spirit of God. Remember the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Righteousness is one of it. So any life you're living outside the jurisdiction of God's righteousness, it means that you're under the influence of unclean spirits. So for those who are living such kind of lifestyle, of sin and sinful desires, and they think it is normal, and many people may misinterpret it to be them doing it intentionally. What do you have to say to them, sister? I want to tell them that any negative things you're doing in this life, no matter how small it is, is not ordinary. Some people call all these things is a natural something that used to happen to people. It's must, but it's not. There is a spirit behind it. I advise you, whoever that is watching me, that is going through this kind of thing that I'm going through, I advise you to seek the hands of the Lord. You should come to a church like the ministry like this, City of Jesus International Ministry, where all good things come from God. I advise you to seek solutions for your problem. Is not ordinary before it destroys your life. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You're hearing it directly from them explaining what God Almighty has done. She's advising you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and stay away from sin and sinful desires. Yes, her mother is here with us. We'd like to hear one or two things from her just before we 
conclude this powerful testimony. So she's here and she has one or two things to confirm about her daughter's lifestyle, the lives of seeing she lived if she was ever aware of it. So glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Madam, you are welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Juliet Janet Rufus. Hallelujah. I am from Imo State. And I have a, have a ministry. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You have been listening to this powerful testimony that your dear daughter has been sharing here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. And we believe you also watched her deliverance clip. So what can you say about this powerful deliverance that was conducted on your daughter that made her completely free as she's standing here today? What can you say? I just want to glorify this God. He is wonderful. He has done a lot of something for me. He's very, very marvelous. Because with what I have been noticing from this girl, he's my lovely daughter, and she's the one I love so much. So I noticed from the beginning, before I gave birth to her, this gear, God gave this gear to me as a God sent. In my dream, an angel brought this gear. Before you know it, I was conceived and gave birth to her. Hallelujah. Then another thing is that at the age of from five, six years, I noticed, uh, I start noticing that she's changing. And God told me in my revelation, be careful with that girl. She is a destiny. And I start seeing in her that she will walk, she has the same call I have. Hallelujah. But the same points I want to make there now. When I was doing this ministry and all I had gone through in life, really, to be sincere, to be specific, I have passed through a lot of hell. But today, I have seen it as a heaven. Hallelujah. Then, as I was handling people in my ministry, then I discovered that one day I was in my revelation. I saw a kingdom, marine kingdom people, and they were very far away from me. They were Asking me, one of them were showing me the weight of the whole world. Say, if I can abandon God and leave God not to walk with his name, that I come to them and walk with them, that they will give me all the weight of the whole world. I rebuke them. So I say, I cannot do that. So it seems that hence I can't do it. Do it. They will start tormenting and scattering things around me. Hallelujah. When I woke up, even though they mock me in that dream, you say that you are serving God, look at your condition, look at pains and afflictions here and there, look at your husband abandoning you, nothing is moving well for you. They start pointing at things that when they say it, it will pain me. For me to, for with that reason, I will agree with them. But because I was brought in a Christian home since I was born, I have never had time, I have not seen my parents going to native doctor or messing themselves up. In that way. But with that, that fear of God is in me. And I believe that God of Almighty will continue keeping me. So, at last, I noticed this, my daughter, she really tormented me with her character. But when I look at her as somebody I love so much, among all my children, I gave it to, I loved her so much. And why must this come from her? So all I could is this. After everything and everything, that the Metu and her, she always have luck. People always like her. Wherever she will go, they will say, Choma, Choma. People will come back home with her. People continue liking her. Then, all I did is this. And people come to ask me to give them, give her to them so that she will be staying with them. 
So they notice one pilot for, with her that whenever she stays in a place, there will be a good luck. Whether at the market or wherever, there is something will be happening. Something will be happening with that. They like dressing her to come and stay with her. Oh, in my heart, I know that something is wrong with her. Hallelujah. When Daddy Matthew say that, we the wife say that they want her to stay with her. Though before they say it, I have not known them. I have not seen them with my eyes. Three, three, three weeks or, one, or two weeks after, before then, I was in my revelation. I saw this daddy. I have not seen her in person. This daddy met you. I saw, he said that he's coming to my house as a helper. I had that revelation. He said he wants to take one of my child to go and, and help, something like that. I woke up in that revelation. I said, who is this man that just came and said this? Is it the spirit of God or is he a human being? I was just thinking about it and be calculating over the issues. Within two weeks and they say, my daughter went somewhere to help somebody. Then the person said that he wanted to take her. So I refused. The reason why I refused for the first time, I start doing them somehow is because what is in that gear, they cannot carry it. Well, just because of time and for clarity purposes, we give God all the glory. Yes, you have been calling someone by his name. We'd like you to would like to know who the person is. Is the person the family that your daughter is currently staying with that she talked about? Come again. Yes. All right. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And yes, he's here also joining together with you to share in this beautiful celebration of your wonderful testimony. And just because of time, we'd like you to throw light on the matter on ground. Your daughter was delivered from several unclean spirits that tormented her in form of anger, lust, seduction, fornication. We'd like to know what did you notice in the life of your daughter? Did you notice these evil characters? And what did you do to profess solution? Thank you very much. I did all I could. But one thing they did between me and her, if I want to bring her close to handle her for deliverance, as I used to do to others, she will never allow it. She will never like to come closer to me. If I open, wake her up early in the morning to advise her, she will not listen to me. There is nothing I have not tried to do. All I was just praying after I have tried to deliver her or to take her to a place where they will deliver her if she cannot accept my own. All I noticed that she continued, the, the, stubborn, the stubbornness continued growing high. Then I tried all my possible best to do all I could do, but anything about me, he don't like it again. So how do you feel today seeing your daughter delivered, set free by God Almighty, the God of the City of Jesus International Mission? How do you feel seeing your daughter set free by the God of the City of Jesus International Ministry today? Hallelujah. When... She called me on phone and told me what happened. I was very happy because I'm looking for the one to do it. So I, I'm really appreciating the name of the Lord. I'm very happy that she is not delivered because even I came to daddy's Metu's family now, I look at her and watch that there is light. So I want to appreciate this God who has done this for me. May his name alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can do better than that for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, just quickly, we would also like to verify something. The unclean spirit that was once living in her made mention that you own a ministry. Tell us about this ministry. And it also said that things have not been going well in this ministry. That there, there has been ops and downs, that the unclean spirit that identified itself as a spiritual husband has been the cause of all of it, destroying your ministry. So tell us a little bit about this ministry. Are things moving forward? Hallelujah. Truly, truly, I I'm, have been suffering because in my ministry will rise up today. 
Tomorrow there will be a certain rumor all over the place. I am fake. I am this. So people, few people that can come will still receive instant miracle and changes. But they will go and poison the heart of people that that woman used to do ministry with something. That how can he do this? It manifests to this extent. That that thing is not the power of God. The rumor will be all over. So it will make the ministry to fall. Later he will rise again. I even let her abandon the ministry and went back to business. The business couldn't move. All I lay my hand on does not move. But there was something that made me not to understand that this is a real deliverance from God. Hallelujah. Then when they are conducting deliverance on her, she called me and told me, look at what that, that have happened in her life. One of my son dreamed and noticed a biton. Wanted to step into my ministry. That my son killed that biton and scattered the biton. In the belly of that biton, he discovered a passport of this young girl. That was the dream after the deliverance. So I was, they were doing that dream. I was in my house noticing everything. It seems that they are restoring all my lost things in the dream. I noticed it. And I told her this is a perfect and a normal deliverance. So this is all I experienced by that. If you heard and understood what she said, do something beautifully for our Lord Jesus. She said, after the deliverance, she received a call from her lovely daughter who told her that she has been delivered. And then there was a dream that showed that that python, remember during her deliverance that the unclean spirit identified itself as what? The python. Now, seeing that python in a vision or trance, that that python wanted to enter into her own ministry. But by the spirit of grace and truth, that python was killed and completely destroyed. And as if that was not enough, the passport photograph of this our dear sister who was delivered was also found in the belly of that python. What do you make out of this? <clears throat> deliverance is necessary. Tell someone, deliverance is important. You're watching right now and you are facing a similar problem that they faced in the past. What should you do? Are you connecting by faith to this wonderful testimony? Also placing a demand that that anointing that broke the yoke of hardship, poverty, and the like in this family will also locate you. If you believe that anointing has located you already. <clears throat> Glory to God. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Having witnessed all of this here at the City of Jesus International Ministry, what can you say about the power, the grace, and the anointing of God upon the life of our dear man of God, the man of God, priest of our orgy? Hallelujah. I just want to thank God first. Who has allowed this to happen? Who has allowed this deliverance? He used someone here as an instrument. I may call the man of God first, but the person that made it to be very, to, to happen is this daddy, me too, and the family. Because had he been at the daughter, my daughter did not come to them. He may die with this. He may die with this. So, and again, I want to appreciate the pastor and the workers of this ministry. And the man of God, Christova, uh, Oji, wherever you are, may the Lord bless you and keep you long. And may your ministry continue growing in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 So, I would like to know what do you believe God Almighty has also done in your ministry? Because for several years you've been facing challenges, even after you were called by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit into the ministry. 
but you were facing several challenges that were exposed here at the City of Jesus International Ministry through the power of deliverance. And your daughter was delivered. And those unclean spirits behind the cause of setback in your ministry were captured completely and destroyed. So now what do you believe God Almighty has done for you as a minister of God and in your ministry? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When it happens that my husband abandoned me with seven kids, he has done a lot for me because after the deliverance, I noticed that boys always rush into my ministry. People always come. Even at, we were in night prayer for a few days before they called me to come and witness this. So what I'm seeing there right now is a light. And I believe that God will provide me where I was for a permanent site because I used to do it right in my house. What I'm seeing there now is a light. I know that hence that light has started, nothing will quench it in Jesus' name. All right, just briefly give you a word of advice to people who are watching you right now, who are sharing, connecting by faith to this powerful testimony. We would like you to give your word of advice and encouragement to families and viewers all around the world listening to you right now. Hallelujah. My advice to people who has been passing through one thing or the other, something like this, or something exactly like this, or in another form. My advice to you is that you don't need to die in silence. You don't need to hide things. For the first time, I wanted to hide this because she, she's a woman. Then let me not to go along and exposing her because she's going to get married. But looking at her dying with that condition, it's of no use. The best thing you can do is for look for Jesus Christ. Meet him to meet up. When you meet him, you meet up. And Bible says, upon Mount Zion, there, is a, there will be a deliverance. Hallelujah. This could be the, the King Hosea of this time that wanted to kill this girl. Hallelujah. But when the King Hosea died, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord. So you need to expose some things to your pastor and let him know on how to do it. You don't need to go and hide it and be telling people and be hiding it. What, people, what will the people say if they hear it? This is a disgraceful matter or whatever. Don't put it in that, in that way. Because if you hide it, a closed mouth is a closed destiny. If you hide it, it may, it may terminate your life or scatter everything good about you. Hallelujah. So my advice is this. Always remain faithful in the Lord. Always be in, with him. And keep yourself away from things that will defile you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we give thanks to God Almighty for this powerful and wonderful word of advice. Viewers all around the world, we believe you are learning a lot. She said, don't, don't cover your problems. Remember the scripture that says, he that covers his sin will not prosper. She said, instead, you should expose those problems to the light of God's word. And we are sure that the light of God Almighty will not just expose but completely set you and the members of your family, family, clan, and continent free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so in just a few words, we'd like to hear from our Father who is here, who this wonderful sister who was delivered by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit here at the City of Jesus International Ministry is currently staying with. We believe he has something to say about her life and wonderful testimony today. So we'll be listening to our Father. First of all, we'd like to welcome you once again to the City of Jesus International Ministry. 
in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Shalom. My name is Ernest Metu. I'm from Imo State and I'm living here in Enugu. I'm a businessman. Okay. This is the mother of the child that I was employed to look after my grandchildren as nanny. And this is the girl herself, trauma. I want to use this opportunity to thank God. Because you, you heard from the lady that she refuses this girl to come to me. Because she is afraid of what she knows privately in her child. That nobody will handle it or less she will be exposed because she is a lady that may marry in future. So you don't want anybody to explain. This is what is problem to a lot of people. Secrecy. I call a lot of people Nicodemus Christians. They only go on the night. They don't want to go to the light. And when you don't go to the light, you will not see. When this girl came to me, under three weeks, this woman called me that his one child's child back. I asked her why. Why must you, somebody that has come to me, under three weeks, one child back. He said there's one, his um, brother wants him. He wants to see him. I said, what type of brother? He's one of the old. He said he does not see him. He's, he's not happy. I told her. I confronted her. So this guy is just like somebody who went to oversee. And he wants her to come back to Rodo. A dark place where you continue to suffer. So does it mean that you people don't want to, where you people will be exposed and, do, and see light? So after that, she agreed we stay. And uh, you see, there's an advice I want to give before. When you want to marry, how does it mean that this type of place, we don't have this type of mission? this condition, or this type of city of Jesus Christ international ministry. And I, I text the person of this character to my children, grandchildren. Don't you know that a lot of things could have happened? My family could have scattered. But uh, because of what we are under in this ministry, I'm not afraid. Whoever that comes from me, one day, if you are not located today, if you are not arrested today, Anola Tateshi Bunta, Otindi Boshi Kuya, praise the Lord. When, when hunters enter into the bush, if they miss the, the animal today, they tell him it has not ended. Tomorrow, there will be another hunting days. So that is it. When you want to marry anybody now, before, before, during the olden days, if anybody wants to marry, they will go and ask. Some even go essence of going to fortune tellers to know the type of person they are going to marry. If there is some uh, uh, causes, generational cause in the house, maybe a madness or something like that. That is how the olden days, they do it. But in our own time, they don't do it again because of we are Christians. We are Christians, but... Many of them don't even follow Christianity to the core. We are Christians. But God has, in his infinite mercy, bring this type of ministry for us. But a lot of people don't want to recognize it. A lot of people have been longing to see this type of man, Christopher of Origin. They live as a Christian and die, they do not see this type of days. A lot of people have been... Longing to see this type of deliverance, prophecy, healing. At their own time, they did not see it. But look at the opportunity we are opportuned to see this type of ministry. This type of man of God, Christopher J. You know, I miss. But a lot of people don't even want to know. Come. Instead, they live in secrecy. Like the mother said, this lady could have died under this condition, influence. If she's not come to this type of place, we thank God for that. So what my advice is, before you get married, not only when you see somebody that fix nails, or you wear hair scale, they do like this, like this. You go and carry it. 
You will carry a problem, spiritual wife or spiritual husband. You have seen in Igbo land before you get married. You will go the first day, second day with cola, with a wine, before you reach a wine carry. That is the, the one everybody will be invited. It is a difficult something to get married in the physical in Igbo land. But look at all these spiritual wives. Only sex, she have married you or he have married you. Only anger, you have been his husband. He will be worrying you. Only something, somebody dies you. She have married you. You not pay anything. But before you marry in the physical, you have to suffer before you get somebody. Uh, same thing applicable. If you want to go and carry somebody to help you, house to help. A lot of people have, is under this influence. Many have lost their children because of this person they employed. They will not even know that the spirit killed their children or sickness every day. They will not know. I did bring this girl. I did not bring her to this place. Or uh, if I'm going to church, I leave them. Uh, they are my mess. They are this. I leave them in the house and go to church and dance and go. But all the entire family is committed. Even my mother-in-law is here. Even my sister-in-law is here. Even my in-law, those that married my, yeah. Even my wife, my uh, daughter, uh, my son that married a Mongolian, a uh, Japanese, they all have come here when they come. They will go, come and go. So I don't hide the Christianity myself. Christianity is not something you hide for yourself. Expose it so that people will be free because there's a lot of people. My brothers, you have seen what is happening. The spirituality of this world, the deep things of this world, something we don't know before. But with this type of ministry, they have all exposed. So we thank God so much for giving us this type of ministry. So my advice is, if you want, it's, if it's his wife, make sure it comes to deliverance. If you are bringing a maid to take care of your children, make sure there is deliverance. Here is just a, 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 a hospital. A, a hospital that God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit are the chief medical directors. If you are not... <laughs> like when you go to hospital, if the doctor sees your sickness... If it is too much for him, he will send you where you will be diagnosed at the laboratory. This medicine, this hospital, great hospital of God, has a laboratory. You may call it in the way people understand a, a, a mountain. We call it mountain. When you read mountain, you will be diagnosed. Whatever sickness that is due. What we are, what we are saying is practical. It's practical, as it is in the world, in the, in the physical. So it is in the spiritual. We have a spiritual laboratory here. We call it a mountain. Go there. <coughs> Your sickness must be diagnosed. That, holy, that spirit must be yeah. At times, praise the Lord. I do watch a man of God when he's doing diagnosis. He asks you, who are you? Who are you? He want to know the type of secret this person that is causing this. Like in the lab, the, the, the laboratory will put it into lab and test it with him. But here, practically, who are you? What have you done to him? What is it you do? Go out with your sickness. That is what is happening here. It is practical. Christianity is practical. There's no two ways about it. If you believe, you see. I thank God for a lot of people, my brethren, who have seen this road. I'm a nose of the wara wara man and so ya. Wara wara nose anywhere I got it so ya. So be ya. I'm a nose of the wara wara. I'm a nose so ya. Wara wara nose anywhere I got it so ya. We know that this road is narrow and is there in the Bible. They say that only few people understand what is in the end of this narrow road and they are following it. 
Other people want that uh, 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 wild one. Where they will do clubbing. Where they will do drink. Uh, club and do a lot of things. Eating where people will see them. They use their decision. But here, we know what is here. We know what we see here. Not everybody will see it. But those who, see, who saw it and follow it, praise be to God on their behalf. In Jesus' name. Let's put our hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You can see the joy in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is what? Are you joyful? If you are joyful, say shalom. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ is what we enjoy here at the City of Jesus International Ministry. And out of the superfluity of the grace of God, these family, this family is standing here today giving glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit for what God Almighty has done in the life of this wonderful sister standing here today. So just to bring this wonderful testimony to a conclusion, we'd like to hear again from this wonderful sister, her words to viewers watch right now, because she went through really a perilous time in the hands and in the jurisdiction of Satan. But now through the power of deliverance, she was delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's love son, the kingdom of light where everything is exposed. You know, the Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. So all the darkness in her life has been exposed, and now she is a new creation. So I would like to know, how do you feel seeing what God Almighty has done for you? How do you feel today sharing your beautiful testimony with the changes God Almighty has given to you? I feel very, very happy. My happiness is overdose. I feel a lot happy and okay. There is a lot of changes about me. I don't talk to people harshly anymore. I shout at people before, but now I talk to people calmly. I don't lie again. I say the truth. I am free and okay. Okay, our daddy also has something to say about the changes that he has witnessed in the life of this wonderful sister. So, sir, go ahead. Shalom. <clears throat> this thing she's saying, you know, since we are living with a both Python, both spirit children, we don't know. But you people know my son, Tochuku, and wife, who is now at London, UK. They brought a, a child for us, the other, is it about three or four weeks ago, they, uh, uh, to us. She is taking care of her. So that girl, that's a, an experience we got from her, the, since she came back from UK. One night, she cried all over the night. We said, what is all this? Is it heat? They took the light. We put AC for her. She is crying, crying. In the morning, she started to cry. It doesn't eat again. Then we thought maybe it's a change of this thing. So I and my wife will go to our business. We were in their business. They phoned us that the girl is still crying. The old, and uh, nothing like this. All his body is hot. So my wife rushed back and took her to hospital. After diagnosis, I did not see anything. She still cried until she come back from the hospital. Before this uh, deliverance take place. But after this deliverance, the girl doesn't cry again. She eats everything. She lives very normal. So it is now that I know that maybe the python the girl says she do see Maybe it's the same thing the girl see because a little girl is a spirit. 
as well. Maybe when she sees that python, she is frightened. Because another people doesn't see it, but she saw it. Maybe it is the thing that frightened the girl. When I thank God, the deliverance has everything is no more. Glory be to God. <laughs> We can do better than that for this wonderful working power of God. All right, even her mother is saying that she has also noticed some changes in the life of this wonderful sister. So we're going to listen to her right now. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Since I have known her, all the kids that I, that I gave birth to, she knows them. I discovered her as a friend to children. She treated all my kids well. In my life, I have not seen her having kids. Kids are always her friend. So, but in all, in conclusion, all I want to say there is this: the deliverance has been handled. And glory to Almighty God. Even if the deliverance was not handled, I don't think that any of those kids will be harmed. Because he has been taking, wherever kiss is, he always used to be there. So, may the name of the Lord be glorified in all. I am happy testifying this in the praise of God's congregation. His name alone is to be worshipped and glorified in the name of Jesus. That you are the one who experienced all these things. At some point, you were even seeing physical snakes. And the unclean spirit said there was a python in your waist tormenting you. And you couldn't do certain things. Can you display those things you can now do as a result of the power of deliverance, the freedom that you have now received? Can you exercise yourself? Tell us what you could not do and what you can now do. Before, I couldn't squat down like this and stay for some seconds. But now, I can do it. Before, I couldn't bend down like this. Even while I'm sweeping, even while I'm sweeping, I don't bend down. I always make use of long brooms so that it will not affect my, affect my waist. But now, I can bend down normally and sweep like a young girl. I'm free in Jesus' name. So what about your dreams? Do you still see that spiritual husband come to you to have sexual relation with you in your dream? Do you still see those snakes in your dream, spiritually and physically? Do you still have the spirit of anger, seduction, lusting after people? Can you tell us, do you still have all of these things? No. The day after my deliverance, I had a dream. And in the dream, I went into an ocean with my senior brother. And we dropped, there was a snake that was following me, and the other one was following my brother, and we left those both snakes inside that ocean, and we went out. And both of them were busy fighting, killing themselves. I told my brother, let's go, leave them. If you heard what she said, you can amplify your thanksgiving. And we're using this as point of contact to declare that everything contrary to God in our lives, all of them have been completely destroyed. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Glory to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God. We thank God Almighty for your life. So what word of advice do you have for youths like you who find pleasure in sin and sinful desires? Many of them do not understand the spirituality of life, that life is actually spiritual. They may even think it's their own mind, because you also said that at some point you were hearing voices. And yes, we'd like to know if you still hear those voices, give your word of encouragement to them. What can you say to them? Many of them are seeking solution where they should not be seeking solution. Many of them are doing things to prefer solution to those problems and to no affair. So if he was watching you right now, how can you encourage the youths, the teenagers, the old and the young about the power of deliverance 
that you have experienced. I don't hear those voices that I used to hear before. My mind is clear. I'm a free human being. And the encouragement I have for my age mates, especially at my age and above and down, the encouragement I have for you is that if a person through this kind of thing, just know that it's not in nature or something. It's, there is a spirit behind all this. Come out, don't be shy, confess your sins, be heartbroken, tell God that you're tired of it because it's not a nice life to live. It's a very positive life for a girl and, age me, and my age mate to live. It's not a good thing. But if you're passing through all these things, come to God. Draw yourself closer. And while confessing your sin, don't think of going back. Always move further. Shalom. You can do better than that for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And yes, during your deliverance, we listened to that powerful deliverance where that unclean spirit was saying several things. And one of the things it said was that it stopped you from singing. It destroyed your voice. Would like to know the changes now to the glory of God. People are watching to know if truly God Almighty has perfected all that concern you. Can you sing a song to the glory of God? Amazing God, amazing God, though you always come true for me. Amazing God, amazing God, amazing God, though you always come true for me. Amazing Was that a beautiful rendition? If you loved it and you love what God Almighty has done, do something for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, truly, this, our God, is an amazing God. Only an amazing God can do all what we are seeing right now. Yes. We believe you are plugged into this wonderful testimony and you are next in line for yours in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the man of God, Christopher Orgy, rejoices with you. He thanks God for your life and also celebrates with you. And we are privileged to be sent by him to encourage you to continue your celebration in holiness by continuing a life without sin and sinful desires. So remember where God Almighty has picked you out from, the miry clay of sin. And remember now where you are now standing. So continue to make God's word the pillar and foundation of your life. The Bible tells us that to the one whom you yield your member to, to obey, to that one, you are a servant or slave. Whether to sin leading to death or to righteousness leading to eternal life. So we encourage you to continue to present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For that is your true act of worship. And also ensure that you pay attention to God's word. Do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The man of God, Christopher Orgy, has also sent us to encourage you to meditate, contemplate on Deuteronomy chapter number 28 from verses 1 to the end. And as you continue to obey God in spirit and in truth, we are seeing you come back here 
for more glorious testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry. Are you a church member and a YouTube viewer having trouble connecting to our YouTube channel on your smart TV? Well, worry no more. In this video, we will show you how to connect your YouTube account from your phone to your smart TV, so you can easily watch our YouTube program. First, ensure that your smart TV is compatible with YouTube. Most modern smart TVs already have a YouTube app pre-installed. However, if you can't find the app, check your TV's App Store or Play Store depending on the type of smartphone you're using or consult the TV's manual for assistance. Next, make sure you're signed into your YouTube account on your phone. Open the YouTube app and sign in using your Google account credentials. Now, we need to pair your phone and smart TV. Open the YouTube app on your phone, tap on your profile picture, and select the settings option. From the settings menu, choose watch on TV or connected TVs, depending on your device. Then tap on the enter TV code option. On your smart TV, launch the YouTube app. Navigate to the settings or connect section to find the option to pair your device. Follow the on-screen instructions on your TV to enter the code displayed on your phone. Once you've entered the code, your phone and smart TV should be successfully paired. You'll receive a confirmation message on your TV and phone. That's it. You can now enjoy Christopher Orgy Ministries on your smart TV. Open the YouTube app on your phone, select our channel, and start watching our program on the big screen. Congratulations! You've learned how to connect your YouTube account from your phone to your smart TV granting you easy access to Christopher Orgy Ministries on the big screen. Thank you for watching and joining us on this journey. Stay tuned for more inspiring content from Christopher Orgy Ministries. Shalom. Viewers all over the world, the City of Jesus International Ministry is delighted to provide guidance on the process of partnership with the ministry. Follow these steps to get started. Step 1. Launch your preferred browser, such as Google Chrome and the like. Website address of the City of Jesus International Ministry at www.cogym.org Step 3. Navigate to the Partnership page. Step 4. Thoroughly review the instructions provided on the partnership page. Step 5. Scroll down and click on Make Donation. Step 6. You'll be redirected to the donation page of the City of Jesus International Ministry. Step 7. Various donation platforms including Global Pay, Bank Donations, and Paystack will be displayed. Step 8. Choose your preferred donation platform. For this demonstration, we'll select Global Pay. Step 9. Complete your details, then click Donate Now. This action will lead you to the final stage where you'll input your card details and click Pay USD. Step 10. Capture a screenshot of your donation as proof for registration purposes. Step 11. Upon returning to the City of Jesus International Ministries webpage, close the donation gateway. Step 12. Provide accurate details. Upload the proof of donation by selecting the Save Screenshot. 
Ensure the file size is in kilobytes, not megabytes. Step 13. Scroll up and select a passport photograph. Choose any picture from your device, ensuring the file size is in kilobytes. Step 14. Indicate your marital status by selecting either married or single. Step 15. Double check all entered information before submitting. Step 16. Upon submission, wait for 24 to 48 hours for approval from the City of Jesus International Ministry. Then proceed to the Partner Login page, where you can log in using your email address and password. God bless you and your family forever in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom. Hey, Co. Jim, just wanted to give a, a brief testimony. Something that I've noticed is that the man of God was giving this message about the ancient root of poverty, probably about three months ago or so. And I was watching this and kind of realizing that for myself, oftentimes I have wanted to give in the past. I've been a Christian for probably about 15 to 20 years. Um, and I gave significantly um, certain times when I was younger, but um, at certain times, I guess I would say that I became disheartened. Um, sometimes I'd see how the church is maybe using the funds or this missions group that I was giving to. And I would just, you know, assume that... Uh, it just didn't seem like it was something that I wanted to give to anymore. It seems like there was maybe mismanagement on the way that I was perceiving it. So after watching the man of God, Christopher Orgy, um, delivering somebody and the um, person, the demon that was talking about why they cause poverty um, because people aren't uh, freely giving from their heart, I suddenly was starting to realize that I had been listening to those same voices um, in my heart and my wife had been faithfully giving, but for myself, I was holding back and, um, you know, paying off debts, um, those types of things. And I have a really decent job as a manager. I'm a sales manager, um, for a large company, um, called sleep country in Canada. And, uh, I was just noticing, even though I'm doing really well, um, there's definitely been an increase in how I've noticed us giving for the last three months specifically and consistently that there has been a real boost in sales as well as just noticing that customers would cancel um, oftentimes and I would always feel like I'm being stolen from or I'm just it's like the circumstances or something just isn't quite right so I noticed that after giving significantly and expecting God, um, there was a um, specific phrase that I believe the man of God was talking about where when you're giving, you're giving to God and God would, oh, I remember this demon was talking about how when people are giving, they should give to God so that God can give it back to them and they can abundantly keep giving more. That's the whole purpose is that we give so that God can give back to us and we can keep giving more and more in an increased way. And so just me psychologically, just thinking about how the kingdom of God operates that way was really inspiring because I want to be able to give to the kingdom and I want to be able to, to be faithful in that way. And, and the man of God was just talking about how uh, in Malachi, just um, like talking about how we're stealing from him um, and how... In terms of ministries, there's lots of ministers that are not really receiving what they should be. And that's something that I was also feeling conviction about is that I used to also be in ministry for a short period of time, two or three years as a missionary. Um, and I just, I felt almost just like I wasn't even being provided for. So it's almost the same thing that I was doing uh, that I was uh, not receiving. I end up doing to others. And so I I wanted to break that and as well as be able to be generous in my heart and just let that part of my heart flow that had been stopped up. Ever since then, I feel like I've noticed a change in terms of sales. Um, it's been a significant increase. Um, and uh, each year I typically win an award at my company. Um, and so this year I won the one of the runner up awards um, that just happened. Um, I was uh, third um, out of the company uh, in our region of about 22 associates. And so I just wanted to give a testimony about that as well, that um, the year before that, I was the runner up uh, for this award. And the year before that, I was the um, winner of the entire um, uh, province. And so I had received that after going to um, Greece. And I just noticed that there was a really massive uh, increase as in terms of favor on my life. <clears throat> so I just wanted to give glory for to God for that and for that change of heart. 
um, and just repenting for it seems like 10 years of not being able to give to God um, or not just not for me not giving to God and just recognizing that that is uh, really wrong. So I just feel really grateful to hear that message. I've been sharing it with my friends and um, hopefully that can continue on so that the man of God's message can continue to reach out to other people. And so I'm excited to be able to share that as well as in my heart. My wife and I um, have been praying um, the proclamations. There was an email that was sent out. We've been praying those, uh, at least I have anyways. And um, I want to be a landlord. I want God to be able to bless us so that we can not only have a family, but we can also be um, those that are good stewards of what we have. And we can multiply and increase it in such a way that Jesus really just does have um, faithful givers in his kingdom. So uh, we just want to be able to give in that way. So hallelujah. Amen. And so we are just so grateful uh, to be a part of this ministry and so in Jesus' name, we are just, I uh, want to give glory to Jesus for the message through the man of God. Amen. to receive healing um, been sick for the past months now been to the hospital in Spain in England they've not been able to see any in my system uh, I've been stooling I've been throwing up they've done all series of tests the food camera through my system they've not found anything and I don't know what is wrong with me so I've came to my mother's land to receive healing and I know I'll receive my healing today Stand for not even a minute, mm -hmm. and as soon as I wake up in the morning, like this, every night I have three sort of bad dreams. I wake up with my bed steaming, and next thing I start going to the toilet, vomiting. Several times, ambulance have come to rush me to the hospital. They've not seen anything, they've discharged me. And when I wake up like this and start swelling, my body will be shaking as I am now, my legs are shaking. I will have to doze off myself a tablet before I can be able to go through the day. And I don't want to live like this. That's why I've come to receive healing. I helped. Oh, I said no fire oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, no fire in the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, your kingdom. Oh, oh, your kingdom. More oh, fire to your kingdom. Oh, I send more fire to the storm. To your hiding place. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire. <laughs> 
Speak loud. I come in different form. Explain I come in different form. and the way you approach. I come in different form. I come in different form. You will never be happy. You will never be happy. That's why I destroy her marriage. What did you use to destroy her marriage? I turned her husband against her. What oh, have you done to our health? It can never be diagnosed. It's an anxiety. It can never be diagnosed. It can never be diagnosed. She's going Why? slowly. She's going slowly. She's going slowly. Oh, she's going slowly. She's going slowly. That's that she's never been lucky with men. Yeah, no matter how she try, they come and go. They come and go. She can never accomplish that spirit of greatness. She can never accomplish that spirit of greatness in her. She's always feeling she's the best. She's always feeling she's the best. She's always at the front of all. She's always at the front of everything. No! That spirit of greatness, she can never get it. No! That's why we want her back. We want her back. This is how she is. She's never been able to get pregnant since. This is how she is. Who are you? We are there stop her not to. We are there everywhere she goes. We are there. Everywhere she goes, we are there. And you said you are who? Seven spirits in different form. In different form. You can never know. You can never Seven know. Seven spirits from which kingdom? You can never know from different form. From different world, anywhere she go, make a contact around her, cause confusion everywhere. Confusion everywhere. People she do good for the turn against her. They turn against her. They hate her. They hate her. But she's still pushing. Why? You should be depressed. You should be depressed. Why are you still pushing? Give up. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. said she had been going to the mm -hmm. hospital. She had been mm -hmm. sick. They can never see the cure. Mm -hmm. They can never diagnose anything. Mm -hmm. They can never see anything. Mm -hmm. They can never see anything. What is your mission? They... Slow death. Slow death. Slow death. So it can lead to depression. It can lead to she die of anxiety. You can never be traced. You can never be traced. What is happening to you now, you demons? Oh, oh, you're destroying everything. Our mission is not accomplished. You can't do this. You can't do this. You have to leave here. You can't do this. He was back. He was back. We are everywhere she go. We are in our home. We are in our marital home. We are in our everywhere. We're in a past. So how are we hiding all these years? Oh, in different form. We go we are anywhere she goes. She is so pushing. When she falls, she keep on moving. She should be down. She keep on moving. Why? She keep on moving. Who are you? She keep on moving. Her spirit is too strong. Her spirit is too strong. Her spirit is too strong. So yeah. answer me, you demon. Yeah. What is in this ministry, yeah. the city of Jesus, international ministry, Fire. that expose you, demon? Fire. Fire. Where is the fire, fire coming from? Everywhere. 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 Okay. Why are you here? Have you come to seek for solution here? Come with us. Come with us. Come with us. Oh. Oh. 
What have you destroyed in your family? Mm, those ones are confused. Those ones are confused. How? Do you know your sister abused themselves? She's the one that is trying to join them together. Anytime they are having issues, she's always in the middle. She's always making peace. She's always bringing them together. I don't know what's her problem. If she's sick, she can't do it. Now she's down. We are all looking for her. We are all looking for her. The greatness is too much. And you the demons, greatness is too seven much. demons. Oh! 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 What will happen to her health? Oh! Her greatness. Oh! Her blessings will oh, happen to her. It's too much. It's too much. This is City of Jesus International Ministry. Fire in the Stop name it. of Jesus Christ. How many people have you possessed? What was your plan? Okay, your plan is, is to kill her this month? Yes. She won't have made it. Never. Never. He's destroyed now. He's been destroyed. He's been destroyed. Yeah. What is happening to your kingdom? It's on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire. He's on fire. fire. So how did you enter her? Right from when she was young. Wow. Right from when she was young. She was dedicated to us by her parents. Where and how did the dedication the river. take place? In the river. The Lakun River. What was the reason of dedicating her oh, to the river? Because the father dedicated all of them to the marine world. Why? Because she was a native doctor. The father was a native doctor? Yes. Because she was the special one. She had this greatness. That's why we're using her against the rest. Power. Power of moving things, power of changing things, power of changing things. Now that you demons have been captured and you will be destroyed any moment, what is happening to the whole family? Oh, it's you free. The rest have to go for deliverance. They all have to go for deliverance. What have you projected in her stomach? What have you? Unsettled system. Unsettled system. system. They will never find it. They will never find it. The more she gets to medical, the more she falls to. Watch the system and watch yes. your evil projection. Watch. 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 to the heart. Fire to the heart. The heart. More fire. 
fire to the heart. The stomach and your monitoring mirror. Your monitoring mirror. I send more fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. Uh. Special. This one is special. This one is special. That would have shook the world. It would have shook everyone. It would have shook every life she has touched. It would have shook. This is special. This one is special. My death would have oh shake everywhere. It would have shake everywhere. Shake everywhere. Shake everywhere. Slow death. Slow death. Affliction. 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 Before Christmas. Date. 24. On the 24th. 24. 24. On the 24th yes. of December yes. 2023. Yes. Watch that yes. date and watch your evil yes. plan. What is happening to your plan? Ah, uh, you destroy all. You destroy all. We destroy all. We send our husband back to our enemy. We send our husband back to our enemy. We, we impose a woman to our husband. We confuse him. Now, even the divorce is not even going anywhere. It's you going for this favor. The lawyer is not doing anything. She's depressed. We want us to so go slowly with no trust. With no trust. If you are being destroyed now, what will uh, happen to the husband uh, that you have captured? Uh, it's up to her, she want him back. It's up to her, she want him back. Hey, you're coming back. You're coming back. Your husband will come back at bed. Yeah. Yeah. It's up to her, she want him back. But, you don't want us to go. And your health. Why? You have no choice. Why? Are you not the photocopy of your yourself? Fire. Her heart. I send more fire to the heart that you're manipulating. More fire. You snake. I send fire to you. I send fire to you, you snake. <laughs> More fire, you snake. More fire. The legs. You're destroying everything. You're destroying everything. You're destroying everything. Uh, uh, Explain what? You're destroying everything. What are we doing to the parents? Father was in it, your daughter. You have his own spirit. Mother was afflicted by the family. Uh, and she belonged to us. And you all of them that were dedicated to the Maria world, you have to set themselves free one after the other. Did you try to stop by the city of Jesus? Yes, of course. Of course. She struck her down with healed and she still fly. She still fly. The day she was coming to Nigeria, we struck her down. She still fly. She fly. She didn't even dress up. She still fly. She go to Nigeria. Come here. Try to stop her coming here. She still coming. This is church. This is fire. This is fire church. Try to stop her in Lagos. She still came. 
She's too good. She's too good. Since she's been Rusty trying to try and stop her coming to the She's too strong. She still try Oh no, the affliction. She still went and wrote an exam before she came. And she got admission to uni to start in February. She shouldn't have made it. So how did she get to know about the ministry, the city of Jesus? But, oh, but some more, some more she know. Oh. The plan was to cause confusion between them. They didn't work. They didn't work. They didn't work. They were going to stop us back there. They cause confusion there. It didn't work. It didn't work. Cause confusion. So, so they did against each other. Now they hate her. There is a man close to to her. Oh, is that her? Is a helper. Is a helper. A fighter. Fighter. He dragged her here. He dragged her here. He dragged her here. Why? 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 Because he was here. He wasn't there. We couldn't look at him. He dragged her here. He dragged her here. That's because the confusion there. But that's a cause of confusion between the family then. He dragged her here. He is too powerful. He is too powerful. We cannot stop her. We cannot stop her. I met her in England. We attend the same church in England. So I get to know that we're from the same place in England. So. She started coming close to my family in England. We were living together. She, started, she told me her problem that she has not been feeling fine. I followed her to the hospital oh. NHS in England. We went to about so many hospitals. They couldn't diagnose anything that was wrong with her. Sometimes she used to run to my house two o'clock in the night that she couldn't sleep. So I said, okay, let me give you the prayer line numbers in the city of Jesus. She started applying. So I started forcing her that you had to come to Nigeria. Because one day you will just die. So at the time, she started running away from us. It's like she and my wife wanted to have a problem in England without nothing. I never knew that the demon never wanted her to come to the city of Jesus. So I had to leave them. I said, let me come back home. So I was still pressing. They did not bought ticket for her. I said, she should come down. Getting to Lagos, she came on Monday. She said she went to another church. I said, why will you go to another church? Before I knew, they have collected a lot of money from her. So Saturday, I had to buy ticket from her from Lagos to Asaba. Friday night, they called me at about 2 a.m. that they want to rush her to the hospital. I said, if they rush you to the hospital, Saturday, if you can't come to Asaba, there's no way you can come there. So I had to stop them that if you come to Asaba, I'll take you to hospital. So they managed to have the night. She took first flight in the morning. Picked her up in the airport and landed after seven in the morning. I took her to the hospital. We went to the hospital. You can't find anything that's wrong with her. In the moment, she would be okay. After 10 minutes, she would just collapse. So that was how we came to church on Sunday. We all sit seated together. After the prayers, we went to the hotel. This morning, we came back. After prayer for us, I was wondering, ah, nothing happened. I said, ah, maybe it was it's a physical mm -hmm. issue before the woman of God now came to call her back. So I just want to give God the glory. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank God. Mm -hmm. yeah, my name is Mr. Newton. I serve and a partner in this ministry. I live both in England and in Nigeria. What do you believe that Jesus will do for her? 100% I know the deliverance has come. That you don't come to the city of Jesus and go back the same way you came to the city of Jesus. Jesus has already delivered her. You mean the city of Jesus International? Yeah, the city of Jesus International Ministry. You don't come there and go back the same way you came. I know God has done it. Thank you, Jesus. How do you destroy what we've said? How do you destroy everything we've arranged? Why? What do you bring her here? What do you have to gain? 
God, you have chosen. God, you have chosen. God, you have chosen. Mm. When I feel this world with evil people, she's too good. She can see it. Oh, you scattering everything. Oh, you scattering everything. Everything. Who wants to kill us slowly? Everything. Pain. We are flitting with pain all over. All over. All over. Watch so all over. Is your affliction still there? Yeah. We are going one by one. We are going one by one. We are going one by one. We are flitting with your wound in our finger. That would have led to another thing. That would have led to another thing. We are. In our finger. I would have let you know that thing. 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 You are addicted. You are slow pain. What was your plan? Slow pain. 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 They can never find a cure. Why do you let her come here? Why do you let her come here? Why do you let her come here? Send more fire to your affliction. More fire to your affliction. More fire. And send more fire to all the affliction. You think you can go to the city of Jesus and escape? Every kind of water in the and also in the invisible Are you not seeing the host of heaven everywhere? Watch, are you not seeing them? Yes. Even right from the gates. You think you can escape? You can't come in and escape. Enough, enough, enough. Open your eyes and see. Enough. Are you not seeing the host of heaven everywhere? Enough, enough. Watch. Enough. 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 Each time she takes these drugs, <laughs> what usually happens to her? Shut her system down. So does this mean that she, she was down. taking the drugs? No. Mm. <laughs> I couldn't see the clear no. agent. Why was she disturbing herself in the interior? Why? 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 to make it worse. She's too strong. Spirit is too strong. The stress is so high. I was on the jada slowly. Slowly. The blood stresses. Change the name of Jesus Christ! Change! I command her to be set free from your evil spirits. From your sicknesses, from your diseases, from your hardship, disappointments, and failures forever. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Shalom, my welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. My name is Itohan Inoma. I am from Edo State, Bini, a base in United Kingdom. I came to City of Jesus International Ministry to receive healing. Um, I've been sick for months now, and the doctor have not been able to see cure or see anything even in my system back in the uk even i flew to spain and they couldn't see anything so a family member that attend city of jesus came to the uk and said oh you have to come to city of jesus you receive your healing so i bought my tickets and i flew to nigeria and i came to city of jesus and yes i have received my healing today and i thank god for that thank god i thank god before i couldn't breathe normally through my lungs now i can breathe freely before i used to take minutes before i can breathe freely through my lungs i can breathe in and out now freely without any obstruction um all my system that i could feel something is going on the stab wound i used to get in my lower abdomen since i flew to nigeria from since the deliverance today i've, I've not been feeling it before I couldn't even stand like this for a minute without sitting down or lying. But there, yeah, my, I'm standing now. I'm free. I'm free. All my system now is free. My heart is breathing freely. So I, I don't even know how to explain what I've been through and what God has done for me today. I thank God and I thank the God of City of Jesus International Enugu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now we thank God Almighty for your life and this mighty deliverance and healing that you received while you were being prayed for here at the Tuesday prayer meeting at the City of Jesus International Ministry. The evil spirit that possessed you and lived in you for the past years manifested itself as the marine spirits that you were dedicated to right from when you were young. Can you walk us through um, how this happened and the experiences you stay finding in your life even up to the part where you got very sick? Well, um, people that know me from home, my father was a native doctor when he was alive. Um, I would say dedicated all of us to, you know, this idol that I serve and the a spirit of river and all that. It's not something I've been following because I don't base in Nigeria. But some anytime we come home and visit my family house, uh, my elder sister is still serving it. So sometimes he still do something and participate with him and all that. Um, never in a million years will I even think that that will have a hand in things that was wrong with me. Uh, because it's not like I live in Nigeria or I do it with them. So it's, it's strange, honestly. It's really strange. And I thank God for his deliverance, that he has delivered me from all this affliction. So, yeah. 
So were you aware, like, how were you being dedicated to this marine spirit? Uh, it took us to a river where we went and throw things in the river and then do a sacrifice to the river. Then from young age, we call it Olokun. Basically, I didn't even <laughs> take anything about it since then. And this was years, years back, more than 20-something years ago. From then, growing up, um, the evil spirit mentioned that it has destroyed your life in so many ways, ranging from your career to your marital life. What can you say about the negative experiences you've been having? Oof. I've had challenges in relationships. I've, you know, been to relationships that will hit a rock without knowing it. And probably they will just say they love you, they can't live without you, swear. Even some will say they want to take an oath with me. So you make me to swear that I will never leave them but the next thing they'll start behaving funny and the relationship will break but because I've always been a fighter I won't fall down I'll keep on moving and move next step and until I had a child and the relationship did not work out spent years in that relationship it broke up but still I'm still moving and then got married uh, I and my husband were together for seven years I came back from Nigeria the next thing he started behaving funny he broke up with me and he's not even a Nigerian he's a white man and he went to the church I was attending and then he's now dating somebody from the choir but still I'm still moving until I fall sick and started getting all these symptoms me stooling not having strength it's just it has been wanting or the other even I had a, a teeth bite in my hand that but God has done it in here in the city of Jesus International in Enugu today. I've received my healing. I'm free. All the burden have left me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Ma, we can see a man standing next to you. Please, can you introduce him to us and your relationship with him? Uh, it's the family friend that introduced me to City of Jesus International Ministry in Ugu. Uh, his family live in the UK, so he visited his family in the UK and saw the condition that I wear. And he, because he's a member in the church, and he asked me to come to the City of Jesus International Ministry. Okay, Ma, during your deliverance, one of the confessions of the evil spirit was that it tried to cause confusion between you and this brother over here so as to prevent you from visiting the city of jesus international ministry <sighs> sometimes i just feel i don't know just off contact he always when he call you ask me oh you've not gone to their house sometimes i would just say i just want to be on my own i said no you can't do that you can't just be on your home go to my house i said maybe your wife is working she should be coming to mine you know just little things like that and I don't know what was going on actually, honestly. <laughs> okay, well, let's hear from the brother standing next to you. Shalom, sir. Welcome to the City of Jesus International Ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, my name is uh, Mr. Newton. I serve, I am a partner in the City of Jesus International Ministry. I'm from Edo State, Benin, but I reside in Asaba. My family lives in England, UK. I'm a businessman. Thank you, sir. We thank God Almighty for your life. You were being used by God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to bring our sister to the City of Jesus International Ministry where she received her deliverance. Prior to her visiting, the evil spirit confessed that it tried to cause um, confusion and disunity between you both so that she won't visit the city of Jesus International Ministry. What do you have to say now that she has received her deliverance and what sort of advice would you give to viewers all around the world listening? Uh, I just want to thank God for the deliverance. Uh, at the time, I went to visit my family. I saw her in the church. That was how we get to know each other that we are from the same place. So she told me the challenges she was passing through. So I asked her to be visiting. She was visiting at the time she stopped coming. And I said, why will you stop coming? So she said, she'll give me one excuse or the other that she doesn't want to be bothering us. I said, why will you be bothering my family? You are like a younger sister to me. You are not feeling fine. We are the close person to you now. So I had to leave them. I came back to Nigeria. So I keep on checking on her. So I gave her the prayer line number and uh, she contacted. 
She visited the city of Jesus, international ministry. That was how she landed in Lagos on Monday. And uh, I said she should wait Saturday. She should come to Asaba so that I can bring her to, to the city of Jesus International Ministry. So the devil started striking since that Monday. So on Friday night, they called me. They were going to rush her to the hospital at about 2 a.m. I told them not to take her to the hospital. That if she goes to the hospital, they will admit her. Saturday morning, she will miss her flight. So she managed throughout the night and... Um, she came to Asaba. That was how we came to the city of Jesus. We were in the church on Sunday. Thank God for our deliverance. Now she's totally free. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for the deliverance. My advice to viewers all over the world is when you have any problem that you know that is spiritual, run to God, run to the city of Jesus, the international ministry. It's a solution ground. You don't come to this ministry and go back the way you came to this ministry. I've been with the ministry for more than four years now. It's a solution ground. I'm a testimony. So you don't come to the city of Jesus and go back the same way you came. This sickness, has, there's no hospital we've not been to in England. Even she have went to Spain. They couldn't find anything. And I took her to the hospital in Nigeria. Nothing was found. But I want to thank God today for the deliverance and for the healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this healing. Thank you, Jesus. So I thank God Almighty for your life and for the testimony for the life of our sister once again. Let's hear from her. Okay, sister, once again, check yourself. Tell us how you're feeling. How do you feel now after your deliverance? And also give a word of advice to viewers all around the world watching you. I feel free. I feel light. I feel strong which is what I've, what I've not feel for a long time. I feel strong. I can stand on my feet now. I'm not sitting because I usually stand, sit, stand, sit, stand, sit. I've been standing here for some minutes now, but I am very strong now. So God has delivered me because this is not me. This is not how I felt when I came this morning. God has done it. Okay, sister, right now you're holding the drugs that you used to take in the past as a result of the afflictions the enemy caused on you. Now that you've been set free and you're healed, what are you doing? What are you going to do with these drugs now? I don't need it away. I don't need it again. Hallelujah. The sickness is over. And the diseases are cured completely. Every affliction from the enemy has been destroyed. You can watch that she has thrown away the drugs that she has been using in the past. She needs them no more as Jesus the healer has taken over and taken control. I lastly give a word of advice to viewers all around the world. People watching you, you've been through so much, being afflicted, being tormented, your family being destroyed. Now that you've been set free, what do you believe has happened to your life, to your family, your marriage? And also, what word of advice would you give to viewers all around the world watching you right now? My advice to the viewers watching around the world is to run to God if there's anything that is wrong with you that you know it's not medically proven that is spiritual run to god if he take you run to the city of jesus international ministry enugu you will receive your healing because i'm a living testimony standing in front of you this morning i'm a living testimony you will never go back home the way you came honestly run to jesus as i'm receiving my freedom now God has already worked on my behalf. So my marriage, I leave that to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Sister, we thank God Almighty for your life. As a man of God, Christopher G would say her deliverance is being conveyed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's life. You've been delivered from lives of sin, sinful desires, and its consequences. So we encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life. Stay away from lives of sin and sinful desires so that the healing, deliverance, and breakthrough that you have received will remain permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My message to you 
And probably to anyone who would say that they want to be ganging up against a certain nation. Or against a certain religion. Is this. It is better for you to live doing what is right than for you to die doing what is wrong. God has already sent from heaven all the heavenly armies and warriors in charge of all spiritual warfare. And they have descended on earth to bring judgment and justice. Anyone who hides under religion hides under politics, hides under ministry, hides under tribe, hides under any organization to promote killing, stealing and destruction will be instantly rewarded by God. Once again, God's advice is for you to allow your actions to have positive consequences because you can. Nations should rise up against bloodshed. Let the killing, stealing, and destruction stop. Otherwise, there will be devastating consequences. That will start, it has already started, and that will be much more active in the year 2024. That will be much more what, active in which year? 2024. It will affect many and a lot of people will be struck by the sort of famine. Not just famine, but strange events that will be referred as the pestilences. And there will be high magnitude of earthquake that will affect various parts of the world. There is no technology that will be able to stop that. What will it benefit anybody to experience something like this and not live again to tell the story? Your actions have consequences. There are consequences attached to bloodshed. Put your homes in order. Put your families in order. Put your nations in order. And put your continents in order. Do not say you did not hear. You have heard now. So that you will not say you were not told. Imagine things like that happening in a place it has never happened before. To you, you have mapped out some places. You say, oh, this is where it will happen. That is what you have said. But what will happen, it will happen in a place that it has never happened before. 
so that you will fear God. No one is strong enough, powerful enough, rich enough, famous enough, wealthy enough, popular enough to defeat God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You cannot assemble yourselves together in the name of religion to fight against God. His chosen nation and children. Jesus Christ is coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah with his divine sword to bring judgment. Do yourself a favor and see what you can do to create an atmosphere of faith in your heart and nation so that you will not be found wanting. Once again, don't assemble yourselves and begin to fight against God and his choosing nation. Don't fight against God and his chosen children. God loves everybody. That is why you must live and let others live. That's the message to the world. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Going by the message you've given us, we have actually fallen short of your glory. We must be honest to ourselves, honest to you, and honest to you. Washed away. Washed away. By the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Fill us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and cause our actions to have positive consequences not only in this generation but also in the generations to come. Teach us to live and let our fellow human beings live. Teach us to live according to your words and instructions forever. Give us the grace to continue to hallow the living God Almighty, not witches and wizards. Give us the grace to continue to hallow you, the living God Almighty, and not the spirit of death, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. You are very welcome. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, introduce yourself, my dear. Thank you, Father. My name is Ezekiel uh, Chibuka Emmanuel Charles. Who are these people to you? This person is my younger brother. His name is uh, Nnamdi the Collins. Yes, uh, then this person is my mommy. Her name is uh, Mrs. Georgina. Yes, sir. Right, you are welcome. What do you do for a living? Daddy, presently, I am a missionary. I'm through with my missionary education, but presently, I'm not yet uh, ordained in the Catholic Church. 
So that is why I came to see you. I believe that through you, God will make it possible. I belong to the missionary of the sons of cancer. But eventually, that place is not uh, moving on presently. So, but there is another missionary called the missionary of the Stephenite fathers and brothers. So these people, they now, I went for the interview there. They said that they have accepted me to ordain me a deacon in November. That is this year, 2023. So these are the things I came to see you with Father so that it is the will of God for me to be ordained there. I have accepted to be ordained there. That is why I came to see you with Daddy. I need your support, I need your prayers. Thank God for what God is doing with you. And sincerely speaking, my younger brother and my mommy, they have told me what you have done for them. I want to say thank you. And I'm praying that God will continue to increase you and multiply you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you are very welcome. Thank you. How is your spiritual life? In my spiritual life, I'm making an effort. Presently, I remember in 2017, 18, I rode into a, a charismatic. So since then, I've been making effort to improve my spiritual life. All right, you need to stay away from being enticed by what they think. You need to stay away from that. The reason is because Satan also knows that if you stay focused and finally receive the grace to work for God, you would end up destroying his evil works and kingdoms and setting the people completely free from demonic possessions. This he would not want you to do. So he always wants to use weaknesses to set trap for you. What are those weaknesses? Spirit of lust. He can decide to send his evil agents or an agent. You will find yourself having sexual relationship with women. And those women will not allow you to concentrate would want to pull you out of the place at all cost. When it comes to ordination and when it comes to anointing, anointing is the coming of the Spirit of God into the life of a person. And the Spirit of God is the Spirit of holiness. It is only a Holy Spirit that receives the Spirit of God. If your spirit is pure and holy, it will be free and sensitive to the Spirit of God. Your spirit will not contact the Holy Spirit. What is it that contaminates one's spirit? Lives of sin. Of which what I've said now is a part. Imagine you want to be ordained and you have a lady outside that you have impregnated. Or a lady outside that has children for you. You know they consider many things before the ordained person. You know that. If you escape human screening, what about the spiritual one? Maybe they did not know. And they still go ahead to ordain you. What about the spiritual one? Because man has the ability to say, okay, you are ordained. But spiritual ordination is done by God. Through his word and by his spirit. And that is the one you need to work for God. You need spiritual ordination. The gift of the spirit of God. The real anointing that destroys Satan and his evil works. So you can be able to work for God. That is what you need now. So you need to be strong spiritually and return back to God. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. That point is very prophetic. Return back to God. Find your way. If you say you've committed sin, everybody makes mistakes. You have the right to say, yeah, I've committed sin, but I still need to return back to God. And Satan will not stop you. 
the prodigal son went into life of pleasure that promoted carnality, life of sin outside. He came back to his senses and said, no, I have sinned. I need to go back to my father. He had the right to return. He returned and he was received and given the best. So no matter the nature of sins you've committed, whether they're big or small, whether there are things that people say, anybody who commits this sin will not be anointed by God, I tell you. Once you are ready to repent and return back to God, God will give you his spirit, the Holy Spirit, that will enable you to live for him and to work for him. So don't condemn yourself. Don't say, no, I have gone too far. I cannot withdraw. No, it's not like that. You can. You can withdraw and return back to God. So this one, this advice, prophetic advice, is much more important than the ordination. The reason is because you need something that will help you to be ordained. Do you understand? You need to have character that will enable you to be anointed. If you don't have that character, how will the anointing come? The anointing does not come from laying hand or from somebody putting on garment on you. Uh, I've taken your advice, your fatherly advice to me. I'll make every possible best to stand on it by the grace of God. I also need your, your spiritual backup. It's not something I will do on my own. So I I need your grace and the grace in God to enable me to, to carry on the work in God. Because I'm interested to do the work. I'm interested because I've suffered in this missionary studies. I've suffered for years. Even the people that I began with them, some of them has already doing their 11th priestly anniversary. So that is why when this one came, I said, thank you, Jesus, for calling me and trying to take me to do your work. I'm not worthy, but I believe that the grace of God will make me worthy. With your cooperation, I'll be able to answer the call. So thank you, big Father, for making me to come and see you, for encouragement, for support. Keep on praying for you that God will keep on being with you, being in your ministry, that the Spirit of God will always abide here to bring souls to God and to keep you long life. This is word in Psalm 91, verse 11. So that will satisfy you with long life. That is my prayer to you. That God will give you long life, good of health and strength to do his work because what I'm seeing here is not something that flesh can do because I'm seeing you as a superpower man because I came here on Sunday I saw with my eyes I said thank you Jesus for me taking you an instrument even today I also encountered you I said God this is marvelous thank you God for all the good works this to do. All right, the most important decision in this area of lives of sin, you have to truly repent and you have to surrender to God completely. God loves you. Once you do that, issue of ordination, hatred, and the other, other things you, you are talking about will be gone forever. Mm. Meaning, issue of ordination. God himself will be the one to handle it. When God is involved, your own case is settled. Amen. When God is involved, you do not need a majority to win because he is the winner. He wins and gives victory to his children. Amen. So now he is involved. You need to also be involved. You need to also abide in him. You need to also have his godly character so you can have what it takes to be ordained, to receive from God and to work for God. That is my prophetic counsel. That lies of sin must stop. Sexual immorality must come to an end. 
Free your character from that. Free your life from that. Free your soul and body from that. Focus on God. You have already made that decision that, look, among my siblings, I will go this direction. I will follow this way to bring light to the family. Why withdraw it? You must not withdraw. Focus on where you are going. Your destination is very important. You need to get to your destination. Okay? Thank you. Let everybody run his or her own race. They are running their race. Your brother is running his own race. Your mom is running her own race. She is totally reformed. And I believe you too. So that the testimonies will be complete. She will be happy testifying. Not looking for you. Trying to find you. Not you not picking their call. Not coming back home. No. All these things have to stop. You should be accessible. So that they too can be happy. You should be reachable. So that they too can be happy. After staying for some time, you give them a call. Hello, how are you? Hope you are doing well. This is how I'm doing. This is it. This is it. And then you pray together as a family. That will give them joy more than anything. If at all the Lord blesses you, you also reach out and see what you can do to bless them. You don't need to have billions before you allow yourself to be used to bless your mom and your siblings. Don't always be at the receiving hands, always taking from them, taking, expecting them to send something to you. That time is gone. You should see what you can do out of nothing to always provide. It is very important. Okay? So we are praying for you so that your mom can live long, your siblings can be happy, you too can be happy and everybody will be happy. Do you understand now? Thank you. All right. So, glory be to God. I believe for you. Also, pray for you. Now, you've been prayed for, but I will just complete the prayers now so that everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. Shalom. My name is Ayam Jesse. This is my elder brother, Kichu. This is my mom, Dr. Sijuku. And thank God for bringing us. City of Jesus International Ministry. What I want to say, man of God, is that my other brother has been inconsistent in, in where he's working. He will get work before he knows it. If he won't be for two to three months before he knows it, he will say that he's no longer working there. He will now move to another place. And that has been bothering my mother. So my mother has not been, my mother would tell me, call me sometimes, like, you can go to kill her. But the way she is, who is behaving, is like, something that uh, somebody is like, she is getting mad. And she doesn't know that the, the, the character of you has changed. So that, that distorts me a lot. So I have to now start inviting them to the city of Jesus mm -hmm. International Ministry. Because I believe that with what I'm seeing in this ministry that there's, family can get their deliverance on this ministry. So I thank you, Mom of God, for all your help that and assisting me, your encouragement since I came into this ministry. My spiritual life has changed, and I believe the way that it will affect my whole family. So thank you, Mom of God, for your grace. All right, you've heard what I said. Moving from one job to another wasn't an issue. That was just a like branch of the problems. The main issue is life of sin. Where you have an encounter with ungodly women, they can cause you to lose your job. They can break your focus. If you have an encounter, sexual encounter with an ungodly woman or woman, or you have that thought within you. Some of them you don't even need to have sexual intercourse with them. Just by mere looking and desiring your heart, you are into their devilish trap. So these are where the rules are coming from. So they can attack your job, cause you to lose your mind. You will not even concentrate. You will not even see the need to complete what you are doing. You will just be in covenant with them spiritually. This is what is happening to him. 
his problem is not only the branches of it, but we have to start dealing with the root. That is the root of the problem. And that's why I said he has to meet the standard. If you don't meet the standard, how can you be ordained? You see, you have a lamp and you're in the midst of darkness, but you don't have the oil. You have the thread, you have the lamp, but you don't have the oil. How will you keep the lamp burning? You need the oil. Put the oil in the lamp, and then you can light it up or on, and then you see light. It will be burning because there is oil. That oil is godly character, which is absent. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? What do you understand? Just say the, the way you understand what I'm saying. What I understood is that I have to, like the old life that I'm living, that I have to put them and embrace the new life in Jesus by making sure that the life, life in holiness, I have to make every, every possible effort to be living life in holiness in every day. There is a woman that is disturbing you, which you know. There is a woman you know. You're not the baby. Yes. You're not the baby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is a woman. That is an issue. That is that's an issue. Get you know. Like he wants to get married to, to one uh, yeah. parent yeah. calling him to go, come and see them. Mm. I've been calling my mother that he will get married. He will get my mother. I say that he doesn't have anything. We are even the one sending money to you. And you say I want to get married. So where will you even get the money you want to use and get married? So the girl is a new a student. That when the girl finish study, he will marry the girl. That that this and that. That uh, these people that want to be him uh, priest, the, the people are ma getting married. Mm -hmm. And I say that which uh, Catholic uh, people are, are getting married, Catholic priests are getting married. We don't know this congregation since uh, it has been two months ago now. No parish. He has been calling out that we should support him. That he want to go to them so that they will be him a priest. That the, the people they get married, that this girl he will marry the girl, that this and so that has been disturbing my mother. So what do you have to say, brother? What do you have to say, sir? I thank you, Mom. What I have to say here is that uh, this is uh, Stevenite uh, congregation. They don't have, they don't observe celibacy. It is optional. Do you understand? And I want to. What is optional? Optional is that you can. When they ordain you, you can get married, or if you don't want to get married, you can st stay celibate. But I've seen myself naturally that I want to get ordained and not be celibate. Meaning you want to do what? That I want to, I want to get married. I want to be be a priest under that uh, missionary of the Steve Knight fathers and brothers. So that that is what I'll, because I've seen myself that I cannot live that celibate life. Why? What is the main reason why you cannot? What is the reason? Other people are living that kind of life. They have dedicated their entire life just for God and they're not like having any option. Why is it that you're finding it difficult to do the same? We have so many priests, powerful priests that are even living that kind of life. And that was your decision from the beginning. Yes. You made that decision from the beginning that, look, I'm going to give my life to God as a priest. Nothing like marriage, nothing like this, nothing like that. It was later, when you now went into sin, you started changing your mind. Initially, what was your decision? Initially, I said, God, that I want to be a celibate priest. That was initially, but along the line, after my studies, I said, what convinced you? Did you go into sin? And from there, you now said, okay, we, I can still be a priest, but not in the other side. What actually made me to to take that decision is based on, after my studies, I discovered that there is a new order that came up. See that you can be a priest, you can also not be celibate. No, that was not the main reason. The main reason was you could not control yourself. Yes, yes. You find yourself committing sin or fornication. Yes, my God. That enabled you to lose that consciousness that, oh, I'm here just to give my life. 
we started looking for alternatives, easier way, easier way. That was what happened. That is actually what happened. Bring them so that they are able to take the this second option because presently, because I want peace to be. That is why I said, let me come for prayers for counseling so that I get a proper direction. If you make a decision based on mistakes you have made, that decision is not springing from God. We don't walk by sight. Sight represents how you feel, your emotion, what your circumstances look like. We walk by faith. Faith focuses on the word of God, not on your errors, not on your mistakes, not on your sins, not on your desires, but on the words and promises of God. That is what faith focuses on. So if you're looking for um, decision that comes from God, that decision should spring from faith. Decision that springs from faith is a decision that comes from God. Decision that springs from your emotion. Maybe you say, I cannot control my emotion. I cannot do the decision that springs from your emotion, that springs from your feelings, that springs from the circumstances around you, are coming from sight and are not from God. The word of God should dominate your life. There is no turning back when you accept Jesus. Once you accept, you follow him. How do you follow him? You must make sure you do away with any lives of sin that will stop you from having your forward movement towards God. If it is immorality, you drop it. If it is lust, you drop it. If it is masturbation, you drop it. If it is lack of seriousness, you drop it. If it is laziness, you drop it. If it is loss of memory, you drop it. The Bible says, if your finger will cause you not to enter into the kingdom of God, it is better you do what? Do away with it. It is better to have one part of your body missing, maimed, and, and yet find yourself in the kingdom of God, than not to enter into the kingdom of God. Imagine you enter into hell with your full body. What will it profit you? If you want to be a child of God, you be. If you don't want don't sit on the fence. If at all you want to do what you want to do now, it should not be like, this is what I have decided. Let God himself be the one to decide. How will God decide? First and foremost, the first thing you should do is cry to God and be in an attitude of repentance. That God, this was my initial plan. You did not fail me. I failed you. I need your mercy. I do not want to choose. Let your will be done. Then God can compassionately say, okay, I understand your weakness. You can do this and do that. You don't impose things for God. He's God. You don't impose, okay, this is what I want because I cannot. You don't have any right over your own life. You don't have any right to say, oh, this is my life. No, God is the giver of life. He is your director. He should direct and lead you. Not you leading yourself. Do you understand? Yes, Father. So that is the point. If you had known this right from the beginning, you would have said, oh, I'm sorry. I fell short of the glory of God. This is the life of sin I've lived. I am here for forgiveness, mercy, and for God to sanctify me and make me whole again. You stop it there. Then from there, God himself will take it up and say, okay, this is what is next. Not you choosing. Do you understand? Yes, please, Father. So what is your decision now? What do you learn from what you have said now? What should you be here for? To ask God to do for you first. What is the first thing? The first thing I have to do now is I'm asking God for mercy that I've, on my own personal weakness, I've chosen what was not initially what God said that I should do based on my personal weakness. I'm asking God for mercy to have compassion on me and let God also permit me to take the second option. I'm ready to serve God with my whole heart. I'm ready to, to uphold that commandment in God. I'm ready. Even when God allow me to take the second option, 
I'm ready to keep to it all the days in my life. So what you need to do, don't begin to choose which gear you want to do this and do that. This is not the time to start seeing this gear or that gear. It is time to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If there's anyone like that that is trying to distract you or cause you to um, think otherwise, you bring the person to a place you know that the person will be truly delivered. If you are under the influence of lust, sexual immorality, lives of sin, you cannot make the right decision. If the lady is also under such influence, she cannot make the right decision. Weaknesses and weaknesses cannot form a godly marriage or home. Do you now understand? Yes, this is a, a very good and prophetic advice for you to work on that. Okay? That's weaknesses and weaknesses cannot come together and form godly marriage. So this is what you should know. Okay. Let there be deliverance first. That on Sunday you came for prayer, you've been prayed for. You were prayed for a while ago, and you are go, still going to be prayed for. You. These are processes of prayers that will bring deliverance into your life. Yeah. Knowledge of God is the key. The knowledge is in the Word of God, and the Word of God is the truth. Once you know that truth, that truth you know will set you free. You were not ready to be set free even while I was praying for you because you lack this knowledge. The words of knowledge opened up everything now that, look, this is what you are doing that are wrong. Don't do it again. Now you know. You say, oh, even if you say I'm free, you must know those things you have been set free from. You must know them. Oh, this one, I mean, yes, I must not live this kind of life again. If I want this ordination, I don't want to live this kind of life. If I had sent you, I said, okay, don't worry, let you do you go. You would not know the lives of sin. You would even think, man of God did not see me. You do not know that uh, I live that kind of life. You may even be thinking, that place is not of God. Anybody can just go there and hide. There is no hiding place. What you do in the dark is what God will bring to the light and expose to set you free. He's not doing that to embarrass you. But to let you know these things are not good. Don't do them again. I still love you. You are my son. Do this. Do you understand now? Good. All right, so on this note, I'll pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you, and I ask for your mercy to speak for me. Let his sins be truly forgiven, and let his life be sanctified. Give him eternal life. Give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Fill him with the spirit of discernment. Let him be totally healed. Amen. both spiritually and physically. Amen. Let him be completely delivered Amen. from Satan and all his evil works forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you spirit of sexual morality and lust, wrong ambitions, Spirit of fear, loss of memory, marine agents that never wanted him to be used by God. I send fire to all of you. You mm. must leave him alone. Through mm. the name of Jesus Christ, mm. be free Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So give thanks to God. You are free today. God bless you. So you are free, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have you ever pondered over the power of confession and transformation? It was a bright Sunday morning, the 10th of December, 2023, at the City of Jesus International Ministry. The atmosphere was filled with a divine aura the congregation swaying in rhythm with the spiritual vibes. Christopher Orgy, the man of God, was leading the service, his words echoing through the hall, touching every soul present. The Holy Spirit guided him to one particular member, prompting him to arrange a meeting later in the week. The following Tuesday, a private session was held between the two. The atmosphere was serene, the air filled with a sense of anticipation. 
Christopher, guided by divine intuition, advised the individual to confess his sins. The most pressing issue at hand was his ongoing gambling habits, a vice that was slowly eating away at his life. The man hesitated for a moment, then opened his heart. He confessed his sins, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and relief. It was a cathartic moment, a release of all the guilt and shame he had been carrying around for so long. It was the first step towards his transformation. Shalom. My name is Ezen Namde. I'm from Enugu State, and I'm a commercial driver. On Sunday, the man of God told me that I have gone back to Bethany, and I should come and see him within the week, which I came on Tuesday morning. He asked me why did I go back to Bethany. I told him that I was influenced by someone I saw playing bets, and secondly. I need money. I said, man, I need money to take care of my bills because I have a lot of financial needs. I've not uh, built my own house. I'm not married. I need a lot of financial assistance. So that was why I have to try my luck in that uh, area. So brother, what is your decision now that you've received this message from the man of God? and you're confessing this life of sin. What is your decision? My decision now is that God should help me by giving me what will help me to stop playing bets. As a man of God, Christopher G would say that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. A life of gambling is a life of sin, and it is not the way God would want you to go through. He who obeys a prophet receives a prophet's reward. So we encourage you to make the word of God the foundation of your life and to stay away from these lives of sin and sinful desires. And we see God Almighty doing glorious things in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have you changed from that habit of petty or not? What is your decision? Call the name Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Again? Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are not like this, big like this, because you eat much. You are like this because in the dream, you keep eating. They keep feeding you with various substances. And physically, they manifest them like this. Yes, it's true. Feeding you in the dream has many spiritual implications. One, to destroy your spiritual life. Two, to drain your finances and make you a beggar. This is true. That is why your finances are epileptic. You see, up and down, up and down. Many things are destroyed. And three, to cause you sickness. Heart problem, kidney problem. That's true. Liver problem are weaknesses of the body. You necessarily become extremely tired and weak. Yes, that is true. What is true? How can you confirm what I said? While sleeping. And uh, at night, too, I, I used to urinate up to five times before the, the day uh, runs out. I used to eat in the dream. What are those things they normally bring to you to feed you in the dream? Just uh, sweet things, like chocolate, all these ice creams. You say, oh, I don't want to eat sweet things physically. I don't like sugary things physically because I'm watching my sugar level. I don't want to eat this because it contains sugar. What in the dream you are eating? Are you not surprised to see that even though you are asleep or even fat, 
you are having that is. Are you not surprised? Mm -hmm. Why are you having diabetes? You keep asking yourself, but I'm monitoring my, my diet. I select what I eat. Where did I get this excess sugar in my blood? You have diabetes, you relate anyhow, anytime, any day. Even some of you bed wet. You have hypertension. You cannot become active as you used to be. Every small thing, you're tired. Even at home, that has caused issue between you, a husband, and you, a wife. You cannot do your obligation as a wife because of hardness, sicknesses, and diseases, and because of pains everywhere. And you, husband, you cannot play your role as a man because of attacks of satanic sicknesses and diseases that caused you to be extremely weak. Everybody see you people fighting. You and your wife fighting. Nobody knows the secrets of the fight. It's not too far from weak erection, impotency, inability to play your role as a man at home. And you're hiding the truth from everybody. How many times have they come to settle this matter? And it is not settled because the real thing is not fast. Who can deliver you and set you free? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Who can bring the peace? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Who can turn your impotency into potency? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Who can turn your weaknesses into massive strength? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Who can repay your damaged part? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. They say, no, I'm not possessed. And you're feeding, eating anyhow you dream. You say you're holy physically. But in the dream, you are sleeping with various men and women. And you say you're a holy child of God. You fail to understand that life begins in the spirit. It is what happens in the spirit, the spiritual realm, that will control the physical realm. Repent. All of us must believe that our deliverer is God. Meaning, we must know that we need what? Deliverance. We need what? Deliverance. He does not need to charge us money before he delivers us. We have seen a lot of deliverance activities taking place, even in the dream. You see God sending his ministers, or even unknown faces, to deliver you in the dream. Many times they are chasing you, almost about to kill you. You just see force, or someone appearing just to rescue you. Let's laugh for God. Agreeing that in this manner, all of us need deliverance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If anyone stands somewhere or elsewhere to tell you that he or she does not need deliverance, are you not seeing that the person is spiritually blind? Yes, yes sir. Deliverance is a continuous exercise yes. that will continue to take place until we leave this physical world. We will continue to be rescued. We will continue to be delivered. We will continue to be saved by God until we finally leave this physical world. Himself does not know. All those satanic, whatever he has been eating, brought about his size. To him, he doesn't want to be like this. He just wants to be fit, strong, and to be active. What about your finances and your job? What is happening now? What you said is true. My finance is too low. Very, very low. I don't have anything. Even to repair my bus. It's, what it's, happened to your boss? The boss have an engine problem. Cannot provide money for, for the maintenance of the bus. I have to pack it. What do you use the bus, the bus for? Most times I use it for transport. But for now, the engine is down. So I have to manage myself. How you know, do you take care of the family? Are you saying that you use the bus for transportation? Yes. And through that, you get money to take care of yourself and also your wife and children? I work in a, in a hospital. Mm -hmm. So that is where the money we used to feed ourselves. The bus is a means of uh, making money to feed my family and myself too. Now that it's broken, are you happy? Are you okay? I'm not okay. I'm not feeling well. I'm not feeling fine. What do you think that has broken that car? I, I know it's the spirit. That's, that's with it. That's attacking me. What to the dream? Is what I, I feel that is in the cause. Of my problem. Evil spirits will always blind your spiritual eyes to believe that anything evil 
that happens to you is just normal. They say, no, this is just mechanical force. It's normal. No, this is just mere sickness. It's a medical issue, not spiritual issue. You say, no, this is just normal barrenness. It's normal. You say, no, this is just normal infection. And you're carrying an infection that is not allowing you to conceive and have their children. And you call it normal. Many of you will just say, no, it's just normal. One can be sacked. And you have just lost your job. They just sacked you like that. And you're calling it a normal thing. Many of you will just say, it's just normal. Uh, you see, the economy is bad. That is why I am not selling anything. You have goods in your shop. And nobody's coming to buy. You pay transport, you go there, you see from morning to night. You cannot even have enough money to pay transportation back to your house again. And you say it's normal, it's happening to everybody, it's normal. You eat in the dream, you wake up, you say it's normal. You bed wet, you say it's normal, it happens once in a while, it's normal. You have hypertension, you say it's normal. Headache, you say it's normal. You write exams and you fail. Or even pass, but they seize your result. And you say it's normal, it's normal. What is not normal? It's not what? Normal. What is not normal is it's caused by who? Evil spirits. And those evil spirits must be destroyed. Amen. How much have they caused you to look for now just to fix your car? Mechanic said that we are going to buy the standard shaft, metals, rings, and plug with oil. Cost me uh, from 200,000 up. Is that a normal 200,000 there? No, Can I hear you? No, sir. No, I want to hear from you. Is it just normal? Just to. It's not normal. Have you gotten the 200,000 there? No. Do you have it? No. Why? But you have been working. It's very hard. It's not easy for me. Is it normal for someone to be working, even have a bus, and yet cannot boast of 200,000 naira to fix the bus? Is it normal? It's not normal. The very day you get angry at your unpleasant circumstance, that is the very day God will enable you to fight and win the bus. Yes. You say you're a salary earner. It is normal for you to remain poor. You accept every offer that the evil spirits are presenting to you. And you are comfortable with them. Everything. God Himself said, There are two options here life and death. But I counsel you, as a lover of your soul, to choose life. life. Not just life, life in abundance. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and fill the earth. That is the command God has given to your own life which is a gift from him. Now, in the name of, this is my job. You don't want to be fruitful. You are accepting satanic offer of poverty, stagnation, limitation, wants, lack, sufferings, and the like. You are allowing your own life to work against God's already given instruction to your life that says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and do what? Fill the earth. You cannot take care of your personal needs. You cannot even take care of the needs of people around you. And you cannot even take care of the needs of the needy. And you are comfortable with that. You cannot even pay your time. Because you are struggling. You cannot even give up for it. Because you are struggling. And you are just comfortable with satanic offer. You are comfortable with that. When will you get angry at your unpleasant circumstances? The best time to get angry at your unpleasant circumstances is not the next time, but when? Now. now. God said, behold, now is the accepted time. Yeah. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Meaning salvation is made. Now. 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 Let this message revive your spirit to be aggressive. Amen. The Bible says, let the captive souls Hurry up to be delivered. Joseph was not comfortable in the dry pit. He wanted to come out. And God made a way for him. You can't just realize there, realize there and say it's okay. 
You are still enjoying poverty and you say it's okay. Sickness, you say it's okay. It's normal. It's normal for somebody to have pain in the way. Every time you can move, stand up smartly and do things smartly because of this pain. Because of problems. And you call it normal pain. Satan is not comfortable with the city of Jesus international ministry. The minister of God here because we know what is not normal. And we will not allow anything that is not normal to exist. Amen. What do you believe God will do for you now? I believe that God will see me through. I believe in God. That's why I'm here. I am led by God on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation, partners of the Lovers of God International Foundation, to give you 300,000. <laughs> <laughs> there is money everywhere. No. Of course, God knows that what is not normal is not normal. As directed by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to stand on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation and of the partners of the Lovers of God International Foundation. I am here to present to you a cash gift of 300,000 Naira as promised and we believe this will help you to go back home, put the vehicle in order, meaning fix the vehicle, let it be repaired so you can use it to fend for yourself and for your family for the salvation of your soul in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for creating me. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Let the world know your names and the message you have for people in the world. My name is Henry Amelchi Okeke. I work with the Unity Hospital in Ngo, and I'm also a transport uh, owner. I have a, I have a bus which I use to help myself. You complained a while ago, and the Minister of God, Christopher Oji, stood on behalf of the Lovers of God International Foundation to promise to donate the sum of 300,000 Naira cash to you so you can fix your vehicle and allow it to be on road to enable you to meet up with your financial obligations in Jesus Christ's name. And now we are seeing something you are holding. What are you holding? I'm holding cash of 300,000 Naira in my hand now. My man of God, Christopher Oji, helped me to to fix my vehicle so that I can use it for my to feed my family and also coming to church because I'm coming from all the way from Night Miles. It's very far, so he, he helped me with cash of a three hundred thousand naira. So I'm I'm saying God, thank you for using him, thank you for for locating me, thank you for my own deliverance. Did you ever try to seek for such help elsewhere or to provide the money yourself? If yes, were you able to get the money before now? Did you find this kind of money to repair your vehicle? Were you able to get it, to source it out? No, I have tried to borrow money even from a microfinance. Uh, what I do is that I only keep my eyes onto God. I keep my faith onto God. But I believe that God has done it right now. I'm holding 300000 naira cash to repair my vehicle. What do you have as a message or comfort to those that lack? People who are financially down, people who are looking unto God for active help like this all around the world. What is your message to them? Message of hope and faith. Yes, I would say that uh, God will help the person. If you keep your eyes onto God, keep your faith, hope onto God, God will surely see you through. God will surely see you through and avoid Saints and sinful desire. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. You are simply saying to him, what a fantastic advice. I should try to live a life that is free from sins and sinful desires. Focus your eyes and your attention on God, the great provider, and whatever unpleasant circumstances or situation you're facing that are not normal will be caused to be normal, meaning... God himself will reach out to you. He will inspire his people all around the world to reach out to you and help you out of them in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
Shalom. Shalom, every brother. Tell them, church. I'm bringing the money out now for you to see what God has done for me. Look at the money. It's 300,000 naira cash. For the screen, the man has just brought out the 300,000 naira out. It is 100,000 100, each. 300,000 naira cash. Meaning, these three pieces, bundles of money, each one contains 100,000 naira, and the three of them represent the 300,000 naira cash gift. The Lovers of God International Foundation and the Minister of God, Christopher Oji, with the partners of the Lovers of God International Foundation, have collectively given to you. Yes, th it's true. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, partners of Lovers of God International F Foundation for assisting me. Thank you for your assistance. God will bless you. God will pay you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, church. In Jesus' name, amen. Many of you want to visit the church physically, especially people in Nigeria and also people that are not within the country. For those of you that are living in Nigeria and you are seemingly asking yourself, where is the address? The address of the city of Jesus International Ministry is IN slash 20 MNA Industrial Layout. If you are going toward the double lane, of the Central Bank of Nigeria quarters, you will just see the first turn by the left-hand side. That will lead you to the City of Jesus International Ministry. And the CBN quarters is directly opposite to Innocent Technical Company along Abakriki Expressway, Enugu East, local government, area of Enugu State, Nigeria, West Africa. So you're welcome. And the time for the service on Sundays is always by 6.30 in the morning so that you will be here when we will be ushered together to start the service by 7 in the morning. God bless you in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom. Viewers, you're welcome to today's online service that is coming to you from the studio of the City of Jesus International Ministry. My name is Christopher Oji. By the presence of the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I shall be known. Thank you for always being there, praying along, watching wonderful works of God, commenting and sharing with everybody. We appreciate your effort, we appreciate your concerns, and we appreciate your prayers and your everyday support to the works of God. Glory be to God. Today we shall be privileged to first and foremost listen to today's teaching that will be taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Matthew, chapter 24, and Matthew, chapter 25. These are pure gospel of Jesus Christ that will help you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that every other thing you need can then be added to you by God. All right. The title of today's message is The Picture of the Kingdom of God That You Seek. Did you hear that title? 
the picture of the kingdom of God that you seek. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Verses 7 of Matthew chapter 13. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. We are reading from the book of Matthew chapter 13. As I said, today's teaching is titled, The Picture of the Kingdom of God that you seek. Let us continue from verses 10 of Matthew chapter 13. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is refuted, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand. And seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. For as surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown 
in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. For then tribulation or persecution arises because of the word. Immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some fed. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. Take note of the word. He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Did you hear that? What a wise decision. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Matthew chapter 13 verses 33 downwards. Another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like living which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all living. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable, he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable 
of the tares of the field? He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pairs, who, when he had found one pair of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that were cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. Take note of the reason why they were not happy. They were offended at Jesus for being so wise and mightily used to do the known will of God. We are going to take the whole thing from the beginning to the end, but let us finish reading 
the remaining parts. Let me take it again from verses 53. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not this carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. There are two kingdoms where people can spend the eternity on the last day. They didn't hear that. There are two kingdoms that can accept souls that belong to them on the last day. Number one, the kingdom of God. And number two, the kingdom of Satan. Everyone is already in a spiritual journey walking towards his divine destination. No one is static. Everyone is moving. Everyone is seeking for survival. Everyone is walking towards his or her divine destination in life. Your life is a gift that is given to you by God. Your life came from God and one day will return back to God. Life is a mission. You are a missionary and every missionary has his or her final destination. As you follow your path, your very track, and proceed to where you spend your eternity. You are commanded to seek for one thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing you are looking for will then be added to you. Many are in this world to seek for fame, materialism, position popularity, and things that have no lasting significance. As a result of these wrong motives, wrong choice, they find themselves being easily used by Satan to promote oppression, injustice, misrule, killing, stealing, and destruction. As they continue in their journey in life, it is obviously clear that where they will spend their eternity, if they do not repent, is none other than the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of God is a fact, is a reality. The kingdom of God is real. It is a place to be that God has reserved for the righteous ones. As you are already in a journey, going towards where you will spend your eternity, may I ask you, where will you spend your eternity on the last day? Where will you spend your eternity on the last day? The beginning of the journey is very important. 
the middle of your journey in life is also important. But we must not be deceived to believe that the end of the journey is not important. Look at the thief who was crucified by the right hand side of Jesus Christ. The beginning and towards the end of his life was full of sins and sinful desires, full of killing, stealing, and destruction. This man had the grace to make the right choice by seeking first the very kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. What about you? Satan may have been tormenting your life from the beginning. You have the grace not to continue to allow him to use you to promote killing, stealing and destruction. Everyone who is created by God is created for God's glory. The glory of God does not suffer corruption. The glory of God does not spread sins and sinful desires. Now tell me, what is your life promoting? What are your thoughts promoting? What are your words promoting? And what are your characters promoting? Let your thoughts, let your words and character edify your fellow human being and bring them to a place of salvation. The prophetic picture of the kingdom of God that you seek does not allow you to forget the fact that any moment can be your last moment here on earth. When your life ends here in this physical world, you will be allowed to face judgment. Meaning, you will be given the opportunity to give account of how you have lived your life. If today happens to be the day you render account to God, what will your account be like? You can lean on Jesus now and put your records straight. Like the thief. He said, also me, everything I have ever done has never glorified God. Has never glorified you, Jesus Christ, my Savior. And has never glorified your spirit. The Holy Spirit I lean not on my own understanding. I lean on you, the living and eternal word of God, to show me the way to the kingdom of God. When do you want to repent? Your own understanding is telling you when you have stolen enough money, when you have told enough lies to cover up your iniquities, when you have oppressed your fellow human beings, accused people falsely. But God is telling you that when it comes to salvation, you should know salvation demands for now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verses 1 to 2, it is written, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. If now is the accepted time for you to repent, why are you shifting it? Why? If now is the accepted time for you to act with God, plow with God, walk with God, and put God's words into practice, why are you shifting it? Jesus told God, let this cup be taken from me and given to another. But 
the Spirit of God inspired the angels of God's presence to speak to him that look, this is accepted time. You cannot shift to this. And he said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. What are you doing now that is contrary to God's will? What are you saying now that is contrary to God's will? And what are you looking at, watching, or even admiring that is contrary to God's will? You are already running the race that will lead you to where you will spend your eternity. Don't allow the magnetic attraction of this world break your focus and stop you from getting to your destination. There are so many unseen enemies that are well positioned by Satan, Lucifer, serpent, and other powers of darkness whose missions are just to stop you from entering into the kingdom of God that you are currently seeking. You with God are the spiritual majority. You are already on the way, not alone, but with God. You are already on the way to where you spend your eternity, not alone, but with Jesus Christ and also with the Holy Spirit. These three personalities, the Trinity of Heaven, have the supernatural power to eliminate the unseen enemies of your life, meaning on the last day, I will not have any excuse not to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Meaning, on the last day, you will not have any excuse. You cannot tell God, God, I was deceived by Satan, seeing that God has the power to eliminate Satan on your way and cause you to enter into the kingdom of that he has prepared for you. No one will be given any chance to excuse himself or herself. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Everyone is moving towards where he or she will spend eternity. Many are busy scamming people. How can you go into someone's account? Defraud a person steal the money that you never worked for and believe that it will be well with you. There are things you do that helps you to incur the wrath of God. For instance, scamming people, lying, blasphemy, committing sexual immorality, promoting injustice, operation of the weak, and filling the world and the people in the world with wrong doctrine. There are things you do that will help you to incur the wrath of God. For instance, promoting sorcery divination, and the spirit of disobedience in the world. These are spiritual giants that are standing on your way to stop you from entering into the kingdom of God. You cannot overcome these giants with your mere physical strength. Satan and all his evil giants can only be defeated by the strength of God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. These are reasons why you should not lean on your own understanding, on your own strength, on your own effort, and on your works of righteousness. Let us completely submit to God so we can have his divine strength to resist 
the devil. It is when we have the divine strength to resist the devil that the devil will flee from us. We are talking about today's message, the picture of the kingdom of God that you seek. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of holiness. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of righteousness. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of love. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of purity, peace, joy, faithfulness, truthfulness, humility, self-control, patience. Yes, you can. The kingdom of God is within us in the living world. The kingdom of God is not on the outside of you. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. When you keep God's commandments, keep Christ's commandment, the commandment of Jesus Christ, the one he says, a new commandment I have given to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. And when you keep all the instructions of the Holy Spirit in obedience, the Bible says God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will come into your heart, into your life, and make your life their home, their dwelling place. Heaven is a spiritual place where God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit dwell forever. If your life is heaven on earth, you can know because you will bear the fruit of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the kingdom of God. You cannot separate the kingdom of God from the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the kingdom of God. The Spirit of God is heaven. True believers who are led by the Spirit of God to act in this physical world are already in heaven. Write it down. True believers who are already in heaven, even though they are in this physical world, are those who are led by God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to bear the fruits of the Spirit of God. You can find this in the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verses 22 to the end. In verses 23, it is written, Against such there is no law, meaning there is nothing that will stop them from entering into the kingdom of God. In verses 19 of Galatians chapter 5, it is clearly stated by the Spirit of God in Apostle Paul. I warned you before, just as I have warned you in the past, that those who practice such evil, such sins, such things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Meaning, if you promote the fruit of the flesh, as documented in Galatians chapter 5, from verses 19 to 21, you will be stopped by these unseen giants of sins and sinful desires from entering into the kingdom of God. If you have the fruit of the Spirit of God in you, as documented in Galatians chapter 5, from verses 22 to the end, no spiritual giant of any kind will be able to stop you from entering into the kingdom of God. The possessors of the fruit of the Spirit of God are already in heaven, even though they are in this physical world. The possessors of the fruit of the Spirit of God, as recorded in Galatians chapter 5 from verses 22 to the end, are already in the kingdom of God, even though 
they are in this physical world. Jesus Christ was smart to identify his people. He said, by their fruit, they shall be known. Everyone has two natures. Your human nature, which is the one we can see, and your divine nature, which is the one we cannot see with the physical eyes. If your divine nature is the nature of God, you are already in the kingdom of God, even though you are still living in this physical world. On the contrary, if your divine nature is of Satan, meaning the nature of carnality, then you are already in hell, even though you are still living in this physical world. Those who have the nature of God in them are not the living dead. They have passed from death to life. To be spiritually minded is peace and life. Those who have the nature of Satan in them are the living dead, even though they are physically living, L-I-V-I-N-G, in this physical world. To be carnally minded is death and destruction. How can you say that you are alive spiritually when you are a liar? All liars are spiritually dead. Their conscience is completely dead. That is why they cannot say the truth. How can you say that you are alive when you are promoting sins and sinful desires? There is nothing like life in sin. Take note of that. There is nothing like life, L-I-F-E, in S-I-N, sin. Sin brings death. Righteousness promotes life and peace. If today happens to be your last moment or your last day on earth, by the fruits you bear now, we can figure out where you will spend your eternity. You that are scamming people, without any conscience to repent. Are you saying that you want to spend your eternity with Satan in hell? Because that is what your attitudes and characters are doing. You that are lying, fornicating, and accusing people, oppressing people all around the world, are you saying that you want to spend your eternity with Satan in hell? Because this is what your own character is showcasing. The nature you possess promotes the character you exhibit. It takes the Spirit of God for you to live a holy life. It takes evil spirits in a person for a person to live unholy life, sinful life, unrighteous life, and even fake life. The nature you possess drives your life to act. You are created by God and given not just his word, but also in his spirit so that your life can be driven by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. The nature of God in you should be your divine driver driving you to God. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, 
and the blessings of heaven. There is no blessing, permanent blessing, in waywardness, rebellion, disobedience, laziness, dirtiness, stubbornness, and other attributes that come from the kingdom of darkness. Our life is just too short. Just look at the whole thing. How many people did you see yesterday that you cannot see again in this physical world? Did you bother to ask yourself, where did they go? And did you also bother to ask yourself, where will you also go? This physical world is a marketplace. It's not a place where you can be quarreling with people, fighting with people, killing people from other nations, destroying resources of other nations, destroying other tribes and religions, promoting terrorism, kidnapping, armed robbery, and other vices. How long are you going to stay in this physical world? And why should you use your life to promote things that have no lasting significance? The heroes of the kingdom of God never wasted their time on things that have no lasting significance. If you are a president, be a president who understands, walks with, and loves God and his kingdom. If you are a president, be a president who will finally spend his or her eternity with God in heaven and not with Satan in hell. If you are a senator, a governor, the chairman of a place, Kindly live a life that will enable you to enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. God is the father of solution and he does not work alone. He creates everyone and sends his own people on earth to set the oppressed free. To help the widows, the widowers, the orphans, nations, and people of various tribes and languages. These assignments cannot be left to God alone because He has children whom He has sent to do the job. Where are the children of God all around the world? What has happened to the nature of God? that can set the upper rest free, bring food where there is starvation, hunger, suffering, bring joy where there is no joy. Where is the spirit of leadership in the lives of his children, the children of God? What has happened to the nature of God that can calm the atmosphere and bring peace where there is war? Understanding where there is misunderstanding. Love where there is hatred. Who has possessed people to spread hate speech? To spread war, violence, tribalism, nepotism, racism, and division among the inhabitants of the world. You are sent into this physical world to be a unifier in the name of your political party. What are you doing that is not bringing unity, harmony? Peace, understanding in your own country. 
in the name of your religion, what are you doing? That is promoting terrorism and other vices all around the world. Look at the economy. Look at inflation and recession. Look at what is happening as a result of decisions that have been taken by few people. We are all the children of God. God sends his people to lead other people. God is the one who puts people in a position of authority or leadership. He wants them to be used to attend to his people. Why are you hardening your heart and causing oppression? Why? It takes the Spirit of God for you to work for God. If you are not led by the Holy Spirit, you will be led by evil spirit. If you are led by evil spirit, no matter the position you occupy in this physical world, you will find yourself being used constantly to work for Satan. Where there is Satan, there is suffering. Where there is Satan, there is no development. Where there is Satan, there is war, confusion, hatred, rejection. Where there is Satan, there is barrenness. There is fear, there is insecurity at the highest level. Now check your own place, check your own country, check your environment. Check your community. People are shifting blames to government. What about villages and leaders in those villages? If everyone in the village where you are living or where you come from will know that they have responsibility to make sure that lives of people are secured, they will fish out people that are sent by Satan to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And this will ease the tension that is being shifted to people at the top. If you at the grassroots cannot humble yourself to see what you can do, to know what each person is doing, the kind of job the person is doing and what the person stands for. If the person is doing evil, to report the matter to the authority that will handle the person, then you are conniving with evil spirits in you to promote insecurity, killing, stealing, and destruction. How can you harbor evil only to turn around to blame the government? Repent. Everyone should take up responsibility and make sure that he gives account to God. If you know what is right and you are not doing what is right, then you are possessed by Satan to promote what is wrong. Write it down. If you know what is right, and you are not doing what is right, then you are possessed by Satan and all his evil agents to promote what is wrong. If you know what is right and you are read by the Holy Spirit to do what is right, then you are sent by God through his word and by his spirit to promote what is right. What is right is what God wants you to do, which are already in his words. Jesus Christ said, a new commandment I have given to you that you love your neighbor, love yourself, and then love God above all. This is what is right. 
Your neighbor can be successful because of you. Your neighbor can be prosperous because of you and your love. Your neighbor can be secure without any harm because of you and the love of God in your heart. The spiritual security is very important. If you want your life to be secured, then you need to dwell under the secret place of the Most High God. You need to be driven by the Spirit of God. You need to be in the kingdom of God. There is no spiritual security elsewhere apart from the dwelling place of the Most High God. It is the duty of true believers that they found themselves being sheltered under the shadow of the Most High God. God protects his children through his word and by his spirit. If you are protected by God, do you not know that you have a divine commission to protect and preserve the lives of other people? If you know that you have the divine commission to protect and preserve the lives of other people. Why then are you kidnapping your fellow human beings and demanding for ransom? Why? Why then are you holding people hostages and then demanding for exchange of this and exchange of that? Why are you promoting terrorism? Why? If the lives of your fellow human beings mean anything for you, why are you causing them pain? Why? It is good to know what is right, but it is also good to do what is right. That you are about to do what is right or ready to do what is right does not mean that you would not face challenges. Remember the parable that was read a while ago. When there are thorns of life springing up to choke the word of God in you, you are given the spiritual strength to resist. Even in the midst of all these unpleasant circumstances to bring the best out of your life. Only the doers of the word of God are qualified to receive things from God. In other words, only the doers of the word of God are given the grace to produce much fruit, to bear much fruit, to enter into the kingdom of God. Children of God, let us learn not to ever give up on God. No matter the challenges, no matter the circumstances, let us come together and fix this terrible condition that people are in this world now with our righteous hands that are made righteous by God. Be harmless to yourself and also to your neighbor. See what you can do to help your fellow human beings. Widows are crying, orphans are lamenting. People are no longer going to school because of the cost. Those that are in business are frustrated because there is no good atmosphere for them to thrive in their business world. Graduates are looking for a job. There is no opportunity for them to be given any meaningful job because even the amenities that will enable investors to come in and invest are not functioning 
effectively. Even though we find ourselves in this kind of condition, we can still allow ourselves to bring the best out of us. Bring the best out of our lives and help our fellow human beings to succeed. Learn to deal and destroy the spirit of religion that used to cause you to see other people from other religions as evil. Learn to deal with and destroy the spirit of tribalism that made you believe that only the people that are from your own tribe should be qualified to lead or work in a certain place, even when they are not eligible. See what you can do to destroy the spirit of hatred that caused you to hate yourself, become suicidal, and hate every other person around you. No one is loved by God the way you are being loved by God. Do away with the spirit of hatred, self-pity, inferiority complex, arrogance, laziness. The Bible says if you are not ready to work, you should not even ask for food. We are talking about lies of faith. If you have your faith without works, that faith is dead. If you have your works without faith in God, the works you have are also dead. Faith and works always go together. How can you fail to work, but you want to be eating the most delicious food in this physical world. How can you that are not willing to work humble yourself and take up any media job to do? Be demanding for something you know that you cannot pay for. Whether you are a man or a woman, old or young, everyone should repent. Laziness is a sin. Laziness is from the pit of hell. Laziness is from Satan. Laziness is from the kingdom of darkness. God never created anyone to be lazy. Even Satan goes everywhere to and fro. He walks. God himself walks. Jesus Christ said, as he said, I am here to do the works of my father. My father works. So do I. Meaning he works. Why have you suddenly made yourself a human being who has actually hated to work, but you want to eat everything that is delicious and good, even when you cannot afford it? Why? Repent. The kingdom of God allows you to have good works of faith and also allows you to have Faith in God. Your good works of faith and faith in God are always meant to work together. Any voice within or without that is telling you not to work, but is also telling you not to be self-controlled, telling you to demand for something that is not yours, something you have not worked for, needs to go through deliverance in the power of the Holy Spirit. How long have you not been working as a result of your arrogance and pride? When you see media jobs, you say, no, it is not my level. It is for another people or another person. And you go on social media handles to attack government attack leaders, attack this and attack that. Whereas there are works you can do 
just to feed yourself and earn a living. Life is in stages. It grows from one level to another. People that are in authority started in a very low level. Some of them started in a very low level till they became promoted and elevated. Why do you not want to work, but you want to eat? Repent. You cannot say you are working just because you are scamming people. You cannot say you are working just because you are a hookup lady. You cannot say that you are working just because you are a prostitute or a drug dealer. You cannot say that you are working just because you are kidnapping people, terrorizing people, and attacking people on highways. These are works of Satan and works of carnality. And these works of Satan and carnality are the works that lead people into the kingdom of darkness. Those who possess the works of Satan or the works of carnality are already in the kingdom of Satan, even though they are in this physical world. God did not create you so you can spend your eternity in the kingdom of darkness with Satan. No. You are created to think with God. You are created to walk with God. You are created to plan with God. You are created to work on God's projects. To know God's opinion about yourself and also God's opinion about other people. You are created to spend your eternity with God in heaven. When this world is over, when this life is over. This message is reminding you to see Christ in the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that other things you need can then be added unto you. You are already closer to where you spend your eternity make haste, check properly, so you can visualize the very picture of the kingdom of God that you seek. The worst thing that can ever happen to any human being is not to enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. The best thing that can happen to any human being is to enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. God loves you and wants you in his kingdom. Jesus Christ loves you and he said, if I do not go away, the Holy Spirit, the helper, will not come. And we told you that the kingdom of God is the spirit of God. But if I go away, the Father will send the Holy Spirit to you and he will teach you all things, lead you into God's dwelling place. The best thing that can ever happen to you is for you to have the grace to enter into the kingdom of God. If you have all this money, have all the fame, have all the popularity, and even occupy the highest worldly position, without the grace to enter into the kingdom of God, what will it profit you? 
this will become vanity upon vanity. This will become things that have no lasting significance. The kingdom of God lasts forever. When Jesus said, the Father will send the Holy Spirit and he will be with you forever. The Father will give you his kingdom and his kingdom will be with you. The kingdom of God lasts forever. What a place to be. What a place where injustice is not found. Corruption is not found. Misrule is not found. Tribalism is not found. Hatred is not found. All human ideologies are not even found. Wrong doctrines are not found. What a place! The word of God and the spirit of God in you are God in you. Write it down. The word of God and the spirit of God in you are God in you. Anytime your heart tells you to do something that is contrary to the word of God, to say something that is contrary to the word and spirit of God, you should know that your creator, the living God Almighty, is no longer in you. The voice of Satan and his words of killing, stealing and destruction in you are Satan in you. It is easy to identify when you are operating by the spirit of Satan or by the spirit of God. Let us Turn our Bibles to the book of Galatians chapter 5 and round up this teaching, the picture of the kingdom of God that you seek. Galatians chapter 5 from verses 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Apostle Paul was telling the people that those evil things are not the picture of the kingdom of God we see. What are those evil things? Watch again. Galatians chapter 5 from verses 19. These are those evil things that are not the picture of the kingdom of God. Here are the things. Galatians chapter 5 from verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, 
murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now let us look at the things that shows the picture of the kingdom of God that you seek. Galatians chapter 5 from verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Did you hear that? But the fruit of the Spirit is love. If you want to know more about love, then you can read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 14. Also read the book of 1 John chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and 5. This will help you to grow in love. Also read the book of Proverbs chapter 10, but take note, 19, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. There is no other picture. Look at that. If you have anything that is contrary to this, and you want to enter into the kingdom of God, it is not possible. Against such, there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If you have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires, you are already in the kingdom of God, even though you are living in this physical world. If we live in the Spirit, this Spirit is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is with the capital letter S. Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit. And I told you that the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God. The Spirit of God is the kingdom of God. If we live in the Spirit, it's like saying, if you live in the kingdom of God, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us also walk in the kingdom. How can you live in the kingdom of God and you're walking on earth with earthly desires and passions? The two cannot go together. The Spirit returns to God, to walk with God. What belongs to the earth goes back to the earth. You must learn to fix your eyes above. Where is that place? The kingdom of God, meaning heaven, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You must make sure that you are lifted above the realm of Satan, Lucifer, serpent, witches and wizards, idols, spirit of Antichrist, spirit of God and Magog, mammoths, queen of the coast, spiritual husbands, nightmares, evil attacks, wet dreams, barrenness, sickness, disease, poverty, hardship. They have their realms. You must be lifted above such realms. Colossians chapter 3 will enable you to know what we are talking about. Verses 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Now check. When you see one country attacking another, one continent attacking another, one group of people attacking another, one association attacking another. Sit down and ask yourself, whose influence are they under? Are they really under the influence of the Holy Spirit or they are completely under the influence of evil spirits? 
Verses 26 is very, very important. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Where the kingdom of God is, there is nothing like conceit. There is nothing like hypocritical relationship. There is nothing like envy or deception. The spirit of deception is the spirit of Satan, which is found in the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. The spirit of truth is the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus Christ, which is only found in the kingdom of God in heaven. Let us be led by the Holy Spirit, even as we are in our spiritual journey, even as we are already moving towards our final destination in life, which is the kingdom of God. I believe that this message has helped you not only to find out the picture or the kingdom of God that you seek, but also to be guided so you can have all the fruits of the Spirit of God that will enable you enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. In Jesus Christ's name. Right now, let us pray. Father, we stand in one accord with God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And we are standing against all spiritual entities, unseen enemies that are hiding, not only in the visible world, but also in the invisible world to prevent your children from taking a look at the prophetic picture of your holy kingdom and also preventing them from entering into your kingdom, the kingdom of God. We command such forces of darkness not only to be captured but also to be permanently destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. You say that the church is marching on to your holy kingdom and the gates of hell will never prevail. Therefore, I send fire to all of them, you spirit of Antichrist, spirit of death, witches and wizards, idols, serpent and the snake, Lucifer, Satan, Mammoth, Queen of the Coast, spiritual husband, spiritual wife, spirit of poverty, spirit of laziness, stubbornness, sexual immorality, lust, masturbation, adultery, fornication, sorcery, rivalries, heresies, all evil agents of darkness in charge of deception, blasphemy, rebellion, every spirit in charge of accident, all national demons, continental demons, demons that are hiding in various religions, tribes, or areas on earth, and even in various planets to operate against human beings. Let these evil spirits in the name of Jesus Christ be captured and totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I can see that happening. And I can see souls being taken into the kingdom of God. Holy Ghost, turn the name of Jesus Christ. Turn! Turn! I send the fire of God's deliverance to your soul, spirit, and body. And I command your life to be separated from the kingdom of darkness. Right now, receive your deliverance. It is yours, a free gift from God. 
Holy Ghost, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray! 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 I send fire to your nation and I stand against anything that is standing against God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and I command everyone there in your nation to receive deliverance, forgiveness of sin, grace of sanctification, complete healing, freedom from demonic possessions, blessings and breakthroughs that will last forever. Let everyone receive eternal life. Right now receive. Right now receive. Receive! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Receive! I stand against all anti-prayer spirits anywhere you hide in the heavens of heaven. You try to stand against the fasting and prayers of Daniel in the Bible. You also tried to attack ministers of God that were called by God. I send fire to all of you no matter your years of existence. I command you forces of darkness to be captured and totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let the unanswered prayers of people be answered now. Holy Ghost, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, pray, pray. I send the fire of God's healing into your blood and nation, and I stand against all sicknesses and diseases, curable sicknesses, and also incurable sicknesses. You HIV AIDS, cancer, ulcer. You epilepsy. What are you doing in them? You spirit of depression, anxiety, madness, blindness, deafness. You goiter, pneumonia, tuberculosis, sinusitis, arthritis, paralysis of the whole body. You stroke, hypertension, diabetes. Hepatitis of all kinds, rise and authorities. What are you doing in them? I send fire to all of you, spirit of infirmities, and I command all of you in the name of Jesus Christ to be totally destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Right now, let the fire of God's healing flow into your soul, spirit, and body. Receive your healing. Receive! 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 I stand against all medical reports that are pointing you to death, destruction, fear, and causing you to question God's capacity to heal and set you free. I command such reports to receive deliverance. And I command your next medical checkup to come up with medical reports that will clear you of various sicknesses and diseases that have been attacking your life. Right now, receive the grace. Receive! 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 I soak you in the blood of Jesus Christ and I command everything about you to receive a divine touch from God. A divine touch from Jesus Christ and a divine touch from the Holy Spirit. You are not cursed. You are blessed. Right now, I stand against poverty, hardship, joblessness, near success syndrome, delay, and all evil spirits that have been standing against your employment, standing against your contracts, standing against your breakthroughs and blessings. And I command such demonic powers and spirits not only to be captured now, but to be totally destroyed 
by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I can see that happening, and I can see you receiving your blessings and breakthroughs. Holy Ghost, tear the name of Jesus Christ. Tear! 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 Right now, I command your stolen blessings to be restored. And the doors that the enemy is closed to be opened and kept open forever. I am seeing you going through the doors to possess all your heavenly blessings that will manifest physically, both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now I soak your spiritual life in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I soak your heart, your conscience, your mind, your thoughts, your words, your characters, and your home in the blood of Jesus Christ forever. Let the kingdom of God continue to be established in your life, in your home, in your thoughts, in your words, in your character, in your tribe, in your nation, in your continent, in the world, and also in the universe. Both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. Shalom.